Hello, and welcome to an amazing 10-hour course on Mid-Journey. I'm Professor Horton, and I can't wait to take you on an exciting journey to explore the fascinating world of AI-powered art generation with Mid-Journey. Over the next 10 hours, I'll be sharing my passion and expertise to help you unlock your creative potential. Together, we'll cover various aspects of Mid-Journey and its capabilities, from understanding its parameters and model versions to mastering advanced techniques and leveraging the vibrant mid-journey community. I'm thrilled to have you join me in this adventure and I'm confident that we'll both learn and grow as we dive into the innovative world of AI art. Throughout this curriculum, we will delve into the importance of AI art generation and the role mid-journey plays in shaping the future of creative expression. We'll start with an introduction to Mid-Journey, its history, and its vast capabilities. Then we'll guide you through the process of getting started with Mid-Journey, from creating an account to navigating the website and Discord server. As we progress, we'll explore various aspects of Mid-Journey, including the platform's parameters, model versions, and the use of image weight, text weight, and remix mode. You'll learn how to use multi-prompts, generate videos of your creations, and even add animations to your images. We'll also dive into advanced techniques and specialized applications for Mid-Journey, such as creating album art, branding materials, and characters. Throughout the course, we'll focus on practical projects that cater to online viewers, ensuring a hands-on learning experience. Lastly, we'll introduce you to the Mid-Journey community, where you can share your work, receive feedback, and collaborate with fellow creatives. We'll wrap up the course with a discussion on the ethics and future of AI art generation and Mid-Journey's role in this rapidly evolving landscape. Together, we'll explore the endless creative possibilities that Mid-Journey offers, unlocking new artistic horizons and pushing the boundaries of traditional art and design. Let's embark on this journey together and unleash the full potential of AI art generation with Mid-Journey. So what is Mid-Journey? Mid-Journey is an innovative AI-powered platform specifically designed to generate art, illustrations, and design concepts based on prompts provided by users. By leveraging the power of advanced AI technology, Mid-Journey can interpret and understand user-inputted prompts, transforming them into visually stunning and unique images that cater to the specific needs of the user. Users can input text or image prompts ranging from simple to complex ideas, and Mid-Journey will process these prompts to create an array of artistic outputs. The platform's intelligent algorithms can recognize and combine various elements, styles, and themes from the prompts to generate artwork that aligns with the user's vision. The adaptability and versatility of Mid-Journey make it an invaluable tool for artists, designers, and creatives alike as it enables them to explore new ideas generate inspiration, and create visually striking work that pushes the boundaries of traditional art and design. Although the exact timeline and specific details of Mid-Journey's development are not publicly available, its evolution can be traced through the advancements in AI technologies that have influenced its creation and improvement. The early 2010 marked a turning point in the field of artificial intelligence with the rise of deep learning techniques which enabled computers to recognize and generate images, text, and sounds more effectively. These advancements laid the foundation for the development of AI art generation platforms like Mid-Journey. The concept of AI-generated art gained traction in the mid-2010 with platforms like DeepArt and Prisma, which used deep learning algorithms to transform images into artwork in the style of famous painters. These early AI art platforms demonstrated the potential of AI in generating visually striking and creative art pieces, paving the way for more advanced platforms like Mid-Journey. In 2018, OpenAI released the first iteration of its GPT, Generative Pre-Trained Transformer model, which revolutionized the field of AI. GPT-2, released in 2019, and GPT-3, released in 2020, further expanded the capabilities of AI in generating text, images, and other creative outputs. These advancements inspired the development of Mid-Journey, which leverages GPT-4 architecture to generate a wide array of artistic and design concepts. Mid-Journey was launched as a cutting-edge AI art generation platform 
building upon the advancements of its predecessors and utilizing the power of GPT-4. The platform quickly gained popularity among artists, designers, and creatives, becoming a valuable tool for generating diverse, unique, and visually stunning artwork. Midjourney's developers have continued to refine and expand the platform's features, capabilities, and user experience, ensuring that it remains at the forefront of AI art generation technology. Today, Midjourney continues to evolve and adapt to the rapidly advancing world of AI, providing users with an ever-expanding range of creative possibilities and pushing the boundaries of traditional art and design. All right, so let's talk about how to get started using Midjourney. So the very first thing that you're gonna to want to do is to open up your browser and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and type in Midjourney. Once you type in Midjourney, um, just go ahead and again, select Midjourney from your Google search. And when you open up Midjourney, um, this is the screen that will come up. And sometimes people say it looks a little intimidating because um, they don't really know what to click on and they just see the text in the background. But what you want to click first is join the beta. So we're going to click on join the beta. And here you're going to choose to accept the invite. It says the Discord app is launched. And once you launch the Discord app, it will bring you to this screen. So since we came into Discord from Midjourney, so we Googled Midjourney, we clicked on Midjourney, and then we launched the Discord app and it brought us into Discord. Now, because of that, we come directly into the mid journey space. And here along the side, you'll be able to see the information. And this is where you're going to start if you are just now starting off using mid journey. So the first thing you're going to, to do is you're going to want to search for some of the newbie channels. And as you can see, we have some two newbie rooms. You can actually click on any of these rooms. So I'll just choose the first. And what you'll see is the mid journey feed for the newcomers. And at this point, before you really have gotten into mid journey, it's not necessary for you to sign up for the subscription yet. You do get a uh, limited time to use the free version. And this is a good place to start because you're able to see some of the things that all of the other people are creating using Midjourney. So in order to interact with the Midjourney bot in this free version, you need to start by clicking the forward slash. And as soon as you click this forward slash, you'll notice that imagine and then prompt comes up. You'll go ahead and click on imagine and if it doesn't come up, go ahead and type out the word imagine. But once you've used it a few times, it'll be at the top. So as soon as you see the imagine prompt here at the bottom of the screen, this is where you're going to type your first prompt. Let's go ahead and type our very first prompt to test this out. And I'm just going to say a futuristic text space. And as soon as you type out your first prompt, you'll go ahead and click enter. And here, the first thing that you'll notice is that at this point, Midjourney is not actually allowing um, the free version or the free trial. Sometimes it will allow you to use the free trial, um, but at this point, it's not going to allow it because of the fact that there are too many people um, using Midjourney at this point. So it says, due to the extreme demand, we can't provide the free trial. Um, and so in order to actually subscribe, first thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and, and click forward slash again. And at this point, we'll go ahead and start to type in subscribe. And here you'll see subscribe comes up. So we'll click on it and then we'll click enter. And 
if we click on open the subscription page, it will bring us to the subscription page. And this pretty much tells you the plans that Midjourney offers. This is the yearly plan. So if you would like to buy a whole year at once, you can do $8 a month. Um, I pretty much go month to month. So I choose the monthly billing. And since this is just for demonstration purposes, I'm actually going to go with the basic plan. Um, but as a regular subscriber, I am fine with the 30 dollars a month and here is what you get with the different plans so with the basic plans you will have limited generations so you'll only be able to do about 200 generations a month you will have the general commercial terms once you pay for mid journey if you're using the free version, you won't be able to use the images that are generated commercially, so you can't sell them. But if you at least get the basic subscription, then you'll be able to have the general commercial terms. And at that point, you'll be able to sell or do whatever you need to do with the images that are generated. So again, this is a good, if you want to use Midjourney for your business or to generate income, you'll need to at least spend $10 a month. And you still get access to the member gallery. Um, you get optional, you get the ability to add credits to extend your uh, generations. And then you also get three concurrent fast jobs. So, uh, and we'll talk about the difference between the speeds when we get into the walkthroughs. So here, the standard plan, which what I've noticed is that most people use this standard, this standard plan because it gives you 15 fast subscriptions as opposed to three concurrent. And it gives you unlimited relaxed generations. And actually it gives you 15 hours of fast generations. It gives you 15 hours of fast generations as opposed to the three concurrent fast jobs. So for 15 hours on Midjourney, you can generate fast jobs. It also gives you unlimited relaxed generations, meaning again, I'll show you the settings when we get into it. However, is you can create as many images as you want with the relaxed version. And it's just a difference really of about a minute. So if you would like a fast generation, it comes within a minute. And if you use the relaxed generations, you may have to wait um, two to three minutes. And you also still get the commercial use. You get the access to the member gallery and you have the optional credit top ups and you still get the three concurrent fast jobs. So again, here at this point, you're able to run three fast jobs at the same time. Also, if you look here on the basic plan, there is no option for the unlimited generation. So all of your basic plan will be fast hours. And if you go over to the $60 a month, you have 30 fast generations, you will be doing a lot of mid journey. Actually, by when I was creating this course, I had to uh, top up on my hours a few times. So probably with the 60 hours, the $60 a month and the 30 hours on the fast generations, that probably would have saved me a lot of money. But because of the fact that I'm only going to be using mid journey that much during this course, it, I was fine with just topping up a few times. Um, and then here still get the unlimited relaxed generations, the general commercial terms, the access to the member gallery options to add to your credit. And then the stealth image generation basically means that when you start to generate your images with these first two plans, everyone in that is on the mid journey bot or that uses the mid journey bot can see the images that you are generating. So these two plans 
can see what each other is ge generating just by watching the server. Now with stealth image generation, you are able to generate images without anyone else seeing them. And you will get kind of more of a feel of why that is important to some people as we continue with this course. And then last but not least, you get 12 concurrent fast jobs as opposed to the three. This is great because it allows you to create, to work on 12 jobs at once. And with this subscription, you would have to be basically working the mid-journey bot like a machine and constantly creating images. And so if that is something that you're doing, then this $60 a month is definitely worth it. So here, I'm gonna start by uh, subscribing for the $10 a month plan. And so as soon as you complete your subscription, then you'll be brought to this page, which will allow you to manage your plan. So as you can see, I've just purchased the basic plan, and this is just for this demonstration. Here, you'll see the amount of fast hours that are included. So you get about three hours and 20 minutes. You can, say, you can see how much is included, and then as you start to use them, you will be able to see how much is uh, used. And you'll also be able to see the features and all of your plan details. So as soon as you have completed your subscription or purchasing your subscription, now we can go back over to the Discord and we'll be able to use the Midjourney bot. All right, so now we are back in the Discord and we are back on the Midjourney page. We're in the newbie section. And now I'm going to show you how you can set up your own server so that you won't have to use this newbie server. So first, let me show you what happens if you use the newbie server. Again, we're gonna click forward slash and we'll go to imagine. Here's the imagine prompt. And uh, again, I'm going to type in futuristic text space. And I'll hit enter. And so down here, you can see that my first job has started. Well, it says actually it's waiting to start. And first you have to wait until it's creating your image. You'll be able to see that because it tells you that we're at 0%. And it, this fast portion is what we're referring to when we talk about the fast hours. But as you'll notice, as your image is generating, so are other people's because they're all using the same server. And so as the server starts to get used and continues to get used, your image kind of just gets lost in this feed. And that's because all of these people are using the mid-journey newbies uh, space. And while this is a good space to start out in because you can see what other images people are using, it gets a little uh, mid-journey bot and the server gets cluttered, it becomes harder to find your image. So here, now, if I want to, if I like what I see, I can make it larger just to see a closer view. And the ones that I like, I can go ahead and click upscale and this is all on one job, by the way. So I'll go ahead and upscale them because I like all of these images. And now once again, I need to wait to have them generated or upscaled. So because this is the newest version, you actually don't have to wait too long because they're already rendered. Once they come out at this point, once they're past the a rendering stage of the preview, which is when they're in the four squares. Um, once they're out of this rendering stage, as soon as you click upscale, they'll all enlarge. And once they enlarge, you'll just scroll down until you find those images. And so now that I've found my images, again, you're able to do whatever you would like to with them. You can go ahead and click on them. 
right click and then go ahead and go down to save image as and now that image is on your computer so using the newbie channel is again good for you to see what other people are creating and you can also see what prompts the other people are using in this newbie channel so if you want to you can um, if you want to create the exact same thing you could copy it you could highlight it right click on it and put it in to your submission and see how it came out and this is basically a good way to see all of the different styles the different uh, techniques the different things that people are generating and really just kind of give you a preview of what you can do with mid-journey so we're seeing everything from graphic design to here's some mandalas and then we have mandalas created in and displayed in different ways we've got some very photo uh, realistic images we've got some very in-depth prompts here um, so this is a very descriptive prompt and it's also using these three parameters here and it's even telling basically the settings of the camera this is a very good prompt to learn from when you're in this newbie channel if you decide to use this as a form of research and just to kind of learn more about mid-journey this is kind of the prompt that you're going to want to look for you're going to want to look for a prompt that is descriptive a prompt that uses the perimeters a, a prompt that is showing the style or the specific style so it starts off with the hyper realistic photograph so immediately we know that this is not necessarily this person may be new to mid journey but they've taken some time to learn from a course at least so it they're describing the style of the image that they want they are descriptive with what they want in the image um, even right down to describing the color of the people's hair the clothing that they're wearing and this is everything that you would want to look for in a well-generated prompt even down to again the type of camera and the camera settings so this person has at least either either they are a photographer that is well versed in the settings of a camera or they have learned from a a person that uses mid journey that has picked up the ability to um, add the, the camera settings and again when we think about how to create these prompts the biggest thing that you're going to want to learn is how to engineer your prompts so this is a well engineered prompt and again one more time this is what you're going to want to look for as you scroll through here we can see that it's a very generalized prompt and it got a very general output here we have a more descriptive prompt and as you can see we got a more lively cultured output once again all because of the description the more descriptive that you can be the better your output will be and your ability to learn these parameters which are also referred to as flags will determine the quality of your image the style of your image and in this case it will determine the size or actually the aspect ratio of your image and so um, there's actually more prompts that you'll be able to use and this course will walk you through a lot of the prompts and I will show you where you can find all of the prompts once you learn how to add the flags then you will be able to use any of the prompts and it's pretty the syntax here is pretty easy to understand and so once again I recommend that you go through and take some time to just look at what other people are adding here and even if you have a word document that you're able to copy and paste a lot of the good 
uh, prompts that you find as you are scrolling through, think of this as a form of research. And so you're really going to want to take some time to learn, especially if this, you're going to use this in a professional way. And every time you come across these prompts that are good, then you're going to want to copy them and paste them in one place so that you can come back to use them later. One thing that I don't see too much of is the use of illustrations. And so if this is something that you are interested in, you're going to want to copy. So if you're wanting to illustrate a coloring book, which we will go over in this course, when you come across a output that is in the style of a coloring book, copy it and paste it onto your Word document so that you know exactly what to look for when you go back to create or recreate these images. So you wouldn't want to copy exactly this prompt exactly because then you'd have something very similar to what this person is doing. But there are a couple of things that you want to pay attention to, which is the style of coloring book the vector lines and the black and white portion. This red panda portion is just the subject of the coloring page. So take some time to go through and when you find the style that you're looking at, looking for, copy it and maybe categorize the different prompts that you find as you go through and do your research. Here, again, this is a very general prompt and it gave a general output. But if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for a more of a generic, I don't know what this person is using this for, but if you're looking for more of a generic type of image, then this may be something that works perfect for you. All right. So once you have familiarized yourself with this space, then the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into your own space. And again, in this specific space, your image will generate with everyone else's image. You can see everyone else's image. They can see yours. Um, you, they will still be able to see yours on the mid journey page, but Let's go ahead and see how you can create your own server and invite the MidJourney bot. So the first thing you need to do to move into your very own space is to click on this plus and when you highlight or when you hover over it, you'll see that it says add a server. You're going to want to click to add your server. Here, you're going to want to choose create my own. And here you're able to choose what type of server that you're going to create and what you're going to do with it. I always choose for me and my friends, but if you're going to want to create a club or community, that'll be the one that you choose. If you don't want to choose either, you can, you'll just click on skip this question for now, but I'm going to choose create one for myself and my friends. And now here it gives you a generic name for your server. You're able to change it and you can also upload an image. I'm not going to upload an image and I'm just going to add test server two, and then I'll click create. As soon as you click create, here is what you're brought to. This is going to be your server. And on this server, you're going to be able to create and add your own images and look at your own feed. And in here, from this screen, you'll only be able to see the images that are generated by yourself or those that you have invited to the server. So the very next thing that you need to do from here, as you can see, if I was to click here and do forward slash and then try to type imagine, nothing comes up. And that's because we have not added the mid journey bot. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And what does come up, by the way, these are all built in prompts from the uh, Discord. So these are all of this is for Discord, but we want to interact with the Mitchell bot. 
And in order for us to interact with the Midjourney bot, we have to now add the Midjourney bot. So now that we have a subscription, you'll notice that up here, we have access to the Midjourney bot before when we were trying to use the free version and we weren't allowed to because they're not allowing people to use the free version at this point. Before, we did not have the ability to click on the Midjourney bot. Now we do. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the Midjourney bot. And if you do not see the Midjourney bot, then you'll simply click on the Midjourney bot from the newbie screen. And here you'll be able to click on add to server. So we'll go ahead and click on add to server and it will bring up this pop-up. And at the bottom it says, it's asking which server you wanna add it to. And these are the servers that I've created. So I'm talking about the server two. So I'm gonna select the server I wanna add the bot to and I'll click continue. And this is what we are giving the Midjourney bot access to and the ability to do. So we'll go ahead and click authorize and we will verify that we are human. And now it says authorized. And so now we can go back to our server. And as you can see, it says, yay, you made it Midjourney bot. So we know that the Midjourney bot has been added to our server. And at this point, now we can click forward slash and we can start to type in imagine. And as you can see, now we have the ability to click on the imagine prompt. And I will go ahead and type in futuristic tech space. And as soon as I click enter, this is what has come up. And I've chosen to leave this portion in the uh, video because this is the perfect teaching moment. So um, at this point, there is actually a mid journey internal server bot error. And what happens when you get an error like this? So after hundreds of hours using Midjourney, I've never gotten this. Um, however, it does happen. So what do you do when this happens? If this happens, what you need to do is you need to click on the Midjourney server, which is where we started. And if you take a look along the side, again, these are all of the channels that the Midjourney server has. They're actually categorized into categories. And we've been in this newbies category, and this was where we started out at. And at this point, there's a problem. So the first thing that you could do is you could click on announcements to see if there were any announcements that were made um, recently. There hasn't been since the 17th. So um, you can kind of go down the line, but the best thing to start off with if there's an actual issue is to check the status. And if we click on check status and we scroll all the way down, you can see that here's today's date and you can see that the bot may be unresponsive, but they are looking into it. If you would like to get further information at that point, you could come back and check to see if there'd be any, been any re recent changes there haven't. You can also, again, check for the announcements. Here is where you would find the rules. And if you need to have some sort of a uh, brief walkthrough of how to get started, here is a very short description of how to get started. Another thing that you could do is you can check here under support to show other people's basically uh, responses or issues. And as you can see, we're not the only ones having the problem. Someone else has sent a screenshot to show that they are having this problem. So this is a problem that is going on today. And it looks like it has been uh, showing an error for the past few minutes. 
And so, as you can see, this is a problem that everyone is having and they are coming in to uh, talk about it here. Um, it says that we are, uh, we're aware of the issue and the dev team has been alerted. So we're working on it. So here <laughs> they're asking to please stop spamming the channel. Um, but um, there's also another here that says this service is unavailable and the website is currently down. And again, they're working on it. So another thing that you would be able to do um, just to check on maybe an issue that comes up, you could also uh, come into these rooms. You can go into the chat and here on these two chat rooms, they are kind of specific. So if you check on the discussion room, you can see what other people are talking about. And at this very moment, they're probably talking about problems with the uh, server. And at this point also, you can come and you can check on the prompt chat. And if you would like to talk about prompts that you would like to create or how people are able to create other prompts, then this is also a great place to look. At this point, however, as you can see, most people are talking about the issue that is going on with the, um, with the server. Also, if you would like to showcase any of your work, here are some three channels that will allow you to showcase your work. So you can click on paint overs. And um, these are things that people have created to basically, um, they have added to the, their mid journey images. And here's what the outcome was. Looks like they added a design to a t-shirt that looks pretty cool. And this, again, this channel is specific to paint overs. And if we go over to the in the world section, you can see how, again, people are taking their art from mid journey and how they are uh, utilizing it here. They added an image to a cake, which is an awesome idea. Um, we're seeing uh, t-shirt designs and hoodie designs, basically um, how they're using these images in fashion. If you scroll down, you'll see an, a mid-journey uh, work of art that's hanging on a wall. Just all of the different ways that this looks like a print um, that someone made. Wow, that is pretty cool. That, that would probably take a little bit of time. I'm sure that took a little bit of time, but that is awesome. That is absolutely an awesome idea. Um, as you continue to scroll down, um, this is just a really good way to see how you can use uh, mid-journey art. And this is great. I love this. And how mid-journey art has been used um, by other people. So definitely take some time to scroll through. And as you can see, again, people are adding screenshots for the most part right now, but when there's not a problem, this is going to be another amazing resource for you as far as um, use cases for mid journey. Um, I saw one person, here it is, a sticker that someone created uh, that says this is a holographic sticker. So um, when you turn it in a certain direction, it looks different. But again, this is all created with mid journey. So this is awesome. We've got some cards that were created again, super, super cool. I love this one. Just take some time to scroll through. These are um, it's very easy for you to just get caught up in creating your own images. However, um, these channels are extremely valuable when it comes to how you can utilize those images and how you can use those images in your day-to-day 
um, creations. And I love these prints that people are making. Masks. Awesome. Oh, I think I saw a, okay, so here um, someone turned their work of art into a cover for a phone, which is, again, great. Adding them to cups or actually mugs. I love the card idea. Um, once again, in one of the videos that I created for this course, you will see um, an NFT card collection that I created, which is once again, um, another great way to utilize mid journey and the images that you're creating. Awesome. Very, very good uh, work. On the shirts. So take some time to go through and check out all of these uh, channels that are here on the side and they are all really good. Uh, ways to see how people are using mid journey and this section for the uh, blend showcase is basically how people are using the blend mode which I talked to you about in this course and it's basically creating one image out of uh, two or more images so um, that is a part of image prompting and we do go over that in the image prompting section but just to see some of the things that people are able to come up with and how they showcase their work, um, this is a really, really great way to, again, to do your due, due diligence and a way to research um, how other people are using mid-journey. All right, and here it looks like we have some themed images. And again, this is a really good way for you to see how what the professional or more experienced prompts actually look like. And one thing that I'll say is that um, the quickest way to identify a good prompt is going to be um, first by identifying the flags that are added and then also by having the ability to read through and just the more that you look at the prompts and after this course, you'll be able to see what it takes to kind of create a general prompt. And you're going to be looking for style. You're going to be looking for specific information such as details, even about how the image is rendered. So you are able to choose different renders. For the most part, I use Unreal Engine 5's uh, ray tracing renderer. And it gives out some amazingly beautiful um, images. And you can be specific about the camera, the settings that are used. All of these are aspects that are added into your prompt that will help you to generate a good prompt. And when we talk about how you create your prompt, if you want to look more into it, the term that you are to look for is prompt engineering. And it's specific not only to mid journey, but um, to any artificial intelligence um, that you are interacting with. So the important portion is what you say to the bot to get your intended outcome. All right. So while I am waiting on the server to come back up, I'm going to check one more time to see if the server's up. And here I could just push the up arrow and it will add the same prompts that I had my last prompt. And at this point, it looks like it might be back up. So um, now we're looking at futuristic tech space. As you can see, just like before, it says waiting to start. So we do still have to wait for it to start to generate the image. And um, you'll notice that because this is just my space, that I don't have to um, see other people's images being added. 
and I don't have to wait or search for the image that I created. And so here, as you can see, it has started to generate the image. So the issue is now has now been handled and the bot is back on. So I've been trying this since 647 and it is now 722. Um, but just to get a feel about of some of the issues that you might run into, um, of course, this is fairly new. So as they continue to upgrade and update and continue to work with and develop Midjourney, there may be problems, which is why I was um, I intentionally walked you through what to do if there is an issue and how to see if other people are having the problem. So this will help you know if it's a problem on your end or if it's a problem uh, with the Midjourney. So. As you can see, I went ahead and upscaled all of my images and they all came up on my feed. And we'll continue to talk about how to interact with your account um, as we progress through this course. But at this point, at least you're able to see, you're able to learn how to create your own server by clicking the plus and how to add the Midjourney bot to your server. And the next thing that I'm gonna show you in this setup section of the course is how to get to your own gallery. So at this point, this is the Midjourney bot that is inside the Discord app. Now, the next thing that we can do is now we can go over to the Midjourney website by clicking on web and we'll go ahead and click yep. And it'll bring you back to this screen. However, this time, instead of choosing join the beta, we want to choose sign in. And at this point, we'll go ahead and authorize. And now I'm on my Midjourney account. And here is the image that I just created. And it has actually been added to my own personal gallery. If I scroll down, you can see all of the images um, that are similar to what I just created. Um, so these are images that are that were created by other people. And if I hover over them, I can see the uh, person that created it. I can also see the prompts that they added. And if I click here, you can see the parent image, which is what we upscaled from. So before we talk about um, what we can do with other people's work inside of the this space, let's go ahead and jump over to where it says home. And this is your profile. This is going to be the space that holds all of your um, jobs. And if you plan on, if you find yourself using Midjourney a lot, you're going to want to make sure that you keep this space kind of um, organized. And you're also going to want to organize your actual mid-journey server as well, your server that is on Discord. So here, as you can see, we have all of the images that we created, not only in the on the mid-journey bot, but we also, the ones that we create created in the newbie server. And if you click here on the three dots, um, you can see what it looks like to view as a visitor. You can rate jobs, you can archive jobs, and you can um, you can basically choose any of the jobs that you have uh, rated. You can choose jobs by their rating. You can click here to choose the top jobs, or even here to choose the favorited jobs. And at this point, none of them have been favorited. All right. Um, so next we will come and you can manage your subscription. Um, this also has the different settings that are available. And if we could click on explore, here is where you can see the gallery from the other members and these are members that are not just from the newbie channel or a specific channel, but um, these are at this point, 
I believe it's set on the top uh, ranked. Oh, so these are the ones that are hot at this point. And the really cool thing about this is that if you, as you go through and you are researching mid journey and how people are creating their images and you're finding these different styles that you might like go through. And if you find a style that you like, then the next thing that you can do is you can go ahead and hover over it. So if I like this elephant, I can hover over it. I can go to these three dots. And then here I can click on copy. And once I click copy, it gives me the information that I can copy. So if I would like to see the command that they used here to create this elephant image, I can click on copy for command or copy prompt. If you copy the full command, you'll get everything about the prompt. Um, and then I can go back over to my mid journey server and I can basically recreate that image. But the best thing about it is, is that you have also the ability to not only recreate the image, but alter that image into an image that you is yours at that point. So mid journey is never going to create the exact same image, which is the beauty of it. So it's not necessarily as though you would be just taking their work. Um, it's not like going online and copying somebody else's exact work of art and then reusing it. Even if you put in the exact same prompt, you will still not be able to use um, or recreate that exact same image. You will be, however, able to create an image that is a lot like it. And so while we are here and discussing this portion, this is one of the reasons why people choose to pay the $60 a month, because if you create a beautiful image such as this, and it took you a while to create and craft and engineer that prompt, you're not going to want to necessarily just give it to everybody that comes through this gallery. But again, everyone has access to your images. And if they have access to your images, then they can always right click, click on these dots and then see the exact prompt that you use to create that specific image. And the more that the more valuable your prompts become to you, the more that um, you're going to want to probably start to um, pay more for the subscription and not necessarily just give them away. But then again, of course, not everyone is paying for a course like you did, and not everyone has access to these tips and tricks, which I'm providing you with in this course. So I've already copied that prompt. I just want to see if there's any other images that I might want to use instead of that one. And all of them look very amazing, by the way. I'll just keep the one that I have. So the next thing that we'll do is we can come here and look at the ranked pairs. And here you also have the ability to see how they're similar. And then down here, you can see the description as well. If you'd like to favorite it, then you can it says select the image that you like better. So basically as you're doing this, you're voting them up to the top. So I think I like this one better. And then you just continue to go through and you are choosing the better images. And this is something that also gives you the ability to help mid journey with selecting and understanding the, its users. So by looking and going through here, you're really giving mid journey a good idea of who is using their service and what the users like. So you can always skip or undo from this section here. All right. And you can also manage your subscription from this page. There are facts and this is where you will look for the, how to get started, how you can use discord and also the user's guide. So I'm going to click on user's guide because this is the area that we use 
to access all of the information that we pretty much use when we are going through the course. And so when we're talking about perimeters, this is the area that we'll be going through and it will show you all of the different perimeters to add to the end of your prompts. All right, I'm gonna go back over to the Discord. So I have copied the image that I found and now I can right click or I can go ahead and still type the imagine prompt and then I can paste it in to my prompt. And as you can see, I'll go ahead and click enter, but as you can see, this is the exact prompt that the person used to create the elephant image. And um, we'll go ahead and wait to see what mid journey puts up. Again, you're able to see the aspect ratio, which is the nine by 16. And that is the ratio of the image. So everything that that person used, if it was just the prompt, I believe you'll just get the words, but without being able to see, for example, the chaos, which has been set to 10 and the aspect ratio, the style has been set to raw. This raw style is new to Midjourney 5.1. So as you look through the documentation and as we go through this course, you'll find that some of the flags only work with specific versions of Midjourney. And again, we'll talk about that as we go through the course. Let's talk about the style that was created. So this first portion, this avatar jungle, this is the content, the fluorescent lighting plants. It's another part of the content, but it also adds something that is uh, fairly unique to the image, plants that are fluorescently lit. But this hyper-realistic style and this highly detailed, the words that um, even the ultra detailed and the cinematic lighting, the word photography, all of these words that were added after the neon elephant, all of those are the words that were added to basically capture the beauty of this image. So this is a very stunning image that has been created and it has been created in such a way because of these descriptive images or these descriptive words, specifically this hyper-realistic style and this highly detailed and ultra detailed, all of these are what make this image really stand out. And so here we have the chaos, which we'll learn about more in the course as well. So we will talk about these flags during the course. And the last thing that I would like for you to take a look at or to show you is how to organize your mid-journey channel. And so when it comes to organization, you're going to want to, if you're working on different projects, it really depends on how you're using mid-journey. But if you are working on different projects at one time or just over the course of your experience with mid-journey, you're going to want to make sure that you really utilize these channels. Now, if you have more than one person working on a project and if you have teams of people, again, this is a great way to organize your mid-journey server or your server on Discord and how you use mid-journey. So you only have, well, you can have as many servers as you want, but on one server, you're also able to have different channels. So here we're in the general channel, but if I click this plus, now I can add a new channel. So one of the projects that we're going to create in this course is a coloring book. And so because of the fact that we have different projects, we're going to want to organize, or I personally organize my uh, mid-journey server and the channels by project. This makes it easier for me to go back and find images. So I'm gonna go ahead and name this channel Coloring Book. And I'll go ahead and click on Create. And now this is the Coloring Book channel. As you can see, there's nothing here. And the reason is because we've created our first images in the general channel. And so when we get to the coloring book channel, 
or when we get to the coloring book project, all of those images will be created in this channel. When we get to the portfolio portion, you can either create a new channel for that portion, uh, but you'll probably want to use images from other channels. The point is that it's important to make sure that you organize your Midjourney Discord server by adding channels. And again, the Midjourney bot is added to the whole server. So even here, I could add, I could use the imagine prompt and I could very easily add a prompt to this channel. So that is something also to keep in mind. This is the this is the key portion to how to organize your mid journey server. All right. And here we're just going to go back over to our profile really quick. And we'll go back to the home because at this point I want to point out how you can set up this profile. So here you can also basically add a background image. You can add a profile image here under settings. You're able to control the display of your page layout. You can do wide or narrow. You can choose card size, huge. So here it, it gives you the ability to kind of see your images a lot larger if you need to I understand because a lot of the times they'll get um, if they're smaller it's hard to see um, the details so these large cards this is a great way to set up your channel you can also not only change the card size but you can change the card layout basically however it is that you would like them to be laid out it's up to you. You can quickly download multiple images by clicking on this arrow here. And if I wanted to, I can scroll down and just select all of them, or I could click select all, whichever ones I wanted to download. And then I can open up the downloader. And at this point, I can either add them to a zip or I can just download them all. I'm going to go ahead. I don't want to download them, but just so that you know, that is how you would download them. And again, you can click on archive and then you would go through and you would select the ones that that you needed to either view or archive. All right. And let's go ahead and go back. All right. And when you get enough images on your profile, then you will be able to basically create a, a collection as well. So here, and you'll, you'll want to create a collection and the collections are similar to creating channels. Again, you're going to want to do it to remain organized because Midjourney gives you the ability to create thousands and thousands and thousands of images. And if you don't create an organization system in the beginning, by the time that you've reached the end of the month, you will have a thousand of images and it's going to be very hard for you to, especially after this course and we do multiple projects, you won't be just creating the same types of images and you're going to want to keep them fairly organized. So the next thing we're going to look at is how to create a collection. And so here we're just going to create a small collection out of these first four images. And I'm just going to choose any of them and I'll click on the three dots. And here I'm going to go ahead and click on add to collection. All right. And it does give a small notification that images added manually to collections may not show up in the collection for upwards of two minutes. So once you manually add it to a collection, you may have problems. You, you won't see it immediately. We'll say that. And so let's go ahead and choose add to collection. You can also save your image from here um, and it'll be downloaded. You can favorite your image. 
And up here, you're able to click on use as, and this is how you can create your profile image. So I'll go ahead and choose it as a profile picture. And then I'll use this one as the profile cover. Now, if I look up here, once it has refreshed, looks like it's taking some time to come up. However, the profile image will be located here and then the cover will be located up here. And then again, you'll use this area to create a collection and it's going to take us some time to be able to view that. However, with by creating a collection, when you create the collection, a pop-up will come up, you'll name the collection, and you'll just have the ability to add your images to those specific collections as you move forward. So anytime you start a new project, it's great to start a collection. And so again, using the coloring book example, we start a coloring book project. You may even want to have if you create a lot of coloring books and you start to sell them, you may even want to create different collections of pages or different, the names of different coloring books would then become different collections or different um, channels on your Discord bot. So at this point, I have um, pretty much shown you how to set up Mid Journey. I've shown you how to set up your profile. You can even edit the name here. So if you wanted to, you could edit your name. We have talked about how to organize your mid journey channel again, by adding collections, which at this point is, um, not available, but I'll keep checking. Um, again, here's how you do create a collection though. You'll just click on add to collection and I've also shown you how to organize your Discord bot by creating channels. And the next thing that we'll do is we will move into understanding prompt structure and how to create prompts. All right, so let's go back over to the lecture and learn about how to create our prompts. We are here in mid journey and we are ready to start creating our first prompts. Now, Based on the information provided in the lecture, the first thing that we want to do is to start with a clear concept. So we're just going to go with the concept that was provided as an example in the lecture. And in the lecture, the concept was a futuristic cityscape at sunset. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this first prompt. And here we're going to, in the input space, we're going to start by typing the forward slash, and then a list will come up here. We will choose the imagine prompt after selecting the imagine prompt. We will type in our first prompt. And again, we're going with a, a clear concept. So I'm just going to paste in our concept and we will type enter. And while we wait, let's look at what has happened to our prompt. You'll notice that our prompt is listed here. And next to it, we have two dashes, a V and a five. So this portion of the prompt that was added to our prompt is called a flag. And this specific flag refers to the version of mid journey that we are currently using. So this version of mid journey is version five. After that, you will notice your username. And here we have a percentage. This percentage is the percentage of your image in development. And after that it says fast for me, it might say relaxed for you, but this is the rate at which your image will be processed. And of course, once it's done, the percentage will go away. And now we have four output images. And if we click on them, we can see them in their full scale. And I'll just zoom in a little so we can see what's happening here. So all four of our images are at sunset. 
all four of our images are futuristic cityscapes. Um, and that is all that we had in our prompt. So this specific prompt really gave Mid Journey the freedom to be as creative as it needed to be within those constraints. And later on, we'll talk about different ways to determine how creative Mid Journey can be. But this specific prompt, because of the clear concept that was provided really gave mid journey freedom to add whatever small details it wanted to add within reason. So you'll notice that the lighting is pretty much the same on these three images, but this image is a little darker. And again, because we did not specify our lighting, um, this was an option for mid journey. So you'll also notice that we have different shaped buildings in each of our cityscapes. And let's go ahead and go back to our feed and let's talk about the buttons that come up under the output. So the first four buttons at the top that are U1, U2, U3, and U4, these are all buttons that are um, used to upscale these images. So this would be image one. And if you wanted to upscale it, you would use U1. This is image two. To upscale it, you use U2. Here is image three. It's controlled by U3. And this is image four, which is controlled by U4. Beneath the U buttons, we have the V buttons. The first V button is asking for different variations of image one. So, and the same is for two, three, and four. Each V button, if you choose, will give you four different variations of each of the images that correspond with the numbers. And this last button here is the re-roll button. So it, it will basically allow you to um, click this button and it will regenerate this same prompt, um, but it's basically giving it a chance to try it again. So I went ahead and clicked on that button so we can see how it works. We will also go ahead and upscale each of these images and we will go ahead and look at what happens when you choose to have new variations of your original image as well. So in this first image, I will um, go ahead and click the V1, and you'll notice that because I have the remix setting up, this gives us the opportunity to adjust any part of our um, prompt that we may want to adjust. So if I wanted to change any part of this, I could at this point, but for the very first image, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna leave it exactly how it is. I'll go ahead and click Submit. So this is just going to keep the same exact prompt, but it'll give me four new versions of this image. Now we'll go on to image two. And here on image two, I will make one adjustment. So let's do futuristic cityscape at night. So we'll change this from sunset to night and we'll click submit. And now um, the next is for cityscape three. So I'll click V3 and I will, for this one, I will say futuristic cityscape at sunset and then I will add flying cars. So I'll say with, with flying cars. And again, the first portion is exactly the same, but now I've added something into this scene. So let's go ahead and go to the next. And for this next one, it is futuristic cityscape at sunset. And this time I will say in the winter. And we'll go ahead and click submit. So again, just to uh, review, on this first image, I asked for four new variations of the image exactly how it is with the same exact prompt. And then here, I changed it from sunset to night. The third image, I added flying cars. And in the fourth image, I changed, I added um, a specific time of year. So now, Let's go ahead and scroll down. And the first four images that we're going to see will be the upscaled versions. So um, actually, if I click here, it will drop us to the images that we haven't seen. And this is very helpful because 
as you continue to generate images, your feed will get fairly long. And if you just click the uh, bar up here, it'll take you to what has recently been um, output. So this is just the upscale version. And in version five of Mint Journey, we have 1024 setting on the output size. And so you really can't do too much that requires detail when it comes to the size of the image. However, there are tools that we will explore later on in the course that will help you to upscale the image so that it can be used in a professional uh, manner if needed. So this image looks pretty good. And based on the input that we gave Midjourney, this came out great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next image. And here we have our next image. And again, this looks like a pretty nice image based upon the fact that it is at sunset. We understand that we're going to have a pretty strong uh, light coming from the sun. And this haze is pretty much coming from the fact that it's at sunset. So um, again, this is a, a nice image that Midjourney has provided us with. Let's go ahead and now go to the next. And you'll notice that this has a slightly different style. We've started to incorporate these neon lights. And again, being that we did not specify the style in the prompt, now we have given Midjourney freedom to kind of choose whatever artistic style it wanted to output. So after we look at these first few images, we'll go back and make some minor adjustments with the style of the output just to see how that's going to affect the images that Midjourney puts out. So again, with the clear concept, this is the image that we were provided with and it looks great. So let's go ahead and check out the next. And here, while we are here, you'll notice that there are also three buttons that are generated with the upscaled images. And so if I did not know that I wanted to have multiple versions of this cityscape from looking at the previews. When I scroll down, if I then decide that I want to have more versions of this, then I can very easily just click make variations and it will again give me four images like this one with minor adjustments, which we'll see a little bit later on in the feed. And this next button will take me to my mid journey profile and it will take me to my mid journey basically feed and it's going to hold all of the images that I created in mid journey. So this, if you ever want to see all of the images that you've created without going through this specific feed, they are also on, cause this feed is for discord. So by clicking this button, it takes you to your mid journey portfolio, which also holds all of your images. And we'll take a look at the mid journey portfolio once we have added to it. And now the last button is the favorite button. And this favorite button is pretty important because by adding a feedback and providing mid journey with feedback based upon the first four images, if we continue to use this prompt, mid journey knows what style we liked. So again, going back to these first four images, they're all kind of in a different style. Again, this one starts to have the neon lights. This one has a completely different lighting and, um, these two seem to be in a similar style, but they're not exactly the same. So by providing feedback and favoriting one or more of these images, Midjourney now knows what aspects to keep um, based upon um, your feedback. So I went ahead and favorited the image and we'll go ahead and look at the next. This one has a little bit of neon uh, lights going on, but it also has a different color scheme, if you will. And here is the second edition of our request. So this is when we clicked the re-roll button. It gave us four new variations of this same exact prompt. So every time we click this re-roll button, it will just 
tr is basically saying, okay, I'll try it again. And it will generate new images just from you clicking on this button. And this is a great tool to use if you are at the beginning of a project or if you don't have a project that requires specific um, details, this is a great tool to use. It also, you'll notice that because of the fact that they're kind of similar, if you were doing something like um, working on a book, this could very well be perhaps um, different parts of the same city and it could be different times of day in the same city but in different locations. But we do have four futuristic images of cityscapes at sunset. So I'm going to I actually like a couple of these. So I'm going to go ahead and upscale four. Um, actually, I'll just upscale all of them so that we can see what they look like. And here, these are the images that were produced from asking for variations of the first image. So I basically clicked on V1 and it gave us the same image, but again, with slightly different buildings. One thing that is consistent seems to be this highway or this structure here. I'm not sure exactly if it's a highway or not, but there is a, a curved structure that is in all of the images. They are all still at sunset, so that didn't change. And then again, also the color scheme on this one remain the same as well. So some things will be consistent, but it will add very slight differences in the image. And in this case, what has changed the most is the building structures. And here are the, this is the request that was made for the futuristic cityscape at night. So this time in the first image, I kept the exact same prompt, but if you change one word of the prompt, you'll get a slightly different output. And because we changed that word of the prompt, now we were provided with four new images, but now they're all at night. You'll also notice that they're at night and the sun is here. So we will compare this to what we would get if we simply re-input the prompt. So instead of remixing the prompt, in this case, we're going to put in the prompt again to see what will happen. And just really to compare the remixed version of this to what would if we use this as the original prompt. And the reason for that is because the original prompt was remixed from an image that had the sun. And so my goal is to show you that without remixing the image, I'm just putting in the a new prompt that says the futuristic cityscape at night. At this point, we should not have the sun because our we don't have an original image to convert to night. However, all of these images came out pretty good. I actually like this twilight feel, this feel of being between day and night. This one looks like my favorite one when it comes to viewing these images from the preview. However, we'll go ahead and upscale them and see what they look like in a little bit of a larger format. And one thing that I will say is with Midjourney version five, these images are actually already upscaled. They are, they are just um, smaller versions. However, it does not take nearly as long to have the larger version produced. So in all of the other versions, version Midjourney 1 through 4 would require you to wait on the images to be regenerated because it needed to basically generate a new image based upon your request to have the image upscaled. Well, now that it's already upscaled, it will quickly generate that image so we don't have to wait. And we'll see that once we get down to it. So here I have added again, flying cars. So we kept the exact same, same original prompt, but in the remix, we added, we said with flying cars. And so now with the flying cars, 
the building structures look very similar. This one seems to have just a little less detail in here, but when you look at the shapes, the shapes at the top vary a little bit. Other than that though, they really look almost identical. The only thing that was adjusted here is that flying cars were added to the scene. And here we changed it to winter. And this first one looks like it might be snowing. There are some like particles that appear to be in the air, but um, I'll have to upscale to see if that is the case. The rest of them pretty much look the same. It's, it's not immediately apparent that there was a change in the uh, time of year, but we'll see again when we, ups when we see the upscales. And this message here basically comes from the fact that we have favorited one of the upscaled images. So it just tells you that you have favorited an image. Now let's scroll down. Here is one of the upscaled versions of our re-rolled um, original prompt. So we had the original prompt, we got our first four images, and then we chose to click on this button right here which basically just repeat it. And this is what the output was. So here, this looks like a very clear image and you can clearly see the details. You have this almost modular, I guess, style. Um, all of the buildings appear to be in the same material. And it yes, it does look pretty futuristic. Let's go ahead and scroll down and see what the next image looks like. So this material really reminds me of kind of the earlier versions of the Unreal Engine renderings of their material as well. This is almost a style in and of itself when you think about the visual aspects of the image, having this high shiny material on all of the buildings it becomes a style that's a lot different than some of the other cityscape buildings. Like if we compare it to these buildings, they're not nearly as shiny for the material at least. So as we scroll down, um, here is another building and or another cityscape with a little bit of a darker lighting. And again, because we did not specify the lighting, we said sunset, so that's how specific we got. Other than that, the color and everything else was kind of left up to mid journey to decide. And you can also see that we now have some um, floating structures in the scene as well, which is pretty interesting after we have requested the flying cars in the flying car uh, portion. All right. And here is the winter scene. So again, these, it kind of looks like there is some specks of snow in the air, but that is about as much as we can see when it comes to the request for turning our scene into a winter scene. And that is still pretty good. That's pretty nice, pretty good for just adding to the scene using the remix mode. And okay, so here it looks like we might have some snow on the ground as well. So this did turn into a nice winter scene as well. Scrolling down, it's not directly apparent that there's snow, but it does look have like a cold tone to it. And this is our last winter scene. Again, now I'm seeing some snow that has kind of piled up on the buildings and also on the ground. So just by using the remix version um, or the remix mode, we were able to adjust our setting and add to the scene, which is pretty awesome. I'll see you in the next class. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and before we do anything else with the prompts, let's talk about how to use the remix mode and how to adjust some of the settings 
in mid journey. So in order to bring up the settings menu, you need to still click and start with the forward slash. But this time, instead of clicking imagine, we're going to click on settings and we'll go ahead and click enter. And what this has done is it's brought up a list of mid journey settings. And on this first row, these first two rows, actually, these are just mid journey versions. And as you can see, we're currently in mid journey version five and there are five different versions of mid journey. This course will cover mid journey four and five. We'll do one or two things in three. We will not go over one and two. And the differences between the versions is that when we think about the history of mid journey, number one, uh, mid journey version one would be the first version of mid journey using the stable diffusion. And we actually can go ahead and look at just the differences. So we will, while we're here, let's go ahead and click on version one. So we're changing to version one and we're going to use the same, let's use this prompt. So we'll add the same prompt to mid journey version one. And this will allow us to see the progression. I'll now change to version two and we'll do the same prompt, but in version two. Now I'll go to version three. We'll do the same prompt, but again in version three. And we'll go to version four, the same prompt. And we will see the differences. So at this point right here, this is version one and this is what a futuristic cityscape at sunset with flying cars would start to look like if it were output by version one. As we scroll down, we're starting to see what's happening with version two. It is um, being generated here as well. And um, three and four are still in queue. So version one is now done. And this is what the output would look like with version one. So the futuristic cityscape, and you can really tell that Mid Journey has come extremely far when you think about the quality of the image. We really could not make out what's happening here. I'm not sure if this is a structure or if these are the flying cars or if this is a plane. We can't really differentiate between what's happening. Here we have this cityscape, but it appears to maybe have a helicopter at the top. I'm not exactly sure, but again, we can make out the cityscape and that's a, and the fact that it's at sunset. But when it comes to the futuristic portion, it's not quite there. So let's go ahead and take a look at what version two would output. So here's version two. And in comparison, here's version one. And then when we look at two, now we're starting to be able to at least see cars. They still almost look like they're on the streets, but cars are there. This one doesn't really seem to have too much of a cityscape in the background. So a little bit of our prompt was lost, but we still have the idea of sunset. Again, they're all in the same style, this hazy style, and there's really very little to no detail in all of the images. It's kind of just the color that has been added to the screen or to the image. And then I will also go ahead and upscale one of each so that we can see how long that they take to upscale. I believe this is Mid Journey 5 because it doesn't have a version. so. We're going to scroll past this one for now. Here's Mid Journey 3. And as you can tell, we st we're starting to get more detail. Now our buildings, at least this building, you can actually see windows. We can differentiate between the building structures and we can't really see flying cars in one, but in two, we do have cars and they look like they might be moving at a fast pace. So just the interpretation overall is starting to get a little clearer. And if you look down here, you'll notice that this is not too, this is far away. So we really can't compare the detail, but let's go ahead and upscale version or uh, image two. Then we'll scroll down and the upscaled version of from version one is at 95%.
it just now completed. So it took a little bit longer, again, just to have it upscaled when it compares in comparison to version five, which when at the point where you get the previews, they're already upscaled. So you get that immediate, if you choose to upscale the image, you immediately get that image. Here, we're looking at a closer image of the version two. And again, not really sure what's happening here or in the sky, but we can make out these buildings at least. And the upscaled versions also do have a lot more detail than the previews. So that's the difference when it when we talk about the previews. Also, if you look underneath the different versions, looking at version one and version five, if you remember, we only had three buttons. We had the make variations, the favorite and the web button. But for version one, we have these three additional buttons upscale to max, light upscale redo, and beta upscale redo. So um, we can go ahead and test out, and also the uh, remaster, we'll go ahead and test out these four additional buttons that came with version one. And coming down to version two, we still have those same versions, those same buttons. We'll just see what the differences are between each and these two are still um, being processed. All right, so this brings us to version three. And here, this is starting to look a lot more like flying cars. So this is pretty cool. So in the preview, those cars actually looked like they were on the street trying to find the preview right here. So here's the one that I chose and they look like they're on the street, but in the upscale version, they actually look as though they are flying. So they're actually in the air, which is pretty cool. Um, so we're getting closer to the requested concept, still not nearly as much detail and everything kind of looks like it's the same material. If you think about the way that art has progressed over the years and the history of art, that's kind of what Mid Journey's outputs in the different versions, they kind of follow that same feel so we have we start off with less detail and then as it progresses we're getting more detail and we're getting more variation in the materials that are illustrated in our image and so here still in version three we still have the same buttons we can upscale to max light up scale redo um, beta up scale redo and remaster so this is the light up scale of the version one it does now seem to have a little more detail. Um, if we look, we can kind of see even a glare on this building, which was not there before. And that indicates that we're now starting to see material illustrated in our image. I'm still not sure what these are. Looks like a part of the helicopter, a helicopter. But again, that's part of the concept. When we think about the differences between the different versions and this now light up scale. We can even now, after the light scale, we can ask for a detailed up scale. So let's go ahead and um, click that. And as we scroll down, here is the up scale max. So this should have as much detail as we could get. And it basically is the maximum that mid journey could produce so it has high detail strong contrast with the colors we can actually make things out now and here we could also do a detailed upscale redo um, so we have a new option in our buttons here we've already clicked the rest of them for this image so i'm going to go ahead and now try the detailed upscale on the max just to demonstrate what that does and then here this is the upscale beta which is basically a tested version of doing upscales. The only thing that I'm seeing that has changed is now we have these artifacts, what looks like artifacts in our image. And prior to that, we did not have whatever these were. This is actually a flying object, I believe. And then here we, we don't have nearly as much detail, so we really can't make it out. And we have the same buttons from our last image as well. So now, 
we have done the cityscape at sunset sunset with the remaster so it has put us given us a test flag and a creative flag and when i talk about the idea of not needing to use as much technical phrases and as much technical wording as we needed to in the past when we're using ver mid journey version 5 this is kind of what i'm referring to so here, this creative flag, a lot of the flags are no longer necessary in version five, but prior to version five, you needed to add a lot of flags to determine the style, the quality, the output, and here, um, the size. There were so many different um, flags, and you can still do all of that in Mid Journey 5, but Men Journey 5 lends itself to natural language as opposed to having to use technical terminology and um, adding a lot of flags. But we'll go ahead and upscale both of these so that we can see. And this first one is, I think, the test version. And this next one, it also added a creative version. So we have two remastered images because none of them looked like this the first time. So we'll see how they look when they're upscaled. And then here, this upscaled version from version two is starting to look pretty awesome just for this version of Mid Journey. And we're, this is only the second version. And already, once you upscale it to the max, you're able to see the detail and you're able to really see um, a lot of what's going on in the background is starting to make a little more sense. I'm not sure these lines seem to be connected to the flying cars here. Let's go ahead and continue to go down. All right, and this is the light upscale of version two. And here again, we don't have as much detail as the max upscale, but it is a lot cleaner and it almost has just a different style to it maybe almost a minimalistic style as opposed to this which is almost in a, a realist style so this is pretty nice and it's nice that you have those options so let's go ahead and scroll down and as we look at this upscaled beta version, these lines almost give you a pastel vibe. So just like the beginning strokes of a pastel drawing is what this is starting to look like. And then this remaster again is getting even more impressive. I'm going to upscale both of these because they are looking awesome compared to the other upscales of this same image even the max on the remaster we have now at least finally we have two different cars they're not looking like they were connected and for a while they looked connected if you've ever done anything in like zbrush where you're able to make one stroke or adjustment on one side of your sculpture and it automatically happens at the same time on the other side these both of these images are looking like they were produced in that fashion but that doesn't take away the beauty of these two images at all and now we're at the light upscaled version so remember the max upscaled version in um, version three these cars were flying and then at the light upscaled version we have less detail we're not able to see the buildings that are underneath this area so it gives us the feel that the car is on the street here we still have a less detail in the buildings as well we're starting to have a little more contrast however still very well balanced and this feeling of this mirrored feeling is still pretty prominent in the image that having the same exact I guess the the terminology would be uh, symmetrical. So this perfectly, and if you think about it in the artistic world, um, this is not necessarily something that you would want to produce if you were producing a work of art that was supposed to be done naturally, uh, that was supposed to be something that was in 
the real world. We understand that not everything is going to be perfectly symmetrical. And even when you think about the rule of thirds, it does kind of follow the rule of thirds, but we still wouldn't necessarily want to compose everything to be this symmetrical, even though the buildings are not that similar. It's still just artistically a little overly symmetric. This is the max upscale of version three, and this is the final product. And it again looks pretty good it kind of reminds me of something in an older graphic novel this is the upscaled beta and in comparison to the upscaled max where we can see um, all of the details here it's just um, blended out just enough to make this look a lot smoother and here we are at creative and they don't hardly even look like the same image so this is great it has gone leaps and bounds in between this version and even this upscale version in Ver mid journey version 3 once you get to the remaster these two are amazing and i'm excited to see the larger uh, versions of these so we actually can see flying cars and in the sky we have settled on what seems to be a road here and that's great so we've got cars on the streets and in the sky there's no problem with that here we have kind of this a flat effect going on in the background at least on this preview and back here we don't but not exactly sure what this lighting is turning out to be I'll see you in the next class let's get started let's go ahead and keep looking here this is again version one the upscale version looks great and it's Again, this is where we're discussing the less detail that was in this upscale version. And if you compare that to version three that was remastered to the upscaled original version one, we gave it the same exact prompt. And this is the difference between these two outputs with the same prompt in version three, the remaster as opposed to version one with the original prompt. Let's go ahead and continue to scroll through. And these are just the upscales of the previews that I clicked on earlier of version one. So we're starting to be able to see kind of what's happening with these flying cars, getting more detail here. And now, now the cars needed to be, if they were going to be flying in the future, they needed to be hanging on something, which is pretty interesting. And here they're no longer hanging. Um, so the concept has evolved in this creative upscale here. So now it's understanding and really demonstrating the idea of flying cars and the reason that I chose this futuristic prompt was because I wanted to demonstrate Midjourney's ability to illustrate things that it hasn't seen yet and so it this is almost like us getting to view Midjourney's imagination in the process of its creativity so remember this is artificial intelligence but at the same time we're still able to watch the progression of this artificial intelligence in a way that we would still watch the progression of an artist and that's one thing that i really appreciate about using Midjourney and being able to track the different versions is that we can see Midjourney grow so let's go ahead and go on to our upscale. So this was basically the best of version one. And now we're going to see the upscaled best of version three. And as you can see, we have now we're able to see the way that the light is reflecting off of these vehicles. And it lets us know that we're dealing with and we're looking at different material, a different material here from the refraction based upon the way that the material is displayed and the light is bouncing off of this material on the ground up here. It's not enough detail in the best of version one for us to identify 
the material at all. So that's one thing to really keep in mind. And then here again, we were still able to see Midjourney get creative and um, illustrate these this idea of flying cars. They take on their own shapes here, but we're still having that symmetrical output. It's not so bad, but we do have definitely some a lot of um, overly symmetric outputs in this case. Scrolling down, these cars now take on whole new shapes. And that's another thing to think about. They still are looking like vehicles that we are used to seeing. And then here, they don't hardly look like cars that we, we're used to seeing at all now. So these are actually on the ground and they have a whole new like visor feel here at the top. Um, over when we look at the imagery for the flying cars, they're kind of looking like planes or helicopters or maybe even large drones. Now let's continue to move forward. And here we're looking at the, uh, the other upscaled remastered. Oh, this is the upscale veda from version three here we're starting to be able to see the grass so we're seeing that much detail to where now we can see the grass before in version one there was no way that we were able to identify blades of grass in any of this if it if it ever existed we could we would have to kind of assume that it was there and then this is really given off a feeling of a man-made structure anyway. So we really can't compare it, but we can, however, see that the detail has come a very long way. So just looking at the detail, building structure, it's almost a little less apparent, the symmetry here. We still have the road right in the middle of the composition. However, that is, again, when you think about the progression, just as I was started out as an art teacher and just the progression of learning to draw or to create a composition this is kind of the beginning stages of creating this horizon line that is here. And then we have things that are just going into the image. And just again, the structure of this composition really takes on, it has the feel of a beginning artist, but we have the detail to where we're able to see that it's starting to really master the ability to portray different material and to illustrate the way that the light is hitting off of different materials. And so this is awesome. This is a lot. Um, it's grown a lot since version one. And then here, this is the upscale beta version. And we still have this flat I'm not exactly sure what's happening in the behind these buildings. It's almost looking um, like it wants to be a movie poster. So having that cut out uh, feel. But then in this uh, middle ground here, we're having a little more detail. Again, um, just looking at the progression of the way this art is coming along. And so we've gone through all of them and... I will go back up to a version five image just to show where we are now. And this is the, we actually did not upscale these from the night. This is basically how much of a difference we see in just the output compared to the journey of mid journey. And again, looking here, we have so many different styles this style is a whole lot different and uh, minimalistic than this, almost a photorealistic style. And again, because we did not specify the style, Midjourney had the freedom to really choose what style to illustrate. So all of them, again, are awesome. And this is Midjourney 5's output. And I did want to just look at one of the outputs of the flying cars, compare it to 
what we had been looking at. So again, with the previews, these flying cars, and when you look at the diminishing scale, you're now able to see that before we had this right in the middle of the image and it was going into the horizon line. And as you progress as an artist, you start to understand how to show or portray a diminishing scale at an angle. And, and we're then able to add curves. And um, so just gets a little more complex when you think about the structure of the composition. So here you can tell that Men's Journey has really grown when it comes to just its ability to structure the composition. We're now going at an angle as opposed to the diminishing scale being right in the middle, which is when you teaching artists in the very beginning about diminishing scale, you, you start with that horizon line and you start with that real symmetrical feel. And so when we're thinking about the progression over time of mid journey here, we are able to clearly identify that the structure, the way that it structures these same images, we gave it the exact same uh, prompt. And we're able to see that the structure is now growing as well. So we're, it's, it's very obvious um, for me that the process that Midjourney is taking to compose its images. And so even here, you'll notice that it's the plane it has been slightly raised with its diminishing scale as well. So we're still able to see things diminish using this horizon line, but the plane has been raised. And if we go back down to these last images that we were looking at, where all of them went right directly into the horizon line and the horizon line was so prominent because of it, that's how you can really tell the difference. So even here, this is just how Mid Journey was using a very basic structure to structure all of its images. And it's grown in that way as well. If I needed to, I could even just draw out the way that it was being composed. And we can now see that it's using a slightly more complex, it's still not very good at certain angles and perspectives, but it has grown a lot. All right, so we are going to go ahead and stop here and we will look at the next suggestion, which is to use a concise and descriptive language when craft crafting the prompt. So the first thing that I need to do is go back to the settings and I'll need to scroll out a little. All right, so we'll go back to the settings and change back to version five. And now we are going to add concise and descriptive language to our same prompt. So here we're going to be looking at adding to our uh, futuristic cityscape at sunset. And so instead of saying just the futuristic cityscape at sunset, we're actually going to change that prompt to a, oh, give me a second, let me, there we go. All right, so we're changing our prompt from futuristic cityscape at sunset to a sprawling futuristic cityscape bathed in a warm glow of a uh, setting sun. So let's see how that is going to differ. And just so that we can compare again, I'm going to put that same exact descriptive text into Mid Journey 1, just so that we can see the differences between Mid Journey 5 and 1. I'm not gonna take the time to go through all of them. And later on, we will revisit 3 because it does have some pretty cool features in 3 that are not available in 4 or 5. But this, we're not gonna always, we're not gonna continue to compare everything throughout the versions. As I said before, we're gonna focus on version five, four, and we're just gonna do one or two things in three. So here, just looking at the differences between the time that it takes, you can tell that version one is already at 60% and version five is only at 31%. So it's taking twice as long to produce the version five images. But then again, if you think about it, version five, 
once it's output, number one, it's going to be a lot more complex um, on the imagery. But then number two, version five will come out with all of the images fully upscaled and there will be no waiting time for the upscale images. And we're about to see that here right now. So number one, let's look at the differences between one and five. Again, this very minimalistic, this almost has an abstract feel to it when it comes to the style. And then if you come down to version five, now we're again, starting to look like images that were rendered by Unreal Engine in some of their older versions, at least because Unreal Engine has come a very long way as well when it comes to rendering of uh, just materials. And here we're really able to see that we can see the depth. We can, we're able to see the way that the light reflects off of the different buildings and it really sets a different tone as opposed to these flatter images that were produced from Midjourney version one. So now let's look at the time that it takes for the upscale. And so we're gonna go ahead and upscale any of these, I actually like four, so I'm gonna choose four. And then we'll upscale some two of these as well. So I chose these bottom two. And as you can see, Midjourney five has already shown us our upscale version while uh, Midjourney 1, version 1, is still waiting to start. So this right now is a demonstration of the idea that when while Midjourney 5 takes longer to produce the previews, when the previews come out, they are already at full scale. So when you choose to upscale, they immediately come out. And again, we are still waiting on Midjourney 1 to start. So let's go ahead and look at these images and how they have changed just by adding a few words to our prompt. So first of all, we added sprawling and we added a sprawling futuristic cityscape bathed in a warm glow of a setting sun. So we can see this warm glow and it's readily apparent in both of these images. And if we look at now that we're getting out the output for version one, we're now able to see that it even has um, a hint of a glow in it as well. Okay, so it's version of the glow here is this orange color that is behind. That's a part of the sunset, but it also gives us this glow of the sunset. Here we have the hazy blurred look as well. And it is a part of the uh, prompt that says bathed in the warm glow. So again, here's the bathing in the warm glow, this um, haze that we're seeing over um, some of the, the ground and the city here. And then here again, because this is more of three dimensional, um, we're able to see that haze throughout the buildings. And the same goes here. All right, um, so just by adding the sprawling futuristic, the word sprawling to the beginning and then to the end, bathed in the warm glow, we're able to have a more concise and descriptive language that if you compare it to our original versions of this prompt, we're able to see that we get a more descriptive, a more descriptive input provides us with a more descriptive output. So here are some of the first images that we collected using that same prompt. And while we still had nice outputs, we are now looking at a much different perspective. So thinking about the perspective of our images, here we have a different perspective than we do on these last two images as well. But again, they're all covered with this glow. So the next part of the lecture tells us, suggests that we incorporate style and mood. So we're going to make another addition to our prompt now using pretty much the same prompt. And here 
we're going to add bathe in the warm glow of a, a setting sun but now we're adding with a vibrant neon lit skyline so let's go ahead and add that here and I'm almost tempted to throw it into mid journey one just to see I want to make sure that I am still on uh, mid journey okay well that was mid journey one. So let me go back to five. One way that you can also adjust the versions is by after the prompt. So here's the prompt. And now I can add a flag, which is indicated with two dashes. Then I can say V space five. And so that will make this next um, image come out as uh, version five but i want to go ahead and click on the button so that my setting is defaults to version five as opposed to um, version one so here we are going to be able to compare but that part wasn't really intentional um, and just as a comparison so now you'll see that after my prompt all you see is this v5 as opposed to before I changed my setting by clicking the one, I had the V5 and this V1 after the after my prompt. And so they'll still come out in version five, but version one at that point was the default. So once you click the button, you don't have to add the flag, but if I had not clicked the actual button in the settings, then each time I requested a prompt or I added a prompt I would always have to push v5 otherwise it would default to version one and that is why I have two version flags at the end of my prompt um, here but not there but here because the default was at one but I had it temporarily set to five all right so here is um, what happens once we added the vibrant neon lit skyline to our prompt and if we compare this to what comes out in version one again this looks and feels very minimalistic almost abstract um, and again this also really lends itself to the history of art just how it was illustrated and then if we compare it to our last image here is the image without the neon lit skyline um, and the, the, without the vibrant neon lit skyline so let's jump back down and these are looking pretty cool so i'm going to go ahead and upgrade upscale all of them just so that we can see what they look like i'll see you in the next class let's get started this these four images as well as these four images they're all on again on version five um, but we're starting to get a lot more um, close-up of the buildings and we're starting to now get some angles that are actually a part of the city or from the uh, city scape is viewed from within the city as opposed to before where we were like looking at the city from maybe across the water it almost feels like all right and here we still have this concept of being bathed in the warm glow of the sun which is awesome and um, looking at the style at this point it they they pretty much seem to be kind of in the same style and here this one almost appears to be the most detailed image of all of them we're almost able to see I'm not sure what this what's happening here it almost looks like greenery of some sort um, but it doesn't really make sense um, for it to be in our cityscape but at the same time who knows we did not specify what we wanted so again that could be what's happening then as we scroll down um here's the next image and again still bathed in the warm glow of the sun um and i didn't actually see there's i mean there's starting to be hints of the neon lit skyline but not so much here as we see in some of the other images so again this neon lit um, futuristic cityscape 
Awesome. All right. So the next suggestion is um, how to combine multiple ideas. So um, the lecture suggests that if we wanted to add something to this scene, then um, we would simply use the word and, and then after the word and, we would list what we wanted to add to our scene. So in this prompt, we are starting with our original prompt, which is a sprawling futuristic landscape bathed in the warm glow of a setting sun. And now we're using the word with to join a vibrant neon lit skyline to our first prompt. And then we're using the word and to join and add a colossal robot towering over the buildings. So let's go ahead, add that prompt. And because now we have the colossal robot and um, I just kind of want to still see what it looks like. I'm going to go to settings and actually let's add it one more time. But this time let's do see what it would look like in version one. Just because again, almost like with the flying cars, just to see how it's going to illustrate it in version one. And again, we see that version one will very quickly put its preview out. So, and we know that version five will take a little bit longer for the preview, but the upscale will be faster. All right. So I'm, even though version one is not, well, now it's done. All right. We'll just have to wait. So here we have our colossal robot towering over the buildings and it looks pretty good just by adding that to our prompt we're able to get our original scenes so before this was what the output was like and now with giving it our original scenes we're now added adding the robot to that original prompt which is great let me go ahead and scroll out because it looks like it may have uh started over it was there and now it's coming back with the 20 percent. and keep in mind the way that it reads the prompt is it's going to start with the first portion of the prompt first. So it will start by illustrating the sprawling futuristic landscape bathed in the warm sun. And as you can see, the more that we're generating this detailed uh, description, the better version one is actually getting at the output. So this looks so much better than the original, but if anything looks like a robot, I guess I would say that maybe this has a possible robot head. Nothing else really lends itself to the idea of a robot. And these images are still pretty flat and um, minimalistic. And here we have a very awesome and what looks to be easily imported robot that is now in our scene. And lastly, it's just suggested that we continue to test the same prompt, but with adjusting the properties, which is what we've been doing. So we have been adjusting the version property. And if we go back to settings, we can take a look at some of the other properties that we are able to adjust when it comes to the prompt. So we looked at the versions and then Let's go ahead and look at these two versions as well. These two versions here are anime style outputs. So if we switch over to this version and we use this same prompt, that looks pretty cool. It's just not exactly, there's no robot. And this is from the version one. And then we go back to the settings and go over to All right, so here we've changed the versions and we're going to compare their output. So they're just really a different style and their output is more of an anime feel as opposed to what we get when we're using version five of Mid Journey. All right, 
And while we wait, we'll go ahead and look at the rest of the settings. So here we still have uh, the Mid Journey test and um, the Mid Journey photo test photo. So we can go ahead and switch over to that and we'll just look at all of the different settings that we could choose and we'll use the same prompt. And then this last one is the photo test. All right. And because of the fact that Mid Journey offers a free version and a paid version, some of the settings are limited. For example, stealth mode, which allows you to be the only one that sees your output. And the opposite of that is public mode. And so unless you pay an additional fee, all of your images that you output can be viewed by the community. We have more of an anime style output. And again, with version five though, there's no weight on the rendering. So they immediately come out and that is awesome. And here is version four. You can immediately tell the difference in the colors. Um, so the color themes uh, on this version four is much more vibrant than version five. And version four takes a little bit longer because um, as with the difference between version four and five on mid journey, we still have to wait for version four to basically rebuild the image once you've suggested that it be upscaled. So let's go ahead and while we wait on these images, we'll take a look at, so this is the test and so is this. So this is the test, uh, photo test that is being rendered. It almost looks like version one but I know that we're on um, mid journey photo test here. So I'm going to go back and um, this looks like we need to add the version. So I'm going to do both of these and then afterwards I'll do um, the V5. All right. And that was that one. And we'll come back and look at our outputs here in a second. So which one was that? That was the photo test and we'll just redo the test as well for version five. All right. And while we wait on the photo test, we can take a look at these other two images that were produced. And so they look pretty good. Again, like I said, they do have a more of a anime style just because of the version, but this is version four and it's pretty awesome. Um, it did a really good job at rendering these, this flying car here and the bathed in the warm glow. It actually really did um, handle the description pretty good. And the same for this one as well. It's starting to really look like a scene from a game. So again, this is from this version here and I'm I you normally don't use this version, but I did want to just demonstrate what these two versions look like. And just like it says, it has this anime style as well. And here, this is the test P with version five, and this is still the outcome. So um, I'm going to say that if you use the mid journey test P, this is the type of outcome that you are just going to get. So let's look at our settings again. And here, the next setting is a quality. And so as you can see, just really to illustrate the different features that come with the different um, subscriptions. So, and we'll take a look at the subscriptions as well, but there are three or four different levels of subscriptions that you can get. And with the lowest $8 subscription, you get no fast mode. So the differences between these qualities is the fast modes. You don't get a fast mode with the $8, but if you go to like the 10, the next level up, which I believe is $10, you get a small amount of fast mode, which will allow mid journey to quickly produce your requested prompts. And then relax mode, the difference between waiting one minute 
and versus waiting one second. So I have mine on fast mode right now because of the fact that this is a demo and an actual course on mid journey. And I don't want to do a lot of waiting for the images to be produced. However, if this was just me using mid journey throughout the day, I would have no problem using relax mode. So most people suggest to leave yours in re relax mode until it is necessary because you only get so much fast time. And once you use the fast time up for the month, um, you don't get any more. Um, you can't use it anymore unless you upgrade your, your subscription. So here, it, when it's saying that the high quality has twice the cost, it's referring to you're going to use t twice the amount of your allotted time again. And once it's gone, then you have to wait until either the next month or you upgrade your subscription. So if you have the free version, I believe that you might get 25. And as soon as we get done with this, we'll look at the subscriptions, but I believe you get 25 images that you can produce a month. And so if you're using this high quality, it says that it's twice the cost. So you'll be able to produce even less images. And then some of these are not even going to allow you to change until you upgrade. So here, because I have the, I think the $30 a month, like I am able to have the higher quality images produced. Down here, as we said, the difference between public mode and stealth mode is that public mode, everyone can see what your output and stealth mode, only you can see it. But even with the $30 a month, you'll notice that I have a message that says that my current membership plan does not provide the private mode so i need to upgrade and that's basically we'll go to that subscription here in a second but going back to the settings after that is the remix mode and so if i turn off remix mode and i click on one of these images here if i wanted to get different variations you'll notice that i don't have that pop-up and it doesn't give me the ability to now adjust so before when i started with the basic futuristic cityscape i think it was at sunset and then when i click on v the option to have different versions a pop-up came up and i was able to type in with flying cars and add those to the scene well um, without having remix mode on i would not be able to do that so now when i click on create variations i don't have the ability to add to the scene so it also doesn't work here but if i turn it on I'm not sure if it'll work in version one anyways, but we'll see. Oh, yep, it works in version one. So here I can say, instead of um, one, I can put two colossal robots towering over, which in version one, it did not have robots anyways, but if I wanted to, I could adjust. And the reason I can add to this scene is because, or subtract from the scene, adjust the scene is because I have remixed mode on. And we've already talked about fast mode and relax mode. So the last thing that I want to do before we go back over into the lecture again is to look at the subscription. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll all the way down to this message here. I did want to see this, see how it handled the two robots and it still looks like they're still not there but let's go ahead and go to forward slash subscribe and see if that'll take us to the actual subscription page because the last time it didn't all right here is the subscription page so this will show you what your plan has. So I have this standard plan. And if I need to buy more of anything that I can, here's the plan features and here's how much it is. So it does cost $30 a month. And then if I scroll down, here are the options. So there's no longer an $8 a month option, but there is a $10 a month option. And with the $10 a month um, option, here are the features that you get. You get limited, uh, oh, you actually get 200 Okay, I thought it was 25. So you get about 200 generations a month, which is great. Um, well, that's with the 10. Um, I think with the, with the free, you still just get 25. Um, and then here you get, okay, these are about the terms, the access to the member gallery. You get the optional credit top-ups so you can add to it if you want. And then you get 
um, three concurrent fast jobs. So you're able to do three of them at a time. And then this is the current plan, which I have. And I think a lot of people have. It gives you 15 hours of fast generation. So when it comes to the fast versus the relax mode, again, just during this course, I have mine on fast, but for the most part, I use the relax mode because I don't want to overdo this um, 15 hour limit that I've been given. And then if I look here, um, I have the, the next thing is the unlimited relaxed. And so you can do that as much as you need to throughout the month. Then we still have the same general commercial terms, access to the member gallery, optional credit top ups and three concurrent fast jobs. Then if we go up to the $60 a month, then we get 30 hours. So twice as many of the fast generations, unlimited relaxed time is still same on the terms, same with the access to the gallery. You can still upgrade, but now for $60 a month, the addition is the stealth mode. So you can turn on the stealth mode so that no one else can see what you are doing. So with these two options, um, you can see in the com from the community um, page what everybody is doing. And if you sit there and watch the, the feed, which I actually suggest because it gives you the ability to learn how they are creating their images and you can also get inspiration on creating your own. So I do suggest doing that sometimes. But these are the subscriptions. And if we scroll down here, it's going to give you a the frequently asked questions. So it will help you with explaining what fast hours are, what relaxed generation is, and how to top up and add to your subscription or even to cancel it. So I would suggest taking a look at this subscription page as well. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop here and I will see you in the next lesson. All right. We are back in mid journey and we're ready to practice image prompting. So the first recommendation from the lecture was to make sure that our reference image was the proper file type. So mid journey currently accepts PNG, GIF or JPG. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to generate our first image in mid journey. Now, if you have an image from outside, that's fine. But the first image that we're going to use comes from mid journey and it will have the same process or require the same process as it would if it came outside of mid journey. The next thing that we're going to do is let's go ahead and create that image. And this time I'm going to start with a shoe and I'm going to combine it with an Xbox controller. So the way that we're going to do this is first we need to generate the image of the shoe and we're just going to go with the image prompt and then we're going to enter the shoe. So I'm going to start with Jordan Retro 5s and I'm going to go ahead and generate the prompt and while that is generating the prompt I'm also going to do an Xbox controller. So we have both of our images um, that are going to be generated. And again, I could have taken these images off of the internet or I could have taken a photograph. But as we get started, the most important thing is that we have a clear image with just the object that we want to combine in the shot. So one of the good things about generating this with mid journey is that we can be as specific as we need to. And I've already requested the image of just the shoe. So for the most part, I expect that it will be generated with no background, but because we have complete control over what our outcome is, if we need to, we're able to quickly remove the background by adding the words, no background, to the prompt. And the same thing goes for the controller. So just so that you know kind of what we're going to be looking for. And one of the reasons that I'm choosing these two objects is because I want to choose two objects that we know that will create one object that we know does not currently exist. And this is going to give us the ability to practice weighting our image, basically providing different image weights 
to our image and it will also give us the ability to practice a couple types of image prompting. Um, so in general, we were creating images with text, but now we can combine two objects using the blend mode and we can also use the image plus the descriptive text in our prompt. So this will give us some flexibility. And again, this is just the very first time. So think of two objects that have nothing to do with each other. And this is gonna be two objects that we will be able to put together to create a brand new object. And this is just for learning purposes, but if you're able to get this part down later, when you have something in mind, you'll be able to generate that image a lot faster. And the first thing that I'm noticing with this image is that it looks like they're coming out with backgrounds. And so I'm going to now copy the original prompt and I'm also going to be specific with the color. So I'm going to say white Xbox controller with no background. And again, this is just a part of the process. As you generate your images, you are going to have to probably sometimes do it more than once. And it's something that you should be prepared to do. So because I have a specific concept in mind, I'm specifically looking to use kind of these buttons. I want to see aspects of the controller and probably the buttons on the shoe. And I do not want the color of the controller to interfere with what I'm looking for with the shoe. So um, it's very important to have an idea in mind kind of as you move forward. That way you know how to kind of prompt your, how to adjust or craft your image prompts. So here I like all of them, but number two is probably the best one that I'm seeing just because it has no background. Um, and I actually wouldn't mind having the white. Um, so what I'll do is I will also do the same thing for the Jordan retro fives. I will simply say, oops, Jordan retro fives. I'm going to do uh, white and with no background. All right, this one right here is perfect. So number four is perfect for me. Um, number four or number one, but I like number four because it's a little larger, it's a little closer up. I don't mind number one. I mean, number one's pretty good too because it has less of a this shade, this um, shade here or this tone. However, I'm gonna go with, let's just do both of them. And now we're having the white uh, Jordan Retro 5s created. Looks good, looking good. I'll do the three, I'll do the um, the red ones and I will also do the white ones just so we can see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this image and I'm going to save it to my computer. So first of all, you need to have the images saved to your computer for us to do the first image prompt. All right, and now I have also options with the white. So I chose the red and now I'm choosing the white. And I'm just, I'm saving them all to my computer right now. All right, so now I pretty much have uh, what I'm looking for. And we're gonna start with the blend, the blend mode. And so here's how you would, um, because I've saved this to my computer, the first thing I can do is show you how you would add an image to Mid Journey. So there is a plus button here. If you click this plus button, it gives you the ability to add an external image to Mid Journey. So I can click here and now it's giving me the option to upload an image. And um, I will just upload an image of a shoe that I've already created 
using the same fashion just so that you'll know what it looks like and then i'm going to click enter and now this image is now in mid journey and once it's in mid journey then i can always um, use the image address and i can paste it into the image prompt um, and i'll show you how that did how to do that when we get to that method so with the blend method here's how you do the blend method you're going to do forward slash blend and then you're going to click enter and you'll notice that here it's given us the ability to upload two images so basically what blend mode will do is it gives you the ability to combine two images now that is why it's just so important for us to have just the image with no background and so i'm going to start with the white so here's my white uh, retro fives and then next i'm going to do the controller and we'll start with just these two and i'll go ahead and click enter and as you can see now they are being blended and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to do it again now forward slash blend and then this time i'm going to do the red retro fives as well and again with the white controller and just because I will use the other white controller just to see which one kind of works out better. All right, so now we have both images being combined and we're gonna see how this turns out. And so for the, act, the first uh, blend mode, we won't necessarily have too much control over this first round of blending because we're just ad adding them together. But in the next, demonstration i'm going to show you how to control the weight of your image all right so our images have completed and again this is just the straight blend mode and i am automatically amazed with how they have come out so they are they still um, look like shoes at least um, and they have the buttons that have been added to the shoe. So some of them, some of these cases are looking a little like a little disfigured, but, um, they still look pretty good. This one, I love this one. And you can tell that this came from the red shoe. So the red shoe produced some really good results. I love all of them. I love, love, love them. And I think this one came from the white shoe, but I love this angle um, because you can still see that it is the shoe. And that is awesome. So I went ahead and re-rolled them just to see what will happen if we, let me go ahead and favorite these, um, but just to see what will happen if we regenerate the images. And so we can also, yes, I like that one. So here we've regenerated the images and sometimes this one came out pretty good. So these one and three came out great. Four is a little boxy at the toe for me. It's been feeling a little like it got pushed too far, um, but it's not too bad. And um, number two is still looking like the remote, but I mean, it came out to be a pretty cool remote for what it's worth. Um, when I've upscaled this one, it's starting to look like this button is just a little deformed. Um, and this one's still pretty cool. It's a little blurry over here, but that's not too much of a problem. So I love all of them. And at this point we could go back through and ask for some, ask it to make variations. So I'll just click submit on all of them. I don't necessarily want to change too much and so really what that's doing is it's going to resubmit this uh, prompt but this is our first method and we will see how it turns out so already we can see that this first one they pretty much look all alike I'm really not seeing any real change in maybe here at the sole of the shoe there's a little bit of difference the jump man just the lighting on the jump man looks a little different but for the most part they came out looking the same which is kind of fine here it looks like we have a little more definition around the buttons which is 
kind of cool. So that's looking pretty nice. And the soles, um, yep, the soles are different. I like them. I'm just gonna go ahead and upscale a few of them just to see what they look like um, upscaled. And let's go ahead and look at our second um, method. So with the second method of image prompting, we are going to actually add the image link and then we're going to add descriptive text. So well, I'm going to go back to our original image of the shoe and I'll just do both the red and the white again. And here we need to um, I think I think I'm going to have to. All right. So we're going to have to copy the image address and then we'll open the image prompt. So not the blend prompt. Let me remove this but the image prompt. And then we're going to paste the image address. And then we're going to say, we'll say as, we'll say as an Xbox controller. So we'll say with Xbox controller features. All right, and we'll do the same thing with the red. It's already coming out pretty cool. We're going to go back to the red retro and we're going to, this time we'll just put Xbox controller after it. All right, so we'll open the image prompt and we will paste the image address and we'll type Xbox. So this time I'm just doing the link and then the words Xbox controller. So I'm leaving a little bit of the creativity up to um, mid journey. Wow. I love them. I love number one. I love number two and I love number three. Um, number four had some difficulty, but sometimes it happens like that. That's not to say that this wouldn't be an awesome controller, but we are, I love, uh, I just love these. And I'm going to reroll just to see what else it'll do. So we'll compare what happens when we say with Xbox controller features to just the words Xbox controller. And they both came out looking pretty good. I'm not sure what part of the controller this is, but oh my goodness. I love these graphics that it even added. That is awesome. Amazing. Nice. I'm going to, I'm going to, so again, by making sure that if you come across, um, images that you like, then you have to let Midjourney know that it did the right thing because it just makes, um, your journey with mid journey that much smoother in the future. Um, you're going to run into less of less in instances of this. So this is not what we're looking for. So we did not favorite that, but we like these. Um, and so by us letting mid journey know that we do like, this is what we're looking for. Then as we continue to, um, go on this route, mid journey, is more likely to present us with objects that we're trying to create. And it's kind of like liking things on a feed and just being presented with more of those objects or things that are similar to. So Mid Journey's algorithm is basically pulling information from you and then it is learning from um, what you like. So it's important that you let it know what you like in order for it to do its job correctly. And so here, this came from one of the re-rolls and not too many of them. I'm not a fan, so I'm going to leave all of them there. I love, I love it. I love it. Nice. Nice. I, I even, I'm even a fan of this remote, like <laughs> the remote is even awesome. I'm going to say that just from the shape of these, I'm going to even like the remote, 
but um, I'm going to leave this one out because I'm not necessarily liking the shape of the shoe. And these are nice. I could see these being classic some kind of way. Uh, this one's real smooth. How it's coming together here. I'm going to go ahead and um, like or upscale that one. I want to upscale all of them just so I can see what they look like. Nice. So this is the one where we asked for some uh, more variations. And here, I love it. I absolutely love it. Now that we had some time to experiment with how to make these objects, and if you find that while you're following along, your object comes out looking like, I don't want to say trash, but comes out looking worse than you expected, just make sure that you take the time to, if there's even one in the right direction of what you're looking for, make sure that you favorite it. I cannot express that enough. And people favorite images so little on Mid Journey that if you actually favorite a lot of images, Mid Journey will actually reward you with an additional with additional fast time. So remember when I was talking about the subscriptions and you only get so many fast hours? Well, Mid Journey is actually actively trying to get people to remember to um, favorite and like the images that they create because people just naturally grab these images and then go on about whatever their project is. But so few people are doing it that Mid Journey is now rewarding people if you meet a certain quota, um, which I don't know the number and the number might change for all I know, but I do know that I have been rewarded for liking enough images. So make sure that you do that. Um, it helps you and it helps mid journey. And in the long run, wow, in the long run, again, it will help you get better results. Oh my goodness. These might be my favorite right here. Just that right there is what I love. <laughs> Yes, so nice. Yep, I'm liking all of them. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we are now going to do a little experiment. And here, in this experiment, we are going to take some time to first go back to the beginning of this Retro 5 and Xbox controller journey. We're going to go back to the, I really like the outcome of the red shoe. So I'm gonna start with this. And now we're going to learn how to um, weight our images. So I've entered the image prompt and now I'm going to grab this image address and I'm going to paste it into my prompt and I'm going to say Xbox controller again. And this time I'm going to use what is called a flag. So to make a flag, you click dash two times. So dash dash, and this is the image weight flag. And you use the image weight flag by typing I W for image weight. And then you're going to click space. Now, depending on the version of Mid Journey that you're using, it's going to really determine what range you're going to use when you choose your image weight. But for Mid Journey 5, your image weight can be between 0.5 and 2. So I'm going to actually do a couple of different trials with this so that you can see how your image weight will really affect the outcome. And the higher the image weight, the more it will look like the actual image. So um, when we start with 0.5, it should look less like the shoe. So we're going to do it. We're going to do with uh, 0.5 first, and I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And then I'm going to paste it. And this time, instead of 0.5, we'll do 0.8 and we'll do it again. And this time, instead of 0.8, we'll do one. 
And remember, we can go all the way to two. So we'll paste it again and we'll do 1.5. And then we will paste it again. And this time we'll do um, 1.8 and we'll paste it again. And this time we'll do two. All right, so let's go back and see what has been taking place as we were um, typing in our weights. So this one was at 0.8. And as you can see, it still looks like a controller. I think I see a jump man right here, but for the most part, it still looks, looks like a controller. You do see hints of red because we use the red shoe. And for me, that was intentional so that you can see at least um, what effect it is having on the controller. So that was 1.8. Oh no, that was just 0.8. And here's the 0.5. Again, the, the controller got just a little more uh, rounded here, but for the most part, this still looks like a controller. So 0.5 and 0.8 still look like the controller. And then as you come up to 0.5, 5.8 and then one. So at one, now we have a mixture of the controller and the shoe. And for me, I think number two is just perfect. We have a mixture of controller and the shoe and it's not too much of either. Number four is a little too much on the controller side. I'm just not a fan of the shape of one and three. But I am going to re-roll this because I see some potential here. Um, but the shape that came out just wasn't the best. So that was at 1. And then at 1.5, we're no longer seeing the controller. Um, this looks like something extra that was added to the shoe. But we're no longer seeing aspects of the controller at 1.8 again. If we're seeing any aspects of the controller, it is in the color. Same here. And the same thing for two. If we're seeing anything that has to do with the controller, at this point it was coming up in the color. So one seems to be kind of the sweet spot. We could try something like 1.2, but I think I'll try 1.2. So I want a little bit more of the shoe, but I don't want too much of the shoe. And again, of course, I keep clicking Blend. All right, let's do image and we'll paste. And this time we'll do 1.2. And let's see if that'll work. Okay, let me see if it may not let us, but I just first need to see if I put a space. Okay, I had an extra space between my one and the two. So we're going to go ahead and see if this see what this will look like. So here it was still a little too much on the controller side because I just kind of want to see if I raise it up just a tad from the controller by going to 1.2 or maybe even 1.1. I know that 1.5 is too much. So we'll do 1.1 just to see um what we can do this looks pretty got pretty good i love that and this is at 1.2 so at 1.2 we still have buttons that are visible um it's a little dark for me to see so i'm just gonna re-roll it but i'm excited to see what 1.1 looks like because at 1.2 we were at the shoe so this is what we're going for we at least wanted to see the shoe but it was a little bit too much because at this point the buttons are just and this the third image you really don't see any buttons at all and what i'm looking for is the buttons so I'm thinking that 1.1 is going to be pretty good and 1.1 is done and I love number three. Number three is awesome. I also love number one. Looks pretty good. I'm going to re-roll this. I'm not sure where this um, shadow is coming from, but I like the fact that this one is glowing and I still like number four, but this, just the lighting is not the best. So, um, 
once we get the shoe, then we can work on adjusting the lighting. But we do need to at least first be able to see the shoe. And actually, we probably could add lighting to this prompt. But before we do anything with the lighting, I want to make sure that the shoe is right. So I love this one. And on number one on 1 1.2 is pretty good. So is number three. Um, number four is good too. Number two, again, with the shadow, it's just not working, but this is awesome. Nice, very nice, nice. Okay, I'm gonna reroll that again. I like number two here. I love number four. I kind of wish it was at a different angle, but I love number four. Number three is pretty cool. I'm not really a fan of number one, but I'm upscaling it anyway. All right, so here is the upscale. It looks great. Nice. All right, and we now have the next. So just keep in mind that this is a process. While Mid Journey is doing a lot of the footwork, there has not been any situation where we have typed in something and immediately got something that exactly what we want. Yes, I love number one, number three. I like all of them except for number four is kind of... So the magic number that I found is 1.1. So it gives us what we're looking for and um, it doesn't really take away too much. 1.2 was pretty good, but it was almost, um, was almost too little. I wonder if we can do... 1.15 so I'm just gonna see if I can add 1.15 this how much we can fine-tune it is really what I'm trying to see at this point because like I could do with a little more of the shoe but um, I don't want to lose the controller so I just took it up to 1.15. This is, they're all nice. So I'm gonna go back through. And again, I'm going to favorite these images because I want Mid Journey to know that it's done something right. Um, so I need to go through and favorite all of the ones that I like. Just leaving out the ones that I don't like and we'll see less of them. I'm not really gonna, this one I like, but I'm just not going to favorite favorite it and I may have already favorited some of these but I am going to go through and do it again because I'd rather do it twice than not to have done it at all all right and I'll just go ahead and jump back to the present all right, and here's 1.15. So we have a little more of the shoe. Um, I'm gonna re-roll because we still have some pretty bad shadows in some cases that are casted on the shoe. And I'm also gonna do, so what if we just, so 1.5 was too much, 1.2 was too much. So I'm gonna try I'm going to try 1.8 again I'm trying to see how much I can fine-tune this okay so this time on the 1.5 I'm getting imprints again um, so 1.15 might be like the fine-tuned number and if we go past it then we get we've gone too far here I'm only really a fan of one um, this one has imprints and too much going on here and not a fan of this shape here we're at uh 1.18 so almost back to two and we're back to imprints and so this is i'm going to do now i'm going to do one point um, so between uh one 1.15 and 1.8 I'm going to try 
this one's pretty cool. It's just cool. It's not what I'm looking for, but it's just cool for some reason. I'm going to upscale that. I'm not a fan of this shape. And again, this is at 1.18. So we're kind of losing some of the controller. And I mean, I wanted to lose a little bit of it, but um, I'm not a fan of what we're left with here. Um, so I think 1.16 will probably be perfect. This just came out looking pretty nice. These have nothing to do with the controller, I don't think. Um, all right, so 1.16 for me, I, I think that's the sweet spot. I want to go ahead and upscale all of these. Nice. And I'll also re-roll it just to see what else it will produce. But I like the subtle aspects of the controller. It's there, but it's not necessarily taking over the shoe. And I like that. It's just, um, in this case, it's my preference. And so again, um, it's not always going to be just because 1.16 was the perfect number for me, whatever you're looking for, it, you may have had to go in the other direction. Um, you may have had to go more towards the 0.5 direction. It's really just up to you and kind of what you're looking for. And in this case, whatever this large round thing is, I'm not necessarily a fan of. I guess I, I really just wanted the smaller buttons and the more that you can identify what you're looking for or that you can tweak your descriptive text and probably get here that much faster. Again, at the same time, it's there's a little bit of creativity that's involved and it just takes it takes getting to know what you're looking for to be able to get to the prompt that much faster. All right. So here we have gone over pretty much how to create, how to blend images. We blended two totally opposite objects and we came out with a new product that looks amazing. We did that by trying two different methods. The first method was the blend method. And to be honest on the blend met method, the first time, um, the first images that were produced by the blend method came out looking pretty awesome. If I might say myself. <laughs> I was actually um, kind of surprised how quickly they came out um, and how good they looked just um, from using the blend method only. And then after that, we, after the blend mode, which is here, so these came out looking pretty good immediately. And we ran it through a couple of times, it slowly got better. Um, and then after that, we went directly to the image in the prompt and the descriptive text after the image. Again, we immediately got some awesome output. And part of that is due to me remembering to favorite. So I want you to make sure that you remember to favorite and like the images that come out so that your algorithm will become that much more powerful. And again, we did get some images that weren't as great. And after that, we started to, we went into the image waiting process where we learned how to weight our images. So add weight to the images. And we did that by using the image weight flag. And um, that flag is here where we did the IW. So we added the image weight flag to our image prompt and descriptive text. And remember that the higher the prompt, the higher the number after the image weight, the stronger of an impression the actual image has on the product. So here we had a low weight. We can go between 0.5 and 2. So here at 0.8, we had a low weight and it still looked like the controller. The higher that we went, we went up to a one. And so it went from this, which looks like the controller to this, which now looks like the shoe with aspects of the controller. And that's actually what we were looking for. Um, so we knew that we were in the right area at this point, but we're still getting some images that look like this. Um, so we brought it up a little bit. Um, we went up immediately to 1.5, decided that was way too high because now we don't see any um, 
aspects of the controller. And so we started to um, drop it down. And this is another one. We started to drop it down and slowly tweak the, um, the weight. And we found that 1.2 was just imprints. So we went down a little bit more to 1.1 and we had actual buttons. And, and at that point it was clear that we were moving in the right direction. So we just continued to tweak it um, by adding, uh, we went from 1.1, we knew that 1.2 um, was semi okay, but we went, we're trying to get in between 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2, which we finally did when we found 1.16, um, and that was a sweet spot. So I'll go ahead and wrap up the demo for now. We'll go back over into the lecture, and the next thing that we're gonna talk about is Mid Journey and Chat GPT. All right, I'll see you there. We are back in our demo space and we are ready to start using Mid Journey with Chat GPT. So, the first thing that we're going to need to do is you will need to sign up for Chat GPT. So, in order to do that, you'll just go into your browser and type in Chat GPT. And one of the first things that'll be listed is OpenAI's introdu introducing ChatGPT. So go ahead and click and you'll be brought to a screen that looks like this. And when you get to this screen, you'll need to click on try ChatGPT. When you click on try ChatGPT, you'll be brought to, you'll actually need to sign up. So it'll ask you to sign up using your Google account or sign up using your email, whichever you choose. Once you sign up, you will have access to this platform. And when you have access to this platform, ChatGPT is a text generator. So when you enter a prompt, it will respond with text and much like Mid Journey, but Mid Journey actually responds with images. So what we'll do is we'll start by asking ChatGPT for some prompts that we can actually use to generate some very interesting images using MidJourney. Now, the first thing that I want to do is just to familiarize you a little bit with ChatGPT. And if you look up here at the top, You'll notice actually when you sign up, you have the ability to use the free version and it works perfectly fine, especially as you're getting used to and learning about using ChatGPT. But I believe that if you use the free version, you'll only have access to either this default GPT 3.5 or the legacy. At this point, GPT 4 is only for paid users. So this is something to keep in mind at this point. And GPT 3.5, when we're thinking about chat GPT, you should understand that it only has access to data up until 2021. So with that being said, it does not know mid journey. Mid journey was not as popular when it uh, stops collecting data. So the data that it was trained on did not give it access to mid journey and it has no idea what mid journey is. As a matter of fact, if you keep talking to it about mid journey, it will eventually say what is mid journey. So a couple of things that you'll have to do is first, you'll understand that you probably won't be able to just tell it to give you prompts for mid journey. You will, however, be able to ask it to give you a detailed description of something and its response can be used to enhance your mid journey prompts. So you should not think that you can just go into chat GPT and start talking to it about mid journey. And we'll go ahead and look at what will happen. All right, so here I told it to create a list of mid journey prompts, and this is the output that it gave me. So it's basically saying that um, it's giving me prompts that are about the middle of a journey, either on a project or in life. So it's not giving me prompts that have anything to do with the 
mid journey that we are referring to. And with that being said, if you find yourself asking about mid journey and you start to get random responses, it's because again, it does not know what mid journey is. So here is what we can do with the free version that only had access to data up until 2021. According to our lecture, the best way to start a prompt is to think of a general concept. And one thing that we could do is, since we already have access to our some of our very first prompts, we can go ahead and come back to the top and we can kind of compare what we'll get. Um, and we'll just think about it in version five. So we'll use the same prompts, but We'll use the same concept, but we'll ask Midjourney to provide a detailed description of a scene that contains this prompt. And this will let us see the benefit of using ChatGPT to generate our prompts. And the beauty of Midjourney 5 is that it actually lends itself a little more to natural speech than some of the other versions. So in other words, the more detailed your prompt can be in Midjourney 5, the better your image will come out most of the time. So in the past versions, we've needed to, in order to increase the, um, aesthetic aspect of our prompt of our images we had to get very technical with our prompt and here we're just going to need to be more specific so we don't need to worry too much about flags and adding or taking away we don't need to worry too much about how we choose what uh, perimeters that we're using now we will use perimeters, but if we can start with a detailed prompt, then that'll make our image that much better. So in this example, we started out our very first uh, prompt, our very first basic concept was a futuristic cityscape at sunset. So I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna bring it over into ChatGPT and I'm going to say, provide a detailed visual description of a futuristic cityscape at sunset. As the sun begins to set in the distance, the cityscape comes alive with a brilliant display of futuristic technology and architecture. The towering skyscrapers, adorned with glowing neon lights, reach high into the sky and cast long shadows across the streets below. The buildings are sleek and modern, with sharp edges and intricate designs, creating a striking contrast against the deep blue and orange hues of the sky. As you look out over the city, you can see a network of elevated highways and monorails crisscrossing above the bustling streets. The vehicles on these roads are sleek and aerodynamic, whizzing past in a blur of speed and precision. The sound of their engines is drowned out by the hum of energy that permeates the entire city. At street level, the sidewalks are lined with towering holographic billboards that advertise the latest products and services. The buildings themselves are covered in a complex network of sensors and cameras that monitor every aspect of the city's operations, from traffic patterns to air quality. Despite the advanced technology, there is still a sense of life and vibrancy in the city. The streets are filled with people going about their daily business, whether it's shopping shopping in one of the many high-end stores or dining in a trendy restaurant. The air is filled with the sound of laughter and chatter, as people socialize and enjoy the beauty of the city around them. As the sun dips below the horizon, the cityscape takes on a new level of beauty. The neon lights glow brighter, illuminating the buildings in a dazzling array of colors. The sky turns from orange to deep purple, with streaks of pink and red highlighting the clouds. It's a breathtaking sight that makes you feel as though you are standing on the threshold of a new age, a world where anything is possible. All right, so it has given us an amazingly detailed description of our four-word prompt. So originally we had a four-word prompt. We asked ChatGPT to provide a detailed description of this prompt. And now at this point, we could do a couple of things. We could actually go through and we could take the whole thing and paste it. Although mid journey does have a, a character limit, we would probably want to use just paragraph by paragraph and see what it looks like. But we could also ask chat GPT to summarize this description. So we'll see what happens with both. 
We'll start by asking ChatGPT to summarize this description. Summarize this description. This is a detailed description of a futuristic cityscape at sunset. The city is characterized by towering skyscrapers with sharp edges and intricate designs, elevated highways and monorails, and holographic billboards lining the sidewalks. The streets are bustling with people going about their daily business, and the air is filled with the sound of laughter and chatter. As the sun sets, the neon lights of the cityscape glow brightly, illuminating the buildings in a dazzling array of colors, while the sky turns from orange to deep purple. The scene is one of beauty and vibrancy, symbolizing the possibilities of a world where advanced technology and urban life coexist. All right, so let's go ahead and grab this. And this is going to be good for a starter prompt. So of course, we're still going to start with the forward slash and then the image prompt. And then we'll just go ahead and paste this in to see what it's going to provide us with. And we'll also go through and grab this first paragraph of the very detailed description and we will paste it in and again, to see what the more detailed description is going to provide us with. And already I'm starting to see some very promising results. I love to see how this is going to turn out. It's looking amazing. We can see details not only in the image that, uh, as a whole, but the buildings have details in them even. Let's go ahead and upscale these images. And it looks like our second prompt is complete. And this is the prompt from the first part of the, the prompt that's currently highlighted. So the first paragraph of the long detailed description. And they are pretty different as I'm looking at uh, the style is different. And this last scene appears to be more of a, a further, the view is a lot further away than these other scenes. The other scenes really seem to be immersive and they kind of place you right into the city. And that's one of the things that you get from a very detailed description. The more detailed your description is, the more immersive the image becomes. And I really love uh, just the way that the uh, sun shines on this building here. It looks great. So the next thing that we will do is we are going to come back and let's see what happens if we just take this next paragraph and add this prompt. I'm going to go ahead and add each of these paragraphs one at a time. All right, so now that we've gotten a chance to add the paragraphs, the next thing that I want to do is I want to now experiment with some of the more detailed aspects that can be added to our uh, prompt for ChatGPT that will actually enhance the output of our images. So um, right now we have some very realistic images and a part of the reason for that and the reason for the style of our other images is because we have not yet specified what style our images should be in. So Mid Journey just pretty much takes its freedom, which we've given it to output whatever it feels best represents the image that you have requested. Now, the one thing that I will say is that again, with Mid Journey, the default style is photography. So if you do not specify an artistic style, then you will be left with a photograph. So here, we again we did not specify an artistic style but it started to get more artistic 
And part of the reason is because as MidJourney receives information that it cannot find in its database, it kind of has to reconstruct. It, do, it, it has to reconstruct all of it, but it has to do more of a reconstruction. And sometimes the images that it gets, they may have this style. So remember the images are composed of information that was collected, data that has been collected from other images. And so it then breaks them down and then rebuilds your image. So this style that it comes out in, if we don't specify it, and it has a lot of images that fit the description that are of photography, then you're more likely to get its default. So now we're going to think about how we can add a requested style to our prompt. And the first thing that I want to do is actually look at the styles that are available in mid journey. So in order for us to see the styles, we're going to go to this GitHub account for mid journey, and I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. All right. So here, this mid journey GitHub account gives you a list of styles for mid journey. And these styles are all the way, um, will take you up through mid journey four. Um, and it looks like they were updated last week. So I think, however, we're going to be focusing on this folder, which says just the style. And here it gives us a whole list of materials, objects, um, an entire list of things that we can add into our prompts to enhance. So a couple of things that we could do is we'll just start with artists. And here, this is just telling us the version and it looks like five is not selected. So this is for version four, but a lot of it will still apply. So looking at, if we click onto realism and we look through these artists, these are all artists are all realist artists. And as we look through their work, if we find an artist that stands out or that we would like to have our image kind of fashioned in their style, then we can select that artist and add that to our prompt. So I'm going to choose this artist. I'm going to copy the artist and then I'm going to go back over to ChatGPT and I'm going to go ahead and paste the artist's name here in the prompt, but I'm also going to say, I'm going to copy the prompt that we added the last time. And I'm going to place that before the artist's name. So now I'm saying provide a detailed visual description of a futuristic landscape at sunset. And then we're going to say painted by and then we have the artist's name. So let's now see what we're going to get back. I apologize, but I cannot provide a visual description of a painting by Alexei Stavrasov as he was a Russian landscape painter who lived from 1830 to 1897, and his work did not depict futuristic cityscapes as they were not present during his lifetime. However, I can create a detailed visual description of a futuristic cityscape at sunset in the style of Alexei Stavrasov. In the style of Savrasov, the cityscape is depicted in a painterly manner, with a focus on the play of light and shadow. The sky is dominated by deep oranges and purples, and the sun casts long shadows across the streets and buildings. The buildings themselves are towering and elegant, with ornate spires and arches that reach towards the sky. The streets are filled with people going about their daily business, and the air is filled with the sound of chatter and laughter. Savrazov's style is characterized by his ability to capture the beauty of nature and the changing seasons, and in this painting, the futuristic cityscape is juxtaposed against a natural landscape. In the foreground, a verdant park is visible, with trees and flowers in full bloom. The contrast between the futuristic city and the natural landscape creates a sense of harmony and balance, as though the two worlds have found a way to coexist. The painting is also characterized by Savrazov's use of light and color to create a sense of mood and atmosphere. The orange and purple hues of the sky create a sense of warmth and comfort, while the shadows cast by the buildings add a sense of mystery and intrigue. 
Overall, this painting of a futuristic cityscape at sunset in the style of Alexei Savrasov is a beautiful and harmonious depiction of the possibilities of a world where advanced technology and nature coexist in perfect balance. I'll see you in the next class. One correction that we would have needed to make to our prompt would be instead of saying painted by, should have said painted in the style of, and then the artist's name. Because again, you will notice that a lot of the times working with ChatGPT, sometimes you will get a response that looks like it initially was not going to generate a response to your request, but it will still tell you what it can do. So just to prevent having to skip over this first paragraph if we go ahead and say painted in the style of then we'll get a clearer response from chat gpt however now we're going to copy everything from the prompt that was provided and it's kind of considered best practice to describe the image after you describe the image, then say painted in the style of and the artist's name. But here we'll go ahead and copy this and we're gonna go ahead and paste it straight into the mid journey image prompt and we'll see what comes of this prompt. So the only thing that we've done in ChatGPT is we, and the first time, our first prompt said provide a detailed description of our original concept that we used in mid journey and then the next prompt said provide a detailed description of our original mid journey prompt and now we're saying paint it in the style of this specific artist and you could have chosen any of the artists and even if there are, I'm sure there are artists that aren't listed. So again, if you have um, a favorite artist or if you have an artist that you think would portray this specific scene best, there's nothing wrong with using that artist's name. Now here is our so-called futuristic scene and it just doesn't appear to be very futuristic. So when we compare it to these images, we're not at all getting a futuristic scene. But this is what the image would look like if it were painted by this specific artist, or at least um, according to ChatGPT. So let's go back and look at some of this artist's work. And here, if we compare them, it's clear why the images came out the way that they did because this specific artist, um, this is the style of the artist. So I think ChatGPT did a great job at explaining it and it did such a good job at explaining it that Mid Journey has produced a an image that looks like it could have very well been painted by this artist and while it doesn't look as futuristic as some of the works of art that we have been looking at um, nonetheless it does look like a work of art by this specific artist we can go back over to our styles and our artists and let's try adding this artist Looks like this artist may produce some pretty interesting results. So just to compare and see the differences between the art that was produced and where we are now. All right, so let's come back. And this time we're going to ask for a, another detailed description of the same original prompt, but we're going to say paint it in the style of I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it here. All right, and let's see what we get back. Sajislav Bixinski was a Polish painter known for his dark and surreal works, often depicting dystopian and post-apocalyptic worlds. In the style of Bixinski, the futuristic cityscape at sunset would be characterized by a haunting and otherworldly atmosphere. The sky is a deep and eerie shade of red, 
with the setting sun casting an ominous glow over the city. The buildings themselves are twisted and distorted, with sharp angles and jagged edges that seem to defy the laws of physics. The streets are empty and desolate, with no signs of life or activity. In the foreground, a twisted and gnarled tree is visible, its branches reaching up towards the sky like twisted fingers. The tree is the only sign of life in the entire cityscape, and its presence only adds to the sense of despair and isolation. The painting is characterized by Baczynski's use of texture and color to create a sense of decay and decay. The buildings are covered in rust and corrosion, while the sky is filled with a thick layer of smog and pollution. The overall effect is one of decay and decay, a world where advanced technology has only served to hasten the downfall of society. Despite the bleakness of the scene, there is also a sense of beauty and awe in the painting. The twisted and distorted shapes of the buildings create a sense of surreal beauty, while the eerie red glow of the sky is both terrifying and captivating. Overall, the futuristic cityscape at sunset painted in the style of Zdzislaw Baczynski is a haunting and surreal depiction of a world on the brink of collapse. It is a powerful reminder of the dangers of unchecked technological progress and the importance of preserving the natural world. All right, so let's go ahead and grab this detailed description it's not too long so let's go ahead and grab that description and paste it into mid journey and we will see what comes out and while we wait let's go ahead and compare some of these images just from our detailed image that we got this one is looking amazing let me go ahead and pull it over so that we can see it full screen so i love this one and this one is awesome the only difference is is that these images don't seem as futuristic they just look like high definition renderings of the average city or of a city in our time put it that way um, however, they are still very beautiful. All right, let's go down to check out the image that was presented by our new artist. And again, ChatGPT gave us a description of something that was going to come out looking decayed. So very apocalyptic. And that is exactly what we got. And oh my goodness. Oh my goodness remembering that when we started we gave it the same prompt all we changed here was the artist so when we think about different aspects and how we can get such a dramatically different again the all we changed in this prompt for chat gpt was the artist now let's go ahead and copy this same prompt and Let's paste it directly into mid journey and I'll do the same thing with our, our last artist. So the only thing I'm doing is skipping over the detailed prompt and pasting it directly into mid journey just to see what comparison will look like. Because obviously here we got totally different outcomes with these last four images. And when we compare them to these images compared to these images, and then we could take that a step further and compare them to our original images that we got in the very beginning. And so they're all based on the same concept, but again, just to illustrate the power of chat gpt this is kind of what we will get after we put ask for a detailed description so here we've been given the last four images came from us just adding in the power of the artist's name again and they are very similar to the last three images that we got. The one thing that I would say is kind of different is just the overall color. Um, this is, while it does still appear desolate, if you will, there does seem to have a little life left in these images as opposed to these, just the color still looks a little more apocalyptic again. So here, let's compare these images to the images that we got initially from the artist. And again, they're looking a lot alike. 
So yes, they both Chat GPT and Mid Journey um, did an amazing job with interpreting these artists, and neither one of them produced what we originally got from Mid Journey when we first put in our concept. Kind of liking how it looks like these rows are built on top of this lava. So it kind of basically in our first prompt. If we were to try to come way up here where we were talking about these flying cars as though humanity elevated and were able to leave this ground plane. And now again, in this artist's rendering, it's almost like the ground plane has become the elevation. So we recognize that something got worse. And so it, it almost feels like you're lucky to be on this plane as opposed to in our original images, cars were actually flying in the sky. It's very interesting how these, the same prompt or concept generated such different results based upon the artist. So let's go back and now, so those were the realist artists and feel free to go through and look through all of the different types of artists, a dramatic comparison. Let's look at some pop art. We'll go ahead and do Andy Warhol. So we'll take Andy Warhol and we'll say in the style of, and I'll copy our original prompt. Andy Warhol was an American artist known for his pop art style, which often incorporated bright colors, bold lines, and repeated images. In the style of Warhol, a futuristic cityscape at sunset would be characterized by a bold and graphic aesthetic. The sky is a vivid and saturated shade of pink, with the setting sun casting a warm and inviting glow over the city. The buildings themselves are tall and sleek, with clean lines and geometric shapes that create a sense of order and harmony. The streets are busy and bustling, with a constant flow of people and vehicles moving through the city. In the foreground, a colorful billboard is visible, advertising the latest product or service. The billboard is covered in bright and bold graphics, with repeated images and patterns that create a sense of energy and movement. The building behind the billboard is covered in a repeating pattern, adding to the sense of repetition and mass production that is characteristic of Warhol's style. The painting is characterized by Warhol's use of color and repetition to create a sense of vibrancy and excitement. The bright and bold colors of the sky and buildings create a sense of energy and vitality, while the repeated images and patterns add to the sense of movement and activity. Despite the chaotic and frenzied nature of the cityscape, there is also a sense of harmony and balance in the painting. The clean lines and geometric shapes of the buildings create a sense of order and structure, while the repeated patterns and images add a sense of continuity and repetition. Overall, the futuristic cityscape at sunset painted in the style of Andy Warhol is a vibrant and energetic depiction of a world driven by technology technology and consumerism. It is a celebration of the beauty and excitement of the modern world, and a reminder of the power of art to capture the spirit of an era. Let's go ahead and take this prompt and use it as a prompt. And we will see how this turns out. And while we wait, let's go ahead and jump back over to, I think we'll do one more and let's do a graffiti artist. All right, so let's go ahead and go with, let's go with the first, this artist. So we're gonna go with this artist on our next uh, prompt. And it sounds like this one is done. So let's go ahead and pull it up. Okay, so this is what it put out. And when I think about pop art, I'm still, especially Andy Warhol, I'm still, this is not the first thing that would have come to mind. But I think one thing that we can do is we can just take our prompt and put it in to mid journey. And let's just see how, because sometimes it get it just seems like it may have been too descriptive. And I just want to see what would have come out if we just put it directly into mid journey. So while we wait, um, we will add our original prompt to this uh, graffiti artist and see what the outcome is.
Thierry Guetta, also known as Mr. Brainwash, is a French street artist known for his eclectic and colorful style. In the style of Guetta, a futuristic cityscape at sunset would be characterized by a bright and bold aesthetic, filled with vibrant colors and playful imagery. The sky is a riot of colors, with shades of pink, purple, and orange blending together in a beautiful and vibrant display. The buildings themselves are a mishmash of shapes and styles, with no two buildings looking exactly alike. Some buildings are covered in colorful graffiti and street art while others are adorned with large-scale murals and installations. The streets are alive with activity, with people and vehicles moving through the city in a constant flow. The air is filled with the sound of music and laughter, as street performers and vendors entertain the crowds. In the foreground, a large mural is visible, depicting a futuristic world filled with robots, spaceships, and otherworldly creatures. The mural is a mix of styles, with pop art elements mixed with street art techniques. The overall effect is one of chaos and energy, a world where anything is possible. The painting is characterized by Geta's use of bold and bright colors, combined with a playful and irreverent style. The colors of the sky and buildings are exaggerated and amplified, creating a sense of joy and celebration. The mix of styles and techniques creates a sense of artistic freedom and experimentation, reflecting Geta's street art roots. Despite the chaotic and frenzied nature of the cityscape, there is also a sense of harmony and unity in the painting. The diversity of styles and cultures is celebrated and embraced, creating a sense of community and inclusivity. Overall, the futuristic cityscape at sunset painted in the style of Thierry Guetta is a vibrant and playful depiction of a world where art and technology intersect. It is a celebration of creativity and diversity, and a reminder of the power of art to inspire and uplift. Awesome. This sounds like it's going to turn out to be pretty cool, um, and I'm excited to see will come of it. Now, as we go back and we look at the images that were generated off of our prompt that went directly into Mid Journey, this is definitely something more along the lines of what I would have expected from Andy Warhol, especially if you're not familiar with Andy Warhol's work. I'll just go back to this pop art. It's a lot more flat than what is being depicted here, uh, or not here, but here. So I would have probably not guessed that this was possibly this one, the second one, and I'll upscale the second one, but the rest of them definitely do not look like they would have come from Andy Warhol at all. However, if just looking at these side by side, as you can see, this, these four images are a lot closer to Andy Warhol style than, than these. So just keeping in mind that, that the downfall to this output was more so too much of a description and this is what we got. So let's go ahead and jump back down to what was recently, this is just a larger version of that Andy Warhol um, image. The colors really stand out the most when we think about the possibilities, but that's just about it. So now I wanna take a look at the graffiti art that came from here. And I gotta say, it's not feeling like what I thought it would look like. Maybe because it's graffiti art, but I didn't expect for it to come out looking like this. And then more so, it's not even illustrated in a way that we can see it. So again, I'm wondering if we just went too far with the description and I'm just going to, just as a comparison, I'm going to paste it directly into Mid Journey and we'll see. This one looks pretty cool, but unfortunately, and it may just be because of the presentation, but um, we're still not really able to see those details that chat gpt provided us with we don't see any flying cars and it's not really i can see it and here this is more along the lines of what i would have expected at least now the cars are in the sky and again i do understand that this is a graffiti artist but we, we want to be able to see the city i can see some objects in the sky. I thought these were going to be cars, but they turned into uh, clouds. So let's see if this looks anything like this particular artist. I just don't see it, but maybe because they're graffiti artists and we may have needed to see this painted on a wall. So we could have added 
to the end of the prompt we could have added painted on a large wall and then we may have possibly gotten something a little bit more along the lines um, and even these that are painted on the wall I'm just still not seeing the artist in them here I mean I do like the clouds they're they're nice but I don't see futuristic aspect and maybe it's just the angle but all right so that is one thing that we can add and again we've gone through four artists I think at this point and I tried to choose some extremely different styles so that we can see how powerful the artist's name and the style of the actual artist is when it comes to adding that to the prompt. So keep that in mind. I'll see you in the next class. And now we will go back and this time, instead of looking at the artist, Let's look at the camera. So another thing that we can add to our prompt is cameras. So we can think about cameras and scenes. Here we've got photography. So if we add words like scene, photography, closed composition, these are the images that will come out. So if we add film, we'll get or cinematic I think I would like to see how the word cinematic will affect what we are output we can add dramatic we can add the word dramatic um, glamour shot we can add golden hour blue hour just by adding these one word or these terms or phrases oh wow I think we're gonna have to add night photography and so when you look at images that are created by prominent people in the mid-journey community, meaning images that are eye-catching and they look amazing, it's because those people have mastered the art of prompt engineering. And when we think about prompt engineering, these are the aspects that really create the prompt. So be it the artist's name or the artist's name and these specific keywords that we can add or even the combination of all of it. This is what really changes the outcome of our image. So let's go ahead and grab this word night, nightography. All right, we're going to take it and we are going to, again, use our original prompt and let's just say provide a detailed visual description of a futuristic city landscape probably have to say nitography futuristic city landscape or in the style of nitography based on the actual word feels like night photography and i'm wondering if we need to leave sunset out so let's just go ahead and I think what I'm going to say is provide a nightography, provide a detailed visual description of a futuristic cityscape with a nightography style. All right, that'll work. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and generate that. And then I'm also going to take our original concept and I'm going to go ahead and paste in. Sure, I'd be happy to provide a detailed visual description of a futuristic cityscape with a nightography style. Here it is. As you step out onto the streets of this futuristic city, you are immediately struck by the overwhelming sense of scale and complexity. Towering skyscrapers loom overhead, their angular and sleek facades reflecting the neon glow of the countless advertisements and holographic displays that illuminate the cityscape. The streets themselves are a labyrinthine maze of bustling crowds and flashing lights, with autonomous vehicles and drones zipping overhead and through the maze of towering buildings. The air is thick with the hum of technology and the steady whirring of countless machines. Despite the frenetic activity all around you, there is a sense of order to the chaos of the city. Every building and street seems to have been precisely engineered to fit together like the pieces of a massive, interconnected puzzle. At night, the cityscape takes on an even more surreal and captivating quality. The neon lights and holographic projections that adorn every surface of the city flicker and pulse in a hypnotic dance of color and light, 
casting strange and otherworldly shadows across the streets and buildings. The towering skyscrapers seemed to stretch up towards the heavens, their sharp angles and jagged edges casting long shadows across the streets and casting the city into a perpetual twilight. The bright lights of the city contrast with the dark, inky sky overhead, where countless stars twinkle in the distance. Despite the seeming coldness and sterility of the city, there is a strange beauty to its chaotic energy and relentless drive towards progress. The nitography style captures the essence of this futuristic cityscape, creating a surreal and dreamlike atmosphere that is both captivating and haunting. All right, so this visual description sounds amazing. And if nothing else, we could use this visual description um, with the image that is created. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is... Well, it may not be too long, so let's go ahead and see what happens if we add the whole thing in. And we can always tell it to summarize because, again, too much of the description kind of gets, as we saw with Andy, the Andy Warhol output, too long of a description puts out, generates images that are not necessarily what we're looking for. So... I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to summarize this description. The description depicts a futuristic cityscape with towering skyscrapers, bustling crowds, and autonomous vehicles. At night, the city takes on a surreal quality with neon lights and holographic projections casting strange and otherworldly shadows. The nitography style captures the surreal and dreamlike atmosphere of the cityscape, which despite its cold and sterile appearance, has a strange beauty in its chaotic energy and relentless drive towards progress. All right, so these images came out looking amazing. So I'm already loving this nitography style. However, um, let's go ahead and compare what was generated with the um, longer version to what is generated with this shorter version. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in. And while we wait, we can go ahead and also upscale these images or check out these upscaled images. They're looking absolutely amazing. I love them. And yes, um, do they illustrate our concept of just a well, this time we had to narrow it down to a futuristic cityscape with towering skyscrapers. And we left off uh, the word sunset just based upon the idea that it looks like night photography. However, that's not to say that we wouldn't have gotten an amazing output with the leaving the sun sunset on. So what was provided looks so awesome. And even here with the shortened prompt, the summarized prompt, we still were provided with some amazing outputs. And the beauty of what we're doing in this course is that everything that we've been provided has come from this same prompt. So the same prompt, futuristic cityscape. And well, we did remove the word sunset, but I'm wondering what would happen if we left it in. But we really haven't changed it too much. So all of these style comparisons have come from the same prompt and these images are amazing. So comparing these images to the last images that we got. And so here what we did was we just replaced the artist's name with the phrase nightography. And so we got a very different outcome. And again, that is how powerful these phrases and words are. And that's why it's a part of the prompt generating process. So having the ability to add one specific word to your prompt can change it so dramatically. So let's see what else we can do um, with these tools. All right, so use establishing shot, glamour shot, cinematic. So what I would like to see is an addition of cinematic to our shortened 
description. So our short description already has the idea of the nitography. Now let's take this short description and let's add the word cinematic to it. And I'm just going to put it on the end here and we'll see how that changes our outcome. And then we'll take dramatic and we will add it to the end of this prompt that ChatGPT gave us. So we'll have a dramatic cinematic night nightography prompt. All right. And I saw another one that I would like to add in as well. Okay. So I, I think it was cinematic haze, but okay. So let's see how this changed. So this here, we just added in cinematic. I'm going to go ahead and upscale all of these images and keep in mind that the style is still nightography. So they're still going to come out with this night style, but when we add it in cinematic, I do see a little bit of a difference as opposed to anything. I see that we have a more consistent perspective. That's the, that's the main thing that I'm seeing when it comes to the difference of what we had before and then what we had after we added cinematic, only seeing a really more consistent perspective. And now we've added dramatic and I am seeing some stronger contrast. I'm seeing some stronger contrast and I'm seeing flying cars now. So pretty cool. I think it's more the biggest addition that the word dramatic added was the stronger contrast and probably color saturation as well. All right. Awesome. And as we come back, just trying to see what we could add, if anything, let's see what happens when we put underwater photography. So again, all I'm doing is adding to our shortened prompt that was provided to us by uh, chat GPT. So I'm taking the exact wording and thus far we've added cinematic, dramatic, and now underwater photography. And we can continue to go through editorial photography, associated press photo, photojournalism. We can even adjust and select a specific type of camera that is used to take a picture. So this is kind of where if you have additional background in specific areas, so a photographer could produce some really amazing images because they would already know like what camera to shoot to get specific angles. So let's go ahead and check out some of the underwater photography. I'm not seeing, I do see a, a little more of a haze and this actually does look like it's underwater as well. More, more so because of the angle. But again, we have that nightography style is so strong at this point that it's going to be hard to really for any other style to overpower it. All right. And I definitely suggest that you take some time to look through, not only familiarize yourself with this work, but with the different attributes that you could change, but also that you go through and test them out. And again, that is kind of what this point is, just so you can see how powerful they are. And so I think I'm going to go ahead and exit this section. This is the camera and film section. The next section that we'll look at is, so we did artist, camera. We can look at colors and color palettes. Let's look at combinations first. All right, so we do have some styles that we can add. So it has Octane Render 4K Hyper Realistic. So I'm not sure which of these is which, but I'm just going to go ahead and add the whole line to our prompt just to see what happens. I do think I'll take off the underwater photography. I, I don't want to add so much that things start to clash, but I do want to see how far we can push things. All right. So we do have that and I like this dreamlike realistic style 
colorful sci-fi wi-fi otherworldly i really think this will pr um, produce something worth trying here we have another photorealistic again octane render 8k again our images are coming out pretty cool i'm gonna go ahead and copy this and add it to our new prompt and let's go ahead and also upscale these images all right so let's see we got some very detailed images again high contrast high color saturation we've got a nice uh, flashy car that has been added into our scene here we have some strong reflections um, and i'm seeing more detail now added in the signs as well so one thing that we can look at also is the mid journey documentation and at this point we're at i believe the base quality so i would like to see what some of these images will look like if we up the quality of the image and here this is after we added the ultra realistic photorealistic octane render 8k it also has intricate detail added to it as well let's go ahead and upscale all of it and see what comes out all right so here this is starting to look like we may have pushed the envelope a bit far i'm not i don't know if too far but I'm sure that this has something to do with the nitography theme. So just the way that it was produced, it almost looks like it's drawn out. And if you notice, everything that we're requesting is realistic. So um, this is not what I would have expected after putting ultra realistic, but somewhere along the lines, we have pushed something too far or um, added some contrasting styles. But here, we still remain pretty photorealistic. Again, same thing here. This even looks a lot more realistic than here, only because of this haze or this glow that's here in the background. But um, we still have high reflections on the streets. And I do believe that is from the Octane render. And this one is starting to look like we pushed it too far again. So as we go through and we are crafting these prompts, if we see that we're pushing something too far, of course, it's always okay to dial it back. And this is just what I'm doing right now is giving you an example of what you should do if you want to become more fluent with mid journey because while mid journey is moving into the direction of a natural language of accepting these the natural language it is not exactly there yet and i believe that that was illustrated with the andy warhol image so if we get too descriptive mid journey can be pushed too far and so at that point we then dial back and then kind of start to shorten up our prompts and leave more of the creativity to meet mid journey. And then instead of trying to craft the image with our words, then we're able to craft the style with the prompt. And so the ability to craft the style with the prompt is done by understanding and going through and testing all of these things that mid journey has provided us with i would say if we did this and we said a let's do gold watch and then add in this combination and we'll see what comes out and this is the first time that we have changed our prompt but the reason that i'm changing it is because i want to illustrate the intention of this combination section. So by using these combinations of styles, we're able to get this type of image. And so here I just put gold watch and then I added the combo that was suggested. And here is what it is putting out. And it's at 93%, probably almost 100. And it's a very detailed um, gold watch and it looks like a real 
watch. This is just adding one thing and then seeing how strong this combination actually is. And it looks pretty cool. As we go through, one thing that I also saw was the products section. So we'll continue to use and, and um, familiarize ourselves with these styles because again, for the most part, being able to generate the detailed description is about half of the work and it could become less if you have too much of a detailed description. It could actually cause you to have to do more. So the other portion of the work comes from knowing what terms and phrases to add at the end of your prompt. So we'll continue to practice that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stop here for now and let's go back to the lecture. The next thing that we're going to talk about is how we can use this understanding of prompt engineering to complete a task or create a product. And so we're going to start with a very simple product to create, and this is going to be a coloring book. Now you can choose to create an adult's coloring book or a children's coloring book. It's really up to you, but whatever type of coloring book that you choose to create, we're gonna use the same outline or template when it comes to the prompt and the way that we engineer this prompt. So again, we're going to need to start with a clear concept. And so being that our goal or objective here is to create a coloring book, we already have this concept. So we're going to need to decide at this point if it's gonna be a children's book or an adult's coloring book. But in the prompt, we're going to use the words children's coloring book. And then we did also talk about styles and how we can choose styles. So we are going to use a cartoon style for our styling. We'll use thick lines for the lines. And because it's going to be a coloring book, we need to make sure that we include words like low detail and no shading. So we're going to start by engineering our prompt and then we're going to use ChatGPT to assist with the ideas for creating this coloring book. So let's go ahead and start with the prompt that we want to use. So the template that we're gonna need to add to the end of all of our ideas. So we're gonna start by saying that we need a clean black and white drawing or line drawing for a children's coloring book. So, and the fact that we're gonna wanna start by generating the pages of this coloring book, we're going to actually word it like this. So we're gonna just jump right in and create the coloring book first, and then we'll add the cover. And if you want to add anything additional to the coloring book from that point, then you can. So we're gonna start by saying that we need a clean black and white line drawing children's coloring book image. And then I'm putting of here and we can go ahead and start by adding a comma because this is where we're actually going to put the description that ChatGPT gives us. However, at the end of our prompt, we're actually also going to again repeat the words page for children. We want to make sure that we again determine the style. So in this case, I'm choosing a child's coloring book and I'm going to use geometric style. I want to have some symmetry in it because I know that I want it to be fairly simplistic. I'm also going to be referring to or requesting that all of the characters or all of the, the main characters in the image are looking at the camera. Again, because of the fact that in this case, it is a children's coloring book. Again, this is, if you choose to create an adult coloring book, then you would probably want to eliminate some of the symmetrical uh, request or the geometrical style. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that I want it to be on a, a white background with clear lines. So again, I wanna make sure that the overall output 
is something that is consistent with the style of a coloring book. So I'm just going to push space a few times here on this chat GPT side and I'm going to paste what I have so far, which is a page for children, the geometrical style and the symmetry. And then again, we want to reiterate the idea of having clean lines. We only want black and white for this children's coloring book. And again, it's going to be in a cartoon style with thick lines, low detail and no shading. So I'm going to add all of that to the end of my prompt. And remember at this point we are creating a template. So this is something that at this point we haven't added the actual description of the image. This is just what we're going to use for all of our images. So the next thing that we need to talk about is the aspect ratio and some of the flags that we're going to add at the end of our prompt. And before we do that, I'm going to actually direct your attention to the mid journey documentation. And if you just type in mid journey documentation and then go down to users guide, you'll be brought to this getting started section and actually the user's guide section. And we are in the perimeters and we're looking at the aspect ratio. So, the reason that we need to add an additional flag to the end of our prompt is because we're going to basically treat this project as though we were going to go from start to finish. And at the end, we want to have a final result that is printable and that can be probably sold and used as an actual coloring book. So we're going from the idea of digital into a physical printed. First, we need to make sure that our aspect ratio is ideal for an actual page, a printed page. So a average size of a book. And the first thing that we're going to look at in this documentation is the fact that the default ratio for mid journey is one to one. And that's what's giving us this square shape. And all of our images at this point have come out in a perfect square, but it doesn't have to be that way. As a matter of fact, in this documentation, it's going to give us some suggested values for our aspect ratio. And it even allows us to look at the different sizes and the basically the different ratios for our options but this is the default the one-to-one -one. and we're looking for something that's closer to the actual size of a page and so we're going to be using two to three and we're going to continue to use this documentation throughout the course but this is just really your introduction to mid journeys documentation and also when you're looking at this documentation, it also gives you uh, pretty much the versions. And so when it says max aspect ratio down here, it'll give you the version of mid journey. And you'll notice that in version five, which is the most recent version, you can actually have any aspect ratio. So before they were in a range, so you could not go outside of these aspect ratios that were provided. And now you can do anything. So if you wanted to create a banner for social media, if you wanted to create a profile image, if you wanted to create a screensaver if you were doing anything like mock-ups for perhaps uh, web design and you wanted to make sure that your mock-ups were presented in a size that was responsive again you can choose all of these aspects ratios so keep this in mind and now we're going to go back over to our prompt in chat gpt and we're ready to add our first flag for this template and so remember to add a flag you're going to start by using the dash dash and then name the flag and so for aspect ratio it is ar so remember that for image weight it was iw so 
just I want to bring the pattern to your attention at this point. So after AR for aspect ratio, you need to add a space. It's very important that you pay attention to the spacing in this case. So if you add the aspect ratio right after the R with no space, you will get an error. So you need to add a space next, and then we're going to add two by three, and that's done with the two, the colon, and then three. So that is the end of this flag. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the options for the quality. So let's go back over to the mid journey documentation. And the next thing we're going to look at the next perimeter the quality. And so here, what you'll notice is that the default quality is at a one. So higher values um, use more of your subscriptions, GPU minutes. Again, that's basically like saying it's going to be more expensive for you and you're only allowed so many. It gives us a little more information on quality here. So please make sure that you, um, read through this before just entering anything because I hate for you to add a higher quality to images that didn't need it and then run out of your GPU minutes. As we scroll down, it gives us basically some examples of this quality. So this quality is set at 0.25 and then as you scroll down, it's going to give us the 0.5 version and you start to notice that we have a little more detail, especially here in the background. So the foreground looks pretty much the same, but with the going from 0.25 to 0.5, we're able to see more detail as we look further into the background of the image. And then if we take this up to a full one, which again is the default or base quality so over here in mid journey, I'm just going to pull up our settings. And here, what we're referring to right now is the quality section of the settings and the base quality is a one. So if you're going to use the base quality, you don't need to add this next flag. But the fact that we are going to be adding this as a an actual coloring book, we're going to need to make sure that we have as much detail with the lines as possible because in our actual prompt, we're saying low detail. So it may seem a little contradictory, but we do want to be able to have as much content um, detail as possible. So as we look into the background of the 0.5, while we have more content added in the background, if you look at quality set at one, you'll notice that we can see even more content and more details in this background image. And here, what we're looking for is the more content. And that's why we're going to increase our um, detail. And as we scroll down, it's given us examples of what will happen in version four. And now we're looking at version five, which is what we're in. And so here, this is the quality of a 0.25 and this is what it would look like and then if we were to bring that up to a 0.5 you can tell the difference between these two images and this is also the half quality so when it here when it refers to half quality this is what it's referring to so now looking at the base quality as you can see we have even more detail in the bottom image and if we scroll down down more, we can see the actual chart and it's telling us that for these versions, these are the different qualities that are available. So the only way that you can actually go up in quality is going to be with the quality two, and that is in version three, two, and one. So we'll take a look and see if this is even necessary because at this point we're already at the highest quality or the base quality so what we'll need to do is after we save our image we'll have to take it to an upscaler just to make sure that we have the best 
and the highest size or resolution of our actual image. So this is just a little information on the quality settings. And again, just keep in mind that this is two times the cost if you choose to use the high quality, but you can always turn it on to try it out, especially if it's something that is an actual product that requires it. So the next thing that we're going to look at is the, that we're going to add to our prompt is the Q for quality. So again, we need to make sure we add a space and we're still going to do dash dash. We'll add the Q for quality space and then two. That's going to put it up to the highest uh, quality. So after that, we do want to specify the version and we'll do dash dash V space and then five. And the next thing that we're going to look at is the style. So we're going to go back over to the mid journey documentation and now we're at stylize. So here, when we're talking about the stylization, the mid journey, as it says here, the mid journey bot has been trained to produce images that favor artistic color composition and form. So this style property or this style parameter influences how strongly this training is applied. Again, low stylization values produce images that are close that closely match the prompt but are less artistic so if it's on the lower side it'll be closer to your prompt but it takes less artistic privileges and then with the high stylization values and it's going to be a more creative or a more toward the artistic side so let's take a look at First, what is offered in the versions? So here we have stylized ranges and version five, the range is from zero to a thousand. The default here is at 100. So without adjusting this at all, our style will be just set to 100. And that is what we're looking at right here. So if we set it to low, then it's going to be lower than 100. All right but the range is from zero to a thousand. So let's come down and look at some of these examples that is provided us with. Now we're going to start by looking at version four, just because I really like the way that the details change with the stylization here. So first we're looking at the low stylization. And if we put our stylization at 50, this is what would come out. So this is half of what we would get if it were set. We did not adjust or add the flag at all. This is half of the stylization. And again, we're thinking more about the artistic training that mid journey has had. And so if we were to look at that and compare it to what we have here, which is basically the default, you can tell the difference between these images. So here, this is more stylized. And here, if you look at this fruit, you'll notice that it kind of has a curve to it. This is kind of equivalent to the way that I was pointing out the one point perspective that we were looking at earlier in the demo, when we're looking at the scenes that were illustrated, if they were all with one point perspective, they all had that same vanishing point. And you can tell that that had a lower stylization. So I, if we even look here at the versions, we can tell that, well, it only gives us to version three. So we can't even see what was done at the earlier stages. All right, and now if we go up and we add additional stylization, again, you can see even in the angle, in the detail, you still have more artistic freedom and it looks again more artistic this is at 750 and now we're over to mid journey 5 and this is what it would look like at 0 and then if we added 50 to our stylization you can see how this would change it gets even more detailed and now we have a shadow casted with the default value of 100 
If we set it up to 250, again, now we have leaves as our background and a shadow. We, have, we can tell that we have more freedom with the usage of color in all cases. And again here, even at 750, which is what we're going to use, it's starting to look a lot more detailed. So this is like watching an artist progress as they train their hand and their images get more detailed. And for the most part, it's just because they're applying more artistic principles. So we have better use of color. We're having more shadows. We're having more shades and tints. We're increasing the highlights in these images and all of that comes together to make a beautiful composition and if we go all the way up to a thousand again you're able to see in all cases additional stylization welcome back here is just going to tell us really how to switch it you can use the settings or you can use this dash so here we're going to use the dash dash s in our prompt template so we're going to make a space and we're going to say dash dash s for a style and we're going to add another space and here we're going to set ours to 750. all right so now we have our prompt created and you can go ahead and copy this prompt or this template for the prompt. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it on a note in a notepad or you can use what, however you want to copy and paste and save this. So we've created our template at this point. Now we're going to come to the front of our template and actually i'm going to give you a tool to make this easier so for now let's just copy and paste this and i'm going to remove this from our prompt and we're going to ask mid journey to start by giving us some ideas for a children's coloring book sure here are some ideas for a children's coloring book. Animals, including farm animals, jungle animals, sea creatures, pets, and fantasy animals. Vehicles, including cars, planes, boats, trains, and bicycles. Nature, including flowers, trees, landscapes, and weather elements. Sports, including different types of sports balls, equipment, and athletes in action. Food, including fruits, vegetables, desserts, and snacks. Holidays, including Christmas, Halloween, Easter, Valentine's Day, and 4th of July. Famous characters, including Disney characters, superheroes, and cartoon characters. Jobs, including firefighters, police officers, doctors, and teachers. Fantasy worlds, including castles, unicorns, dragons, mermaids, and fairies. Science and technology, including space, robots, inventions, and gadgets. These are just a few ideas to get started, but there are many more themes and ideas you could explore for a children's coloring book. All right, awesome. So here, ChatGPT has provided us with an amazing list of ideas for a children's coloring book. Um, and again, whatever your idea is, if you chose a children's or an adult's, ChatGPT will be able to provide you with some good ideas to start with. And I love science and technology, so I'm going to go with science and technology. So now I'm just going to copy science and technology. I'm going to tell ChatGPT to create a list of ideas for pages that would be in a science and technology children's coloring book. Create a list of ideas for pages that would be included in a science and technology children's coloring book. Sure, here are some ideas for pages that could be included in a science and technology children's coloring book, space exploration, including planets, stars, rockets, and astronauts. The human body, including organs, bones, and muscles. Animals and habitats, including different types of animals and their natural habitats. Weather phenomena, including clouds, rain, snow, and lightning. Inventions and gadgets, including computers, robots, and other technological devices. Renewable energy sources, including solar panels, wind turbines, and hydroelectric dams. Science experiments, including chemical reactions, magnets, and electricity. Geology and earth science, including rocks, minerals, and geological formations. Transportation, including cars, trains, and airplanes. Anatomy of machines, including engines, gears, and motors. 
These are just a few ideas to get started, but there are many more concepts and ideas you could explore for a science and technology coloring book for children. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and I think I would like to, I love this idea of transportation. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to create a list. So we're just going to continue to choose from the list and then ask ChatGPT to expand on the list. So in this case, I'm going to go with transportation and I'm going to say create a list of images from the transportation category. Create a list of images from the transportation category. Sure, here are some images from the transportation category that could be included in a coloring book. Car, a classic car with a shiny red paint job and big wheels. Train, a steam engine train with a big smokestack and long carriages. Airplane, a commercial airliner flying high in the sky with a trail of white clouds behind it. Bicycle, a colorful bicycle with a basket full of flowers. Boat, a sailboat with a red and white striped sail on a calm blue sea. Helicopter, a red helicopter with spinning rotor blades hovering in the air. Scooter, a small scooter with bright colors and big wheels. Bus, a school bus full of happy children waving and smiling. Motorbike, a sleek and fast motorbike with a cool design. Tractor, a big green tractor plowing a field with a farmer at the wheel. These are just a few ideas to get started, but there are many more transportation images you could explore for a coloring book. All right, so while I love this list, the one problem is that I know that if we include anything that has to do with color or any prompts that list words of color, when we add them to mid journey we risk having that color already in the scene so in this case what we're going to want to do is ask chat gpt to repeat the list without referring to any color because this is a coloring book all right rewrite the list without referring to any color certainly here's the rewritten list of images from the transportation category without referring to any color car a classic automobile with big wheels Train, a locomotive with a large smokestack and long carriages. Airplane, a commercial jet flying high in the sky with a trail behind it. Bicycle, a two-wheeled cycle with a basket attached. Boat, a sailboat with a striped sail on a calm sea. Helicopter, a flying vehicle with spinning rotor blades. Scooter, a small two-wheeled vehicle with big wheels. Bus, a vehicle designed to transport groups of people. Motorbike, a sleek and fast two-wheeled vehicle. Tractor, a powerful vehicle used for farming and agriculture. Awesome. So now we're actually ready to bring our prompt back in. And since we've already created that prompt and we've copied and pasted it somewhere, we can just now copy it again. And I'm just going to use this platform. Actually, before we do that, let me remove that. We'll start with this first one. We'll ask for a short detailed description of the car. Provide a short detailed description of the classic automobile with big wheels. The classic automobile with big wheels is a vintage car that typically features a sleek design, rounded edges, and a sturdy frame. It has large wheels with thick, durable tires that provide a smooth and stable ride. The car is often considered a symbol of luxury and style, and it is a popular choice among car enthusiasts and collectors. The big wheels not only add to the car's aesthetic appeal, but they also enhance its performance, allowing for better handling and traction on the road. Overall, the classic automobile with big wheels is an iconic piece of automotive history that is sure to turn heads wherever it goes. All right, awesome. So here, we're going to start by just using everything that is from this point on and actually we can just use everything between that's highlighted here so we really don't need the overall and we don't need uh, this first part of the sentence so now we are ready to copy the prompt the prompt that we have engineered and i'm just going to paste it here and then i'm going to come back and i'm going to copy this portion of the description and I will paste it here. And so now that we have the full prompt, there's really nothing more that I need to say to ChatGPT. 
I was just using this space for you to see how we're going to use this entire prompt. And now we're ready to add this to mid journey. And we're still going to add it into the image prompt. There we go. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to take some time again to compare what would happen if we just added in description. So we can remove this and this time we'll just take this part of our list and we'll paste it in after the word of and we'll go ahead and add this prompt to our to mid journey. So now um, we've already been provided with our image and there's a couple of things that we are going to need to adjust and probably add to the prompt. But whenever we are prompt engineering, this is kind of the process. So you'll notice that there's always a few things that um, could be better. And as we notice them, then that is when we will adjust. So the first thing that I want to do is let's come back to the documentation that we looked at in the last demo which is the GitHub of these mid journey styles and keywords. And we are going to look at the camera section because in the camera section, it gave us some keywords that we can use to get a full scene. And so here we've got these up close versions of this these cars and i mean that's actually fine when it comes to the idea of this being used as a coloring book this is great but we want to probably be able to see the full scene and so one of the words that we can add is scene let's come back to our prompt and see where we can add the word scene in not in the in our template portion. So we'll just say a clean black and white line drawing of a children's coloring book image of a scene of, and it's a little repetitive, but let's see how this will change the outcome. And this time when we test the keyword scene, I'll just use the short description that uh, Midjourney gave us. Let's go ahead and copy this and I'll paste it in. And this is the output of the other prompt. So this is just the shortened prompt without the description. So right now we're looking at the difference between the long prompt, the very descriptive prompt. It gave us images that looked like this. As you can see, the more detailed our uh, prompt is, the more detailed the scene is. When I come back and we compare the two, right now we're comparing the detailed description to the short description. We see that by adding the more detailed description from ChatGPT, we're getting more detailed outputs. So here we even already almost have a pretty good scene. It's just really close up. And here we have no background, but the car itself looks pretty cool. So I kind of like both. And again, it's really just up to you. My goal by adding the word scene was to try to see if we can get a full image of the car and we still have not been given a full image of the car. So we're going to jump back over to our list. And if we scroll down, we can say closed composition. So let's go ahead and add closed composition to our prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and remove scene and we'll say closed composition. And again, let's go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it into the image prompt of mid journey. What we're looking for is the entire car. So this is really a demonstration also of how you're going to use all of these keywords that have been provided to us for mid journey to craft your prompts. And again, this is known as prompt engineering. 
It's going to be very important when it comes to your ability to generate specific images as you start with a goal in mind. And again, leaving this in the video because this is the process that you'll take to craft your images. And again, we're, we have a very up close view of this car. So let's scroll down and we'll see if we can get a full body portrait. So we're going to ask for a full body portrait of our, of our car. All right, we'll add this to our prompt. And again, this is the process that you take. So let's go ahead and leave closed composition. So coloring book image of a closed composition and we'll do comma and then full portrait of, full body portrait of a classic automobile. So let's go ahead and copy the full prompt and then we will paste it into mid journey again we're looking for the full car in this scene here and so while we wait we'll go ahead and provide the detailed description here as well so we're just going to copy this portion and we will replace the short description with the detailed description all right, and we'll go ahead and paste this into our prompt. All right, and so here again, this was the output and we're still waiting on the one that we just added to complete. All right, and another thing that we're going to look at, let's go back and we'll see if there's any other suggestions for getting the full image because we still have we're getting a little bit more at this point and we can also re-roll and let's come back and we'll see we'll add and we'll look to see so we have full body portrait of a vintage car so let's add a full image so again i've just reiterated the idea of a full the full image and we are starting to get the full car here so that is awesome so i've gone ahead and re-input our request and we're waiting on these last two to be complete the car however and the lines are looking great so i would still be able to i would still probably want this car and this one the only issue is that the car we're thinking about images that are going to be printed in this case the cars are too close to the edge of the page keep re-rolling these until we can get more close a little closer to what we're looking for so here again we are getting a better image a better full screen image i'll see you in the next class let's go ahead and now come back we'll remove this full image all right the idea that i have at this point is we're just going to say driving down a scenic road so now with a better description and we'll probably have to specify that in all of them just to make sure that we're able to see the full car also when we're dealing with the print as I was saying earlier, some of this will be cut off. So as opposed to getting too detailed and requesting too much from ChatGPT, um, I'm asking for a scene. Let's go ahead and reroll. They're still not showing the full picture. So this is maybe we need to add a zoomed out view of or an expanded view, zoomed out view. I'm not sure if that's even a view, but I know that I want more space around the car because this is going to be printed. All right, so the quality of the lines and the actual idea of this being used for a coloring book, all of that part is fine. The only issue is that we just can't see the full thing, the full car, and it still looks like we're not able to see the full car. So we got some zoom, pan, and tilt. 
All right, so now we're going to add to our prompt. We're gonna say full shot. So we're gonna say drawing a line drawing of a children's coloring book image of a full shot. And then we'll remove zoomed out view and also the word of. All right, let's go ahead and copy and add this into our and again everything else is spot on so not too much of an issue um, when it comes to the lines these are great for a coloring book even the details in the background all of it is is perfect we just we need to be able to have some room for the guillotine to cut off portions of this image. So one thing that we can do is also if if all else fails, when we add this into Canva, which is what we'll use, we can just add some padding up. Well, in this case, we'll add some margin around the image and we just will make sure that it doesn't go all the way out to the edge. I'm still just the perspective or the, the way the image cuts off is just for my taste is just not that attractive. I would like to see more of the car um, and that might just be me. So feel free to, if you just, if you're fine with how this is coming out, feel free to leave it how it is. All right, and so the last thing that we're going to do is once we have crafted our prompt, I'm going to show you a really quick tool, um, a cool tool that we can use to make sure that we don't have to keep copying and pasting in the template that we have. So we're basically going to create a template and we're going to add it to chat GPT so that in the future, if you decide to continue to create coloring books, all you'll need to do is add in this short prompt or the detailed prompt that ChatGPT provides you with. You won't need to go back and forth to your notepad to copy and paste this prompt template. So while we are waiting on this, let's go ahead and um, look at this add-on. So this is actually going to be an extension, a Chrome extension for ChatGPT. And so the name of the extension is Web Chat GPT. And so we're going to go ahead, when you get to your Chrome extensions, you're going to search for uh, Web Chat GPT. And it is this last one actually that says Chat GPT for the internet. So we're gonna go ahead and click on it. And this is the extension that you're going to uh, download and add to your Chrome browser. Now, once you get it added into your Chrome browser, you are going to have, or I've pinned mine up here so that I can easily turn it on and off. So once you have added it, you'll have this additional information on your screen. And what we're going to do is this is actually used for web access. Feel free to use it for web access, but for us, what we're going to be using it for is its ability to create prompt. So yours will come with just this detailed prompt and it looks like I'll need to pull this up a little bit more. All right. So, and actually you won't be able to see it because it's protected, but yours will come with a detailed prompt. And when you click on the arrow next to detailed prompt, you'll be able to drop down you click on the drop down and go to new prompt. That's going to bring you to a screen that looks like this. And what we want to do is we want to create a new prompt. And so we're just going to name this new prompt coloring book. And if you decide that you want to sell these and it's going to be um, something that you do often, you might want to say adult coloring book or child's coloring book. But once we name it, now you can drop in the template. So I'm going to copy my template and paste it in here. And the query 
is what we're going to add right here. So after the word of, and there's a comma, I'm just gonna push space, and I'm gonna click on query. And of all of the buttons that are down here, the only thing that you have to add is the query. And as you can see, I have another for actually writing professional papers, and this just allows it to automatically add things like in-text citations um, and resources to any article that I would generate. So here, in our case, we just want it to automatically add this additional template to idea that chat GPT gives us. And I'll show you an example here in a second. But after we add this query, the next thing that we need to do is add a set of instructions. And so we do need to use the keyword instructions. and then a colon. And now we're going to say only type the provided prompt. And that's all we need to do, only respond with the provided prompt. If you tell ChatGPT to do something that it can't do, it may respond by saying, as an AI, I can't actually type. So we're going to say only respond with the provided prompt. And here, we'll go ahead and click save. And now we have a prompt, a new template for prompts. So now that that's been done, we can go back over to ChatGPT. Here we go. And when I click on my uh, drop down now, I have the word coloring book. And so I'm going to first turn on the web access. And all this is doing is it is enabling this prompt because in our instructions, we did not refer to any part of here. If we would have added web results, then we would have gotten web results, but we did not add that. The only thing we had to add was query. And so that's all we're going to use. Going back to our chat GPT, I'm actually gonna to have to go back to this list. Here's what'll be put out. And it's just to prevent you from having to copy and paste. So I'm gonna copy this and then paste it here. And all I'm pasting is this description. Extension turned on. Now I will submit the prompt. And as you can see, again, it is still saying that it can't produce it. But again, all we need is this that is here. So again, we don't need to worry about anything that ChatGPT puts out. All we can do, all we need to do is copy what's here and we can now paste it into our um, prompt for a mid journey. And again, the extension is just so that you don't have to go back and look at a list of these templates that you've created. So because coloring book, this is the template that we may eventually use once it's uh, tweaked and once it looks like we want it to look, then all we'll need to do is very quickly drop in these ideas, right? But what if you have, and you will by the end of this course, you will have a list of templates that you're going to continue to build and you're not necessarily going to want to keep going back and forth looking for them. We'll just need to use this drop down as opposed to continuously going back and forth. And here, as you can see, our car is still not, a lot of the images still don't have the full view, but I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use these images here and I'll go through and let's find an image that would look good for a coloring book. I like number four, so let's choose image four. And I also like image one. And another thing that could have something to do with the way that the images are cut off is the fact that the aspect ratio, but we will adjust this as needed. So here I'll take a few of these images as well. And I also like image one. With Mid Journey 5, these images are already full scale. So all we need to do now is we need to upscale these images a little further because the scale of the image is automatically 
output at 1024. So we're going to need to bring that up a lot so that we're able to make sure that it looks good if we used it as a print. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the actual image and I'm going to save this image to my computer. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to jump over to another tool that you'll have to use, which is called Upscale Media. And for Upscale Media, we simply need to upload the image and I'm gonna choose a fairly detailed image. So once you upload the image, and I think there's a subscription, there's pricing, which you can look at, um, but you get so many free um, images. So here, you have the normal upscaling and up here you have the AI upscaling. So we can turn on enhanced quality. It actually is going to reprocess the image. And then we can also, there's a drop down that comes up here that you can't see because of it's been turned off, but we can choose to upscale it to 4X. And now we are upscaling this image again by the time that it's finished, if I bring this over here on this left side, it's showing you what a normal upscale version of this image would look like. And we'll probably see the best if we look at this detail on the trees. You'll notice that there's a little bit of blur still on the upscale version. And then now I'm going to move this over so that you can see the AI upscale version. And so here we're looking at the AI upscale version and take a look at how clean those lines are on the upscale, the AI upscaled side. It looks absolutely amazing. And you can imagine if you were to print this off or if you turn this into an actual coloring book to sell, you do not want to have those blurred images, those blurred lines. It just would look like a really low quality product. And so by simply using a tool like this, you can go from that really blurry look over in the background, which we cannot tell if you look at this mid journey image as a digital product, this looks fine. So what you'd have to do is you have to upscale it using a tool like this. And if you use an AI tool, it's even uh, better. It's almost the equivalent of immediately turning these into vector drawings. And you know, with a vector drawing, it can be as large or small as it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and click on download and it is going to download, but it's also going to give me this option to sign up. So if it's something that you're interested in doing, then feel free to do so. However, now that we're in Canva, you'll sign up for Canva and we can now just quickly drop the image into our Canva scene. And now you can see the side as well. This is not too cut off, so I could leave it like this. Or if I wanted to, I could have actually drop this in a little smaller but so we have our very first page of our coloring book and i think probably for demonstration purposes if you if you uh, zoom in you can see how nice and crisp these lines are because we've used that ai tool and that makes all of the difference this is going to be an amazing coloring book when it's all said and done so we will go ahead take a look at some other images we will upscale them and then we will ask chat gpt to help us with a description for a cover for this coloring book all right now that we have an idea of what we're going to use or have in our coloring book let's go ahead and ask chat gpt to provide us with a description for the cover of this coloring book so as you can see, we've already asked ChatGPT for information on this first prompt. So we've asked it to give us a short detailed description of the classic automobile with big wheels. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually edit this prompt and we're going to ask it for a description of the cover of this coloring book right underneath this list of ideas for pages in the coloring book. And the reason for this is because ChatGPT has what you might think of as short-term memory. 
And so when we refer to the coloring book, we want to ask the question directly under these ideas. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit this prompt by clicking on this button right next to share prompt. And now we're just going to ask it for an idea, actually a short detailed description of the cover of this coloring book. And then we'll go ahead and click save and submit. And so what you'll notice is what ChatGPT produced for us with the last prompt has now disappeared. And now it's giving us the short detailed description for the cover. However, if we need to access that information again, all we need to do is click this back arrow. And here is that information. So keep that in mind as you continue to work on your uh, projects in ChatGPT, you can always go back and edit a prompt to refresh ChatGPT's memory on a particular topic. Now, ChatGPT has produced this short detailed description. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And then I'm going to come over to mid journey. And just like before, we're going to add the image prompt and paste what chat GPT has provided us with. So let's go ahead and click enter. And then let's jump over to Canva. And so far, this is our first page. And this was just an attempt to kind of get to know what our image was going to look like in Canva. So now that we are happy with this first image, we can go ahead and click add page. And here, Kev is going to give us the opportunity to actually move this page up. So let's go ahead and bring this page up to the top. And this will be the cover for our coloring book. And now Midjourney has begun to provide us with images for our coloring book. And one thing that we need to keep in mind is the reason that I went ahead and pulled this particular prompt was because I want you to see how Midjourney handles text. And being that Midjourney is fairly new, it does not yet have the ability to spell words. So it's kind of in its infancy stages and it doesn't know how to spell yet. So with that being said, we want to be able to remove all text that is in our prompt, anything that regards the text needs to be removed so that in the end, we don't have any text. So that's one option. Another option would be to simply generate the images that you liked. If you found images that you liked with this original prompt, we could always take out the text using photo editors like Photoshop, or any other, we could use GIMP, we could use any tool that would allow us to remove text. And then we could replace that text with the actual name of the book. So a couple of things that we should also note though, here, as you can see, it does give us a specific information on what the text should look like. So if you decide to, whether or not you decide to leave the text on, generate the image and then remove it, or if you decide not to include anything referring to text in your prompt, what you'll want to do is you're going to want to make sure that you pay attention to the detailed description of what the text should look like. So in this case, it said that it should be displayed in large, bold letters. So we want to make sure that when we choose our text that we're going to actually use, we will choose the large bold letters. And the next thing that we're going to do is let's also ask chat GPT for a name for the coloring book. So let's go back over to chat GPT. And again, we're just going to edit this prompt by clicking on the edit button. And this time we're going to ask chat GPT for a title of our book. Okay. And as you can see, chat GPT has given us a nice title. 
So we have exploring the world through coloring, a transportation and science adventure. And this is going to be awesome. I love this idea, but if for some reason you did not like the idea, you could always let ChatGPT know by giving it a thumbs down. I actually like the idea, so I'm not going to give it a thumbs down here, but I could also say regenerate response. And if I say regenerate response, it will give me another idea for our book. So now it says, how about transportation adventures as the title for this coloring book. It captures the idea of exploring different modes of transportation and encourages children to use their imagination to go on their own transportation adventures. So I love it. Again, if I wanted to keep this, I could, if I didn't like it, I could give it a thumbs down. If I did like it, and if you do like what ChatGPT gives you, just like with Midjourney, in order to create the best algorithm for your use with ChatGPT and any of this AI software, you're always going to want to provide positive and negative feedback. That way, the AI application knows exactly what you like and what you don't like. So I'm going to give this a thumbs up. And here it allows me to add additional feedback. If I wanted to add some additional feedback and it looks like it's a little cut off, I could do that here. And also again, just like as before, I can always go back and forth using these arrows. All right. So I'm actually going to reroll this for the title page and I'm going to identify the best title page, but I'm going to wait to add the title page or the cover actually when it is, the book is complete because at that point we're going to move from Canva into another software that's going to allow us to simply move, remove this text and then add on our new text. So we'll actually save that for the end. All right. So the next prompt that we're going to create is the one for the train. And so again, we're simply going to grab our train description and I have pinned my chat GPT web extension to the top of my address bar and I can simply click it to turn it on. So now it's opened up a brand new chat GPT, but I can still come over and copy this description. And again, we have made a template using this extension. And again, this is not exactly what the extension was meant for. It was actually meant for you to allow chat GPT to access current data from the internet. And the purpose of it was because chat GPT's data collection ended in 2021. So with that being said, we now have an extension that would allow you to collect data and then have ChatGPT analyze that data and provide you with the best response. However, if you would like to use it for that, then by all means, watch my tutorial on ChatGPT. And I do give a very descriptive walkthrough on how to use this web access tool. So here in this case, we're just going to use it for the template, which we created earlier. So now all we have to do is paste our description in. And again, here it's given us an apology. However, we have what we need, which is here. So all we need to do is copy and paste this into the image prompt on mid journey. And again, as I said before, the reason for this is because you're not going to want to search for this, the template that we created every single time. And as a matter of fact, this actually gives us the ability to create a list of templates. So we have our prompt. I have pasted it into the mid journey image prompt. And as you can see, we're already starting to get our image of our train. So this is looking amazing and it looks like it's going to 
have some nice high quality images as well as some nice clean lines. So I'm actually a fan of one and four. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one and four and we'll let those go ahead and produce and then we'll come back over to the next prompt. We'll go ahead and grab it, we'll copy it and we will paste it in as a template into our template and here we're just going to copy the prompt and again paste it directly into the mid journey um, image prompt and i'm also going to re-roll just so that we can see what our other options are these two images are great so i'm just going to enlarge them and save them to my computer Remember that each time we do have to also upscale the images. All right, so here we have some nice images that were created and I like them. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab, I like four, I also like one. And I'll re-roll just to see what else comes up. So on our trains, it's looking good, but one thing that I want to do now is kind of go back and ask for a detailed description of this page. So I'm just going to say provide a short detailed description of the page and that is going to give us a better scene behind our images. So again, when we did the comparison, we did find that we got a better image when we had the detailed description. And again, here, I'm just going to edit this prompt and then click save and it has generated a new prompt and I can always go back to the other one. So I'm gonna put this one in for the train. I love what it's done with the plane. Again, I'm a fan of number three. And just so we can get kind of a few different images. All right, looking good. So I'm gonna go back here in chat GPT. I'm going to click this back arrow and I'll take the plain detailed description. And I'm also going to paste it into mid journeys prompt. And it looks really good, except here we got some color, though we don't want to choose that one. I love all of the rest of them though. So just from adding that detailed description, notice the difference between these images and the original images of the train. Here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and take image one, two and four. All right. And here for the plane, we must have included some sort of reference to color or coloring book because it actually colored. Okay. So it actually colored the plane. So let's go ahead and select just the portion that does not include anything about colors. So I'll go ahead and grab this one and we'll try it again. Again, you'll wanna make sure that you are cautious of making sure that there are no color behind here as well. Making sure that there are no words that refer to color or text if you are doing the cover. And on the cover, no words, words or phrases that are referring to text. And then on the pages, no words or phrases that are referring to color here on the plane and probably for the train too. What we did not do was copy this and paste it into our actual template. So let's go back and paste it here and go ahead and submit the prompt. And now we will get the correct output. 
There we go. As we come back up. All right. Yes. I just want to make sure that we did not include that. So we're good there. And let's go ahead and do the same thing for the train. So I'm just going to switch back over to the train. And even though the train gave us some really good images, we'll just see what we get, what we provided in this template. All right. So let's go ahead and drop this into mid journey. And already now we have a better image of our plane and we have our background. All right, so let's see what's gonna happen with the new train detailed description. They were already looking really good, but let's see what happens here. Actually, if, if we take a look at the first few images with the train, what we will notice is that here there is color in the background on actually all of them except for number three. So that again is due to the fact that we did not put in the actual template. So now this is looking good. I'm not a fan of number two because it has a little tint and then here, so does number four, but both of them also have text. So I won't be choosing those. However, I love number one and number two. Three, so I'm going to choose one and three. And at this point, we haven't really identified an age group for our coloring book. But at this, based on the first few images, it's looking like this one might be a little too detailed. But this one looks great. So we'll see how that comes out. Yes, and there's a little shade here, which would be fine in the coloring book as well. But I think that overall, this one would be probably a better image for the coloring book. We're going to go back over to our list and we're going to ask for a detailed description for the bicycle. And again, all we need to do is come down to the short detailed description and we can simply edit it and drop in our new request. So I'm going to click save and, and submit. And now we're going to drag this, drag and copy. And again, we will paste it into our coloring book template. And then we will hit send. All right, so here, we're just gonna copy this and paste it into the mid journey prompt. So while that comes up, I'm going to go back over to Canva and let's start uploading some of these images that we have collected. I'll start with the train. Again, I like this one, so I'll save it. Come back. The plane, this first plane looks pretty good, so I'll upscale that one. And so does number four. I think I actually like number three as well. It's just a little different. All right. And here is the image for the bicycle. It's given us this first image, which uses a subtractive method, it looks like. And I like, I really like the detail and I really like it. So I'm going to go ahead and choose image one. It may be more expensive to print, so I probably won't actually use that, come to think of it. But let's choose one, two, and three. And then I'm going to re-roll this. I'm actually not going to choose number four because if we scroll in here, it actually looks like she is missing. She's missing a leg here. She's got some special things going on. So we, I don't want to choose uh, this specific image, but this image looks good. It's so does this one. So. Let's go ahead and scroll back out. All right, and these images were generated. This one looks great. And so does this one. They both look pretty good. I'll probably go with this one for the bike. And then let's come back. And the ones that were re-rolled look pretty good as well. I'm interested in what number two is gonna look like. It looks like it has a little shading. 
which we did say no shading, but one and two both have shade and I'm gonna go ahead and upscale them to see what they look like. So if you're choosing to make a coloring book, which is a great way to make some passive income, just to create a coloring book real quick and sell it, on, sell it online. So if this is something that you're choosing to do, things that you're gonna wanna look for is this extra shade. When you color over it, it will add an okay effect if there's not a lot of it. So if there's too much shade in the image, it will have a poor effect when they color over it. So I'll do two, one, and three. All right, so here, this should be okay, but the shade that's in these flowers might keep them from being as bright and vibrant as they could be. And here again, I think this will be the best option to go with for the bike, except it might be missing a handlebar. So here I'm just going to uh, re-roll the bike. And again, this is a part of the process. So I've watched a lot of very quick, short YouTube videos about making books with Midjourney and ChatGPT. And each time it looks as though it's going to be very simple because they're editing out the process and I think a lot of people get discouraged because they think I must have done something wrong, but this is actually a part of the process. And even people that have used Mid Journey to create works of art, again, this is a part of the process. This is not as simple as typing in words and having Mid Journey do all of the work. And by no means should you, should you think or approach this task or any project as though it is. Um, and even in that case, um, it would really take away from your artistic privileges if that is what was happening. Again, that is not what you should expect when you approach AI with a project. Expect to be doing work. It is not as easy as inputting words and getting out beautiful images and products. You do have to go through a process and this is a part of an artistic journey. And it's very important that we continue that nar narrative because if not, we'll run into moral and ethical issues, more specifically ethical issues concerning our ability to own what we sell are to be able to sell and uh, profit on the images that we create. This is a part of the artistic process, being able to train your eye to look at and identify specific uh, features that are here like this. We have three, four handlebars here. If this was an automated process where no one did any of the work, images would come out looking like this and this is not acceptable it's almost thinking if you think of it like curator at an art museum somebody has to have a trained eye to filter through these images somebody has to have a trained intellect to create the prompts for these images by no means is this a automated process that eliminates people's jobs. That is not what is happening. This is a tool that is used to create products. And that is the story that we need to stick with and the narrative that we need to continue to create as artists. So one thing while we're here that I want to uh, just bring to your attention is if you choose to create a product to sell and for com commercial use uh, with Midjourney, you do need to make sure that you have the paid version because the paid versions allow you to use your images for commercial use. The free version does not. Please keep that in mind. All right, here. I like the third image. This one is the third image. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and upscale it. Again, I think this image might be a little more expensive to print just because it has so much black. I wanna leave that out, even though I do love the image. And I think that'll work for the bicycle images. Except again, we have some problems with the handlebar. So, um, just going through to see. I think that this one will be okay. So I'm gonna save this image and then 
Now that I have enough images collected, I'm going to come over to Canva and start to upload some of these files. All right. And I've noticed that I still don't have my train images. So I have that one and I'll probably need to reroll this. I'm going to try to get two of each image, at least two of each image. So here again, we've asked for different variations of this same image. I was hoping to find one with two handlebars or at least one that looks like it might have the handlebar that goes into the flowers. But again, at this point, it's starting to look like this bike has some problems. It looks like the handlebars are actually on the seat and that's not what we want. So we're, we won't choose that. Here, we're still getting some tint and I'm wondering where this might be coming from because I don't believe that I have specified anything like that. This one looks almost exactly like the first one that I selected. So I'll just reroll that again and also reroll the bike images. So a couple of things to note about mid journey is not only will you will have issues with the text, not some, but you will also find that you have problems with images that have anything that is coming out of something like fingers, arms, um, arms aren't so bad, but if you have fingers, if you had a person swinging a bat, if you had someone request that I did a cigar bar, an image for a cigar bar. And they had the people that were in the cigar bar had multiple cigars. And it, it's just not the best at kind of honing down those details. And for the most part, it's because of the process that it goes through in the stable diffusion process. So here we finally got some pretty nice images for our train. And again, remember, this is part of the process. Not every image is going to be perfect. So yeah, just know. And these two I love. So I'm going to choose those. And this one got re-rolled. This first looks, the first one looks pretty good. We're finally getting some good handlebars and I like this third one. So I am definitely going to use the third one and I want to see what the first and fourth one look like up close. This one, I'm not a fan because it looks like the wheel is kind of smushed or smashed or stretched out and skewed. So I won't be choosing that one. Also, if you think about again, perspective and mid journey has not yet really mastered foreshortening. So keep that in mind. If you have any images that are starting to look like they're pointing at the camera, you would have a higher chance of having issues with what the outcome was. So here, this is looking good. I love this one. It's, it does have a little amount of shade. This one has a little less and it looks like it offers more room for detail around the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. And I'll save it to my computer. And I'll also go ahead and grab this one. Actually, I already have two, so we're good there. Now I'll grab the bike and save it. And I'll scroll down again. I will, um, let's see, uh, this one has problems. So I'll take this one. All right. And then I am ready to come over to Canva and now upload the new images as well. All right, so I'm going to need to get another car image. Let me see if I have one that I just did not load. I need to collect another car image. So I'll just um, add that page in later. I'm going to go ahead and click add page. And now after the car is the train. So I'll choose um, this one. And one thing to note is that with Canva, um, it does give us the ability to hold down and um, 
it will show us a guide for positioning. So all you need to do is hold down and drag. And when you get to that, this guide, we want to stop because we're keeping in mind um, that if this is a printed image, it does have to go through the guillotine process, which is when we're going to have something that a process of cutting off a lot of our um, actual page. So we'll come back and we will add the next image. And the next one is the train as well. So I'll drag this one out and center it. And then I'm going to drag and stop when I get to the guide. There we go. Looking good. All right, so we have a nice transportation coloring book coming to life right before our eyes. So next, we're going to add the bikes. So I have two bikes as well, and I'm just going to drag them onto the screen and center them up using the guides. I will then drag and hold till I get to the edge of the guide. So perfect. Let's go ahead and add another bike. Here's the next bike. Great. I want to make sure it's centered. Awesome. It is. And is that the same one? Yes. So let's get rid of that. If we need to remove it, you can click the trash. And here is the bike that I should have been adding. All right, so center it. Click and drag until you get to the guide. Great, click and drag till you get to the guide. Awesome. And there we go. That is looking great. All right, so we have the car, the train, and the bike. Now I'm going to upload the planes. And I need to go back and grab those planes from Mid Journey, scrolling back up. And here. All right, this one is good. I'm going to save it. And again, I like this one, so I'll save it. It almost looks like we might have been missing any wing on the plane, but here this is definitely missing a wing. It looks like the position of the plane also has something to do with the Let's reroll this. The position of the play could also be why we don't see it. So I'll just leave that. I'll keep that one, but um, this one right here, that's clearly missing a, a wing. So again, keep these things in mind as you go through and you select your images. You cannot just select all of the images that Midjourney provides you with. All right, um, and while we wait, we will go over to ChatGPT and we will look for the next form of transportation, which is the boat. So let's go ahead and grab the boat and we will add it to our template. And again, here we're going to right now ignore what ChatGPT is putting out. All we wanted was this prompt that was generated. All right, so we're gonna do uh, forward slash image prompt and paste. And also the plays are ready. So let's go ahead and I love number one. I also like number. Here we go with the expenditure issue. Um, this looks like some extra wings. So I'm actually gonna try, I'm gonna go with number four. So one and four here. All right, so this looks good. I'll go ahead and copy and 
enlarge and then save it. And here, um, a lot of, in this case, um, just because this is a, a demonstration, I don't want to spend too much time being too picky, but I do want to highlight things that you should look for when you are doing your, when you are creating your projects. Not only that, but if this was a book that I was going to sell, I would definitely take some time to be as picky as possible just to make sure that the images came out as with the best quality. And also keep in mind that in between each of these images, we do need to go in and upscale the images. So if you have not, then we need to upscale them as well. So I'm going to pull up the upscale. Upscale media again is the tool that I'm using. You can use any, um, AI upscaling tool and I'll go ahead and upscale um, I'll start here with the plane and I think if you use the paint version then you're able to upscale um, multiple images at once all right so again when we're upscaling we're looking for here on the original version you'll see how they are um and we're just looking at the ai side because that's what we're going with where you'll notice that on the original version it is the lines are blurred but with the ai upscale the lines are nice and crisp so we're going to go ahead and um Let's upscale it to four times. So that does a 1608 for this car. It went up to 1608 to 2412, which is great. Uh, failed to transform image. Might need to try it again. All right. And once it is imported, we're going to change it to four times. And I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that one. And we'll see if we can upscale another one while that one is going. So the next one is this next play. And while we wait, now we can see the um, even better um, and more crisp lines here with the four times. So that's great. Now I will download this image and we can always click enhance quality, but in this case, it wasn't necessary. Um, so that was plane one, here's plane two. And yes, nice crisp lines, which is exactly what we're looking for, for the upscaled. And again, that wasn't even at four times. Um, so here it is at four times and still these nice crisp lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and download. All right, and let's go ahead and upload the train images. There's one, and here's the next train image. So on this, the train images, we may need to upscale just a little bit more. Four times is great. And let me turn this to four times as well. All right, so now that this is at um, upscale to four times, I'm going to turn on the enhance quality. And the same for this one. And that's because there's just a little more detail. All right, so now I'm focusing specifically on these areas where it's going to require some detail. I do see a little bit of a blur, but nothing compared to what it would have looked like if we would have just printed out the original version. So these are looking really good for, for the details. I love it. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and click download for this first trade. Then, um, scroll down. Here's the next trade. Let's check out the details. Looks awesome. You can even see the bolts. Everything came out nice and crisp and clear. So again, ready to click download. 
And the last two images that we need to upload here are going to be the bicycles. So I'll choose this one. And also I'll choose. All right, this one looks good. Upscaled to four times. And over here, and with mid journey, it looks like it has produced a sailboat. And it looks awesome. I like number four. And this one's ready. Great. So here with these detailed flowers, we we'll just want to make sure that there's no blur and that the shapes are complete so that they actually have something to color in. Um, and this looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and download this one. All right, so I've upscaled this sailboat, but when I'm thinking about the level of uh, detail for our other images, this one is looking like it would be for a completely different audience. And we do want to keep that in mind. So here, this one is a little more detailed, but I'm going to, I've already re-rolled this and um, the idea that it's a sailboat um, may be part of what is making it less detailed. As I can see, this one's probably going to be the best, but it has this like reddish tone. It did. Um, and it might just be because of the fact that it's a sailboat. However, I do actually like this one. So number three. And I'll reroll this one more time to see if we can get some better images or just some more detailed images just to keep within the same age range when it comes to, because we don't want to have something like this. And then on the next page, we have this. And these are all things to think about when making a coloring book. Um, and... I may just not use the sailboat idea at all. Um, and we don't have to, and be, the reason is because we have, we're gonna have 20 pages anyway. Um, so we can very easily replace or ask ChatGPT to provide us with another or a different um, form of transportation. And there's, some, just, there's just something about what the quality of images that we're getting here that I'm just not really sold on for our current um, coloring book. So with that being said, let's go on to the helicopter. So we're just gonna co copy the helicopter and paste it into our template. And we're gonna copy the produced prompt and paste it here. All right, so there's the helicopter. And next, we will go to the scooter. And let's ask for a detailed image of the scooter. That may have been what happened to this sailboat actually without the detailed description. So we have to have the detailed description, then it has to go into our um, template. So I'm gonna copy and I'll paste it into the template. Wow, I like the helicopter. All right, so now I'm ready to put this into the template and paste. And here, now we can drop it into mid journey and paste. Looking good. I'm going to go back and grab that um, sailboat description and put it, ask for the detailed um, description of the sailboat. All right, and then I'll copy the one for the sailboat 
and I will paste it into the prompt template that we've created. And all we need is the prompt. And then let's go ahead and paste it here. And I think like one thing that I'm starting to like is it was by mistake at first, but when we don't put it into the, when we don't ask for the detailed description, it produces images without a background and they're very straightforward and I really like them. And I think that one thing I might think about doing is incorporating these images. So maybe I'll have just the form of transportation only for the first page. And then the next page, since I'm going to have two, maybe the next page will be that form of transportation with the detailed description. And here with the detailed description added to the sailboat image, look at the differences between the two. So if you decide to do a children's, a younger children's book, um, don't do the detailed description. Um, that would be my suggestion. So you'll come out with images like this, but this would be great for, for people in grades from one to and maybe three, but grades one and two would be, would do great with the, so this would be great for kindergarten and first grade. And this is starting to look like a second grader image that for thinking about coloring books. And this is probably going up into fourth and fifth grade, just for just their ability to color in and, and start learning how to stay in, in the lines. And the lower grades, we want to have a, a less of the detail. So um, here, this is too much line work for a lower grade of course they would still love to they would still love to color it in they'll still enjoy it but um a person that is purchasing a coloring book for someone that age probably would not choose something that's this detailed but when we look at the rest of our images um we are thinking about an older maybe even an adult would choose these coloring books these images for coloring books so i do still love um, some of these helicopters. I'm just going to uh, upscale all of the helicopters and also upscale all of the scooters. Here, I like one and two. I actually like four, but it is, it's got that tone to it that I'm not going to choose just because it, we haven't been choosing it for anything else thus far. Okay, great. The scooters came out looking pretty good. All right. So the last one was... That's the detailed description for the scooters. And these sailboats are now looking like they are going to work for our age range. Yes, great, great, great. So we've produced some very nice content in this demo. And it looks like with the detail description of the scooter, we are still not getting a background scene. And that's fine, but we are getting some really nice scooters. So what I could do is I could come back to chat GPT and here I could go back to my, um, scooter prompt and provide a detailed description for the scooter, a two wheeled vehicle. Okay. So I could also ask for, I could say the scooter scene. And this will produce a actual scene with the scooter. So I'll go ahead and copy this and paste it into Wind Journey. 
remember that the reason that I put scene was because based upon the mid-journey documentation, if you add the word scene to your prompt, it will produce an actual scene as opposed to just that object in the scene. So here I'll go ahead and start to collect some images for the coloring book. I really like this one. Um, and I'm just going to upscale these as well. I'll probably end up with too many scooters, but okay. This time it did a scene, but, um, Oh, that's what happens when I forget to put it into the um, template. So I'll paste it into the template. And now let's up let let's upload the um, mid journey prompt. This is a pretty cool scooter. And so is that one. I like all of them again. So here I'm going to go ahead and upload and save this one so I can start adding my upscaling my scooters and adding them to my book. Great. All right. And I'm going to start taking these downloads and dropping them into Canva right now. All right, so after the car was the train, so I will add this train image next. Just want to center it up and. All right, looks good. And then here is the next train. And just want to come to the guides and center it. All right, looks good. And after the train was the plane. And again, gonna drag it to the guides. All right, and here, I'll skip over that one because I need one more plane image. And after the plane was the bike. So I'll drop this one in. And add another page. Great. Yes, I think I do like having just the image. Um, so just the bike and then the bike in a scene. Um, and I may not be able to do that for all of them, but I will do it for some. And here, as you can see, now we have a very detailed, complex scene. I actually think I like just the scooters. So after the bike, we'll do scooters. And I've gotten enough, so I just need to come over and upscale. All right, so here's the first one. I'll take it up to four. And it looks really good already. Great. I'm ready to download. Um, I thought this was a four. Oh, that was this one. Okay, here we go looks good and I'm ready to download this and I'll come back to this one double checking again it looks great so I'm ready to download now I have two scooters coming back over to Canva ready to bring them into Canva I will then drop this into here great we'll come down and same thing for the next 
Just remember to follow the guides. Can I just drop it in? Great. All right. And so we have scooters, bikes, trains, planes. What else do we have to create? Um, on our list after the scooter was a bus. So try to make sure we do it this right, do it right this time. We're going to copy it. We're, then we're going to ask for a detailed description of the bus by pasting it here. And then we'll submit. And then we'll take this detailed description, we'll copy it, and we will put it into our chat GPT color book template. And remember, if we don't, then we will get color and it will not be suitable for a color book. And now we're ready to add it to the mid journey um, image prompt. And I'll just keep going until we get to the end of this list here. So after the bus was a motorbike, copy it, bring it down, ask for a detailed description for this page. Click submit, copy the detailed description drop it into our template and click submit. And we're going to copy this prompt and drop it into the measuring image template or image prompt. Now we're going to go back over to chat GPT and we're ready for the last one. We're going to copy and we will ask for a detailed description and paste, submit, and we will copy the output, paste it into our coloring book template copy the prompt and we will now we have added it to oh my goodness how awesome i'm going to re-roll this the only one that i think that i can probably use is number three looks great these are this one is awesome but it's just a little too close up so i'm going to come back and check out the bus it needs to be re-rolled I did use the detailed description, so I'm just gonna ask for another one. Here, this is in the prompt, but for some reason it still came out looking green, so there must be some something that is causing it to come out like that. I like this, so I'm gonna go ahead and save it to my computer. And I just need two. I just need two of each. These were not great. I like number one and I like number three. So I'm going to get those and just reroll one more time on that. Coming down, now the bus images are getting better, but they're still not up to par with what we have going on here. So I may need to take a closer look at that prompt. There may be something there that is having um, issues. So I'm going to go ahead and upscale this one, save this one so I can upscale it. All right, the bus images are starting to get better. I'm going to reroll it again and I'm going to just take um, image number two. Image two looks great. Um, the motorcycle images are just getting better every time. I love number four, so I'm going to grab that one. These look um, too, look like they have too much shade. So I'm gonna come down and this one is not, something's wrong with this, this one here. So I'll keep coming down. I'm already seeing that I'm still gonna have to reroll this bus image again. And when I'm done, I will, this one looks good. When I'm done, I'll go back and look at, look back to see what might be causing it. So here is the second image. All right, and as I go back up, I still need to reroll this tractor. 
So at this point, we just need an image for the bus, another image for the bus, and an image for the tractor. And I think we'll be done collecting these images and ready to take them over to be upscaled. I don't know if I got this one or not, but I'm going to save it because I like it. And while I'm here and waiting for these other images to be to complete, I think I will. This one would be good, but the people are now walking on the bus. So I'm going to have to reroll that again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and paste it. And this time I'm going to get rid of the children's spelling book. The word children's. I'll get rid of that and then try it. I'm probably going to do the same thing for the tractor because they are just not coming out even with the detailed description and adding it into our template. It's just not coming out as it needed to. So I'm going to get rid of the word children's and click enter. We'll try it again. I think it's already coming out better. Great. That was the problem. And I originally was going to do a children's book, but as I started, I started to like some of the more detailed images. So I decided to go with them. While I wait for those, I want to scoot back up to the cars because I need to get one more car image. And I think I like this one, so I'll take it. All right, and I'll jump back to the present. And the bus images are now coming out good. I like image one and three. Here, I like image... These people are a little small, so it's a little difficult to just color in a bunch of little bitty people. So I want to make sure that the the bus is the most prominent aspect in the image. That being said, I think this is a good one. So I'll go ahead and get it. I only needed one more bus, so we're good. And um, I'll take this one too, just as a backup. All right. And now just working with this tractor prompt, has it produced a new one yet? It did produce a new one, even after I got rid of the word children's. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. Right, so this portion here is great, but I'm going to get rid of it. Okay, great. This part, the image could encourage. Okay, so this will all work. Now let's try it again. And while I wait on this tractor, I will come back over to up, start upscaling these images. So I'll upscale the bus. All right, and I'll come over to Canva. So now we're ready to, we got the scooters. So next we can add the motorcycles. Great. With this new generated prompt, I'm back over on the mid journey side. And I do see that with this new prompt, we have some much uh, better images. I'm just going to go with one, two, and three. So we'll wait on those to upscale. They're upscaled. And this hand. Um, looks a little off one two three four okay it may be okay again watch out for the hands because if you don't you run the uh, risk of putting out a hand that is has too many fingers all right so we got some good things to work with with the tractors feeling confident about those. I just need to get two tractors and then ups and then upscale them. This one is too deformed. The steering wheel, all of that is not right. So this one will probably be good. 
So is that one. And since I have that one already, I think I'll go with this one. All right, so now coming over to the upscaler, um, I do need to upscale these to the four. Ooh, the car needs to be upscaled to times four. All of them need to be upscaled to times four. Now we've already gotten the opportunity to check over and see what the line quality looks like. Again, if you're doing this to sell, please make sure that you take your time to go through and make sure that you don't have any blurry lines and your line quality is good. I'll do the same thing for the buses. If you need to like work on your workflow and just make sure that you are being as productive as possible, probably focus on the details. So I'm not necessarily concerned with these lines because I know that they're good, but when you get into the detailed areas, that's what you should worry about and what you should be looking at. And this one is not up to four yet. Now let's go over to Canva and upload all of these images that we just downloaded. So after the scooter, I'm going to add the uh, motorbike. Great. And then I'll add the next page. And let's see. We probably, we could add the plane and another car. I'm trying to decide where to add the bus. Okay, that car looks good. So here's my car. All right, looking good. And, all right, I'll go ahead and at the bus at the end. Center it up, looks good. I need one more bus. That's not ready to. Okay. And it's looking good. All right, and the last thing that I was supposed to have was another playing it from somewhere. All right, so I've gone ahead and completed the coloring book and this is the outcome. As you can see, we have completed the background or the cover image. This was also done with Mid Journey. And I went ahead and used Canva to add this text holder background as well as the text. Another addition to the coloring book is this bold black frame that has been added around every image. So if I scroll down, you'll notice that all of the images have the bold black frame. And last but not least, I skipped pages. So after every coloring page, I added a blank page and this was done so that if a person is coloring with marker and it bleeds through, it won't have any effect on any of the other images. All right, so this is the coloring book. And one last thing that I will show you that we can do with Canva is to record a presentation. And this can also be used to advertise your coloring book. So if you go ahead and click on share, 
You can also click on present and record. And it will then ask you to start recording. And once you click record, bring you to a screen that looks like this, then you'll click start recording and you will start recording. So now let's take a look at my coloring book advertisement. Step back in time with our vintage style adult transportation coloring book. This book features a stunning cover design that showcases a variety of vintage vehicles from the early 20th century. The design is set against a dark shade of blue-gray background that provides depth and contrast to the other elements. The cover features stylized illustrations of antique automobiles that beautifully captures the elegance and craftsmanship of classic car designs. The car is surrounded by other vintage vehicles such as a steam train, a biplane airplane, and a wooden motorboat creating a nostalgic and timeless scene that will take you back in time. Each image in this coloring book has been given a bold frame to enhance the vintage feel and provide structure to your coloring experience. The addition of blank pages between each image ensures that your work stays clean and prevents the markers from bleeding onto other images. The pages have a white background with clear, clean lines and are only in black and white with thick lines, low detail and no shading. The aspect ratio of each image is two to three and has been optimized for quality, version, and size. Whether you're a fan of vintage transportation or just looking for a fun and relaxing coloring activity, our vintage style adult transportation coloring book is perfect for you. Let your creativity take flight and immerse yourself in the beauty of classic vehicles. Grab your favorite coloring tools and let's start coloring. All right, we are back in mid journey and now we are ready to start creating our very own personalized and custom slide decks. So if you've ever done a presentation and you wanted to make sure that it stood out, you know how important it is to have the perfect concept that is not only unique, but something that also stands out and that catches the viewer's attention. So what we're going to do is we're going to use Mid Journey to create an entire slide deck that can be used and customized in any presentation that we might need to use it for. So when thinking about the presentation and the slide deck, the very first thing, the most important thing to think about is the aspect ratio. So when we were creating the coloring book, if you remember, we used an aspect ratio of two to three, and this gave us a, a page sized and oriented shape for our images. All images are taller than wide. And in this case, we're going to need to create a wider than tall aspect ratio. So we're going to have to remember to use the seven to four aspect ratio. Now, the next thing that we're going to think about is the theme for our presentation. Now, depending on the venue and what the presentation is for or about, that's probably going to determine the type of theme that you're going to use. And I'm going to start with a comic superhero PowerPoint because I want to show you that you can do any style of PowerPoint with Midjourney. So the first thing that we need to do is we're still going to be using and starting off with the image prompt and the very first thing that you need to state is that you want a blank PowerPoint and the next part is going to be the specific slide or type of slide that you want for this part of the deck. So each slide deck starts with a title slide. So we're going to go ahead and say blank PowerPoint title slide. And then we're just going to say inspired by Marvel and we're going to list the aspect ratio. So let's go ahead and post this prompt. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to actually, so now that we have created the prompt, I'd like to point out a couple of things. So if we dissect this prompt, you'll notice that we are starting with the word blank 
We're using PowerPoint just to kind of start off with a baseline of what kind of slide that we're looking for. And we're also, after the word PowerPoint, we're saying title slide again. That is the type of slide that we're creating. And the very last part is inspired by Marvel. Now this part um, before the aspect ratio is the most important part because this is what is giving our entire slide deck a theme. So this is basically the theme and also it's going to kind of guide or steer the artistic style of the slide. We can also add some additional flags or perimeters to our prompt. And so in this case, we're going to just add two additional perimeters to the prompt, which will be the style, which is at 750, and the quality, which we're putting at two. We're still going to keep the same aspect ratio of 7.4, and we're just going to increase the quality a little bit, and we're going to adjust the style. Remember, the style is the mid journeys the level of artistic training that is going to be applied to mid journeys output. So remember, if we compare these two, so here we did not add the style flag or perimeter. Now, if we look here where we did add the style flag or perimeter, you'll notice that it has much more of an artistic feel than it did before we added it. So when we add our new flags or our new perimeters, our slides are going to then start to become more toward the artistic so side. Now, if this is going to be a professional presentation or something that is used in a formal way, then you're probably going to want to make sure that you use less of the stylized perimeter. So that number should be a lot less if it's formal or um, something that is used for a very professional environment that does not really allow for too much creativity, because then you'll have a very strict and structured slide presentation. But for us, in this example, keep in mind, we are specifically doing something that's creative. So we're going to add some more style to it here. Now, the next thing that I want to point out is that remember, mid journey does not do well with the words, with the text. And there is some doc documentation that has attempted to experiment with adding text into the prompt so that we'll get text in the output. However, so far it has yet to consistently work. So we're going to not worry about adding text. We can do that in another presentation. We'll probably use Canva to set this up and that will give us a, a pretty good variety of fonts that we can use. So here, the best one to probably use would be this first one. And this third one looks pretty good. It looks like it could be used for just a general slide. But when it comes to the title slide, we're looking for something that's given us a lot of space to write the title of our presentation. So I'm just going to go ahead and re-roll that. And we can also scroll down to see what else we have that Mid Journey has provided us with. So one thing is that I really like option two. So I'm going to go ahead and upscale option two. I like option four, but then again, we also have the text and you can very easily go into a software like Photoshop or GIMP, something that is free. If you need it to be free, you could use GIMP. There's also online apps that will allow you to remove the text. But when we have texture in the background, it gets a little more complicated. However, it might not be too difficult being that it's a spotted background. So we have a couple of different ways that we can approach this text. We can remove it. We can put something over the top of it. Um, if you find a image that has been generated that you love, but it has text, then I would consider 
either removing it with Photoshop or GIMP or an online source, or just putting a different a text overlay over that specific slide. However, I really like two, three, and four, so I'm gonna upscale all of them. And we could probably also upscale one. Initially, I didn't like it because he was in the middle, but I can see where we're going with this transparent overlaid lower third down here. So we might even be able to do something with that. All right. And another thing is we're still talking about adding multiple perimeters to our prompt. So let's go ahead and just copy that prompt and we'll go back and we'll paste it in again. And this time let's increase the chaos level by adding C and we'll set the chaos to 50. All right, so now we've added yet another perimeter to our prompt. We have now the style, the quality, the aspect ratio, which is the most important when considering slides, and we have the chaos level now that has been set to 50. So we should have kind of a more of a variety of outputs. And let's see what we get. And while we're waiting, let's go ahead and copy this because the next thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and add the next type of slide. So I'll paste it and the next slide that we'll look at will be the, let's do a table of contents slide. So I'm just going to copy table of contents and I'm going to paste it here. And at this point, before we actually complete our prompt, we need to choose the opening um, title slide because again, this is going to really control the artistic style that we use. And I must say that I really like number four here and number two. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to grab this one. So I'm going to enlarge it, get the image address, and we're going to paste it before our prompt. We're going to go ahead and hit enter. And let's do the same thing for this one as well just so that we can see the difference. Again, just enlarge it, get the image address. So you, you click on it, right click, go down to image address and copy. And then we're going to paste that before our prompt. And so now we're using this as a starting point. And from here, we'll now be able to keep the same artistic style throughout our slides. So the rest of the slides that are created. And here, the next thing that we need to do is we really need to ask for no text. So the first thing that I'll point out is that when we chose this image, we were presented with this next slide and here it didn't necessarily follow the typical format but with this one we did get a next a new slide with a different style well for the table of contents but this is now a new image for our background so just to demonstrate how we can have a title slide that looks like this and then if you notice this would be the next slide, which we'll use for our table of contents. And again, we'll still have to remove this text and we'll work on that in Canva. So we're gonna go ahead and start to build our slide deck. So let's go ahead and now save this image. And I'll come down to this one and I'll save this image and then we're ready for our next. Type of slide. So we've got the table of content slide. We can use just a content slide. So not the entire table, but we'll just need a 
type of slide that will just hold content. And when we get into these, we can start to also incorporate chat GPT again, because this will allow us to also get a visual description of the layout of our content slide. So um, we'll look at that here in a second as well. And the next thing that we'll do is I'm going to go ahead and re-roll a few of the one, a few of the previews that I think would work well for just the actual PowerPoint. And I'm enjoying these as well. So it just, they both have different artistic styles. And here, we're looking at a new set of content slides. This is the new set of tile slides, but here's our actual content slide. I really like number two here. So I'm gonna upscale that. And another thing that we can do, which we'll talk about just a little bit more in our next lecture, is we can also use negative prompting and we can attempt to have mid journey exclude text. So it hasn't worked perfectly in the past, but we can do dash dash no text. But here, let's take a look at some of the options that we've been provided with for our table of contents slide. So this is another one that I think will be pretty cool that follows our theme that we can actually just use as a um, content slide. So I think that works and I'll go ahead and grab that one. And the next type of slide that we're going to use is we'll create an image and media slide. So here, the most important thing to think about is what type of presentation you're creating. So if you are not creating, for example, the template that we're creating here, but you're creating a actual PowerPoint, then you can immediately add in images at this stage. However, um, it is important to note that I like to use the, to create the actual template so that if you need to change out images, but use the template for something else, that's still a possibility. So here at the image and media slide, if we had images that we knew that we wanted to use, then we could go ahead and plug in those images in placeholders. But again, that is, is really just up to you and your taste. So here we're going to need to get a little more specific with our request. And we need to also add the reference image to the front of the prompt. This is a pretty good example of why we're using the reference image, because here we weren't any images that follow the same style as we have this kind of uh, cinematic type feel. And here we have the same style, but none of the previews were offered in this last generation. And that's because we did not add the, our original image as the reference image. And we do that, we add a reference image by adding the image address before the prompt. And so when you do that, you're given a better chance of receiving some images that have the same style. And with our chaos level set the way that it is, we may need to bring it down just a little bit because it's given us a very wide range of images. And we kind of want to keep it within the range and the style of our original image. So that's gonna also affect the way that your previews are generated. I'll see you in the next class. The next thing that we can look at is a transition slide. We can also go ahead and let me copy this. So I'll copy everything except for the chaos and then we'll paste it into the image prompt. And we just need to replace the words images and media with transition. 
because this is the transition slide. And again, you'll notice that by taking off the chaos level that was set to 50, you'll see that here now our images and media slides have the same uh, style, artistic style, as the table of contents and the content and the title slide. So let's continue to move forward using this style. We can also specify framed image placeholders. So now that we have an option for our media slide, which is, this one looks pretty cool, but I'm gonna re-roll this again. I think this image also looks good, but we wanna find a slide that's going to not have anything in the center because we're going to need to use it as the media space or we're going to need to add an image so this layout is great and here if we were to add images or a framed image we may have trouble the viewer would have to share attention with the media and then also with the background. So the best one for this content or the media may be our content slide, which would be this one. And again, if we end up using the same slide, um, it should be okay as well. So I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and grab that content slide. And here we will add it to our prompt. And this time, let's say blank. All right, let's copy this and we'll paste it. And this time we'll say blank PowerPoint image and media slide with framed, with framed image placeholders. There we go. So this should give us a preview of PowerPoint slides that have empty or and they may even already have images in them. That will be fine because we can just cover them up. But what we'll be looking for is a background style like our reference image and we'll be looking for images or frames for our images. And so here, pretty good job by adding a nice space for us to add these images into. This one looks pretty cool. Would have to consider how we overlapped these images. And then again, we could also just add the images to this. Again, however, that might leave us with, leave the viewer still sharing attention with the content and then also with the background. So. Those are all things to consider when you create your actual PowerPoint and your slideshow. However, what you will notice is that we have a nice theme that can very easily be used and customized to fit the needs of your specific presentation. Now, the next thing that we'll look at while this is generating, and I'll just go ahead and have it generate a few more images, but Let's look at a new, let's look at a new perimeter that we can add, which is the repeat perimeter. So here, and remember that it does not matter the order that you add your perimeters in, but here we can use a dash dash repeat and we'll say five and it asks if we're sure that we want to and we'll say yes. So this will basically repeat this generation of previews five times. And for us, that's going to keep us from regenerating these images. And while they start, let's go ahead and see what it has created. Just taking a look at these options, they're pretty cool. Um, the problems that I'm seeing is that the best one is probably gonna be the second one or the 
third. This would be nice. However, we lose the theme when we add our media to this frame. And as we scroll down, we can see that it has added and is creating all five of these options that we've asked it to repeat five times. So it's, it's creating them right now. So we have more options to review. I really like this one. So these two are great. They might even be good for title slides. I can see you putting a nice title here. That would be really good. And then you can use just the color theme throughout the presentation. All right, this one looks pretty good as well. And so from here, you would just simply paste these slides into your presentation software. And when you get into your presentation software, you will replace the images and the text with actual images and text that match your presentation. So let's do a Godfather theme. So we can just look at some different themes that you can use. Let's look at this idea for the Godfather slide deck. And you'll notice that now we're going to define the artistic style within the prompt. So before we kind of allowed mid journey to create that style for us with our first title slide. And then we just continue to paste that image address before all of our prompts. And it kind of kept that theme throughout. I really love this one for an image and media slide. However, now we're going to define the, the artistic style inside of the prompt. So I've gone ahead and I'm starting with the realistic, the words realistic to go ahead and cue mid journey for what we're looking for when we, when it comes to the artistic style. And then we're going to say blank because we want to keep that in as much as possible. This gives us the ability to at least attempt to cue mid journey on not adding any content into the slide. We're only looking for the background. And so here in the next prompt, we will add the specific word background. However, this is then followed by Godfather style. So here we're going to say Godfather slide deck in 4k and then we're even going to so this 4k is telling us the quality and now we're going to even determine the rendering and we're going to specify that we want this to be done with unreal engine ray tracing style and so here this is giving us a example of what we could pretty much generate with this Godfather style. But let's now go back and let's ask for a title slide and then we'll say inspired by the Godfather. So let's come here and we need to make sure that we have the type of slide and now we have the title slide and then we're going to say inspired by and let's say there we go inspired by the godfather and so this kind of gives you a visual illustration of the different ways that you can format your prompts and that how that will determine your output and we can go ahead and jump over to the actual documentation and this is going to give us the way to verbalize and format our styling all right so while we wait on our title slide that is inspired by the godfather Let's go ahead and look at another reference or resource that you can use when it comes to kind of taking it beyond this course and just learning how to format your prompt. So again, we're looking at the mid journey 
styles and keywords reference and this is in github so if you scroll down you'll notice that we've been focusing on the styles in the past now what we're going to do at this point is we're going to start to focus on the prompt writing and when it comes to prompt writing in this section we can look at the formatting we've really already done um the keyword weight and we can look at just different ways to format our prompts so let's go ahead and look at the prompt formatting and so here this just really gives us an example of how in different ways that we can request styles in our prompts so here what it's done is it's provided us with two different styles so sphere and galaxy and then galaxy and sphere so if you scroll down you'll notice that depending on how you group these two styles together that is going to really determine the outcome of your images and so here if we scroll down we can add the double colon we can add the comma between styles we can add just a simple space between styles we can add just a single colon between styles and you'll notice the differences between the two not so different when you look at the generations from the style between just a style and a style two you can also add parentheses around the second style and here when we say in the style of this is really what we're kind of working with in our prompting so we're using the godfather style and it's giving us an image based on the style of the godfather and you can also say made of or you can say of a and now here, if you scroll down, you'll notice that you can also use the artist name and it's given us just the difference between putting a style before the artist name and then um, no style before the artist name. So the first is no style and then the second image is with a style. And so here, if we're using a style and the artist name, this is the type of um, galaxy style that has been added to the uh, work by Alex Gray and then if we scroll down again just by the format of the prompt it's going to really determine the outcome and if you look at these different outcomes with style vastly different they slowly get more creative and you just really get different outcomes based upon the way that you format your prompt so let's go back over. I'll see you there. Hello, welcome back. Let's see what we have been provided with for title slides. So one thing that I did was I went ahead and based on the information that we just received, we're going to reconstruct this prompt and we're gonna start with the Godfather and then style. And we're going to say that we need a blank PowerPoint slide that's in a realistic style. So here again, we are using a more descriptive prompt. We are specifically telling us that this design should capture the dramatic vintage atmosphere of the film. So keep in mind that here, this extra portion of description is really what's going to guide our slides throughout the slide deck this one looks really nice i love that one i love number four so i'm going to choose that i really like also number one and we're just thinking about the title slide and as we scroll down we're able to see some different artistic representations of our request and just like before when you find the artistic representation that you're looking for that's the one that we're going to continue to use as a reference image throughout our presentation. So here, I think that because our description was so 
descriptive, we can really uh, kind of use a lot of these options. However, this is the title slide. So now let's go back and let's just ask for a content slide and we'll keep everything, but we'll say, we don't need to say slide deck, but we can say content. Content slide. And we can also say with framed placeholders. All right, and we'll go ahead and present that option. And um, actually, we're going to probably need to run that one more time. And however, while we wait, let's find the best option for our reference image. And I really like this one. I want to go ahead and copy this image address and we'll need to place it before our prompt. So I'll paste it. Then I'll go ahead and also grab this one and I'll paste it behind. So here is pretty much what it provided us with without our image, without the reference image. And I still like this image here um, with the framed image. I think it would work really good for just adding content. So I'm gonna choose number four. I'm gonna upscale number four. Let's see what else it's going to present us with. And it's really just, um, at this point, what it's done is it has used our reference image and it has framed that image. So what we want to do is we're gonna want to add a chaos level. And remember that the chaos level is just really giving Mid Journey more freedom Let's set it to 30. It's really giving Mid Journey a little more freedom when it comes to previews and the images that it generates. So again, we'll keep this same prompt. So I'll copy this and we'll, we'll repaste it. And this time, instead of asking for a content slide, let's say agenda slide. And here, it's really kind of already given us a great slide um, that we could use for an agenda. Again, we would have to replace all of this text, but we could very easily replace the text or cover that text with a text background uh, that would be easily re replaceable. So um, again, it has provided us with these blank slides and it's kind of using the same pose. And even though we, okay, this is not the one where we added the chaos. Okay, this has a chaos level of 30. So let's go ahead and re-roll it, but let's raise the chaos level up to 50. And that's going to give it a little more freedom to uh, generate some different content as well. All right, so I'm kind of looking for new poses at this point, new background. This works good because if we needed to, we could use this to hold our image and we could put it over uh, this portion and we'll still have that godfather theme in the background all right another thing to keep in mind is i love this is the way that we have kept the prompt description in our prompt so it's pretty much stayed consistent through all of the prompts that we have used and so here this gives us the a very good framed image that we could replace with an image of our own. So I really like that background. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it. And even though we've got some good results, 
let's go ahead and say content slide background. So again, as a demonstration of how you continue to engineer your prompts and when you are going through and you're creating this content, if you're noticing things that are everything else is great, but there's just one little thing that needs to be changed. Um, again, you simply copy the entire prompt, repaste it into uh, input area and just add a little bit to your prompt and you're going to continue to add to it until you get the desired outcome. And then once you do get that desired outcome, that's going to be when you start to create a list of these prompts. So again, we have added a few different slides to our slide deck. We have a variety of themes. We started with the Marvel theme and now we are looking at the Godfather theme and pretty much when you are requesting these these images because of the order that mid journey is going to process your prompt in it's going to start with this reference image and then it'll start to add the the rest as it pretty much reads it and so here you're going to get a lot of powerpoint options that you can use you might get a a title powerpoint slide option when you requested a content slide so it's just good to keep that in mind and as you continue as long as you add that reference image it'll be in the same style and therefore you'll still be able to use that content as it is generated because it's still good content like this would make a really good title slide and this one here makes a pretty good media or content slide all right so we could also use or create at this point we could create a slide with a matrix type you could create a slide with technology style and another good style that was actually suggested by chat gpt is a retro style and so with the retro theme we're given a Let's go ahead and take a look at what it's going to look like. Again, we pretty much start with the same request, but we want to make sure that we keep the same format. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and we'll take a look at another type of theme that we can use. And really, hopefully, as you watch and follow along, you will see that by just keeping the same format you can create your own customized so let's go ahead and take a look at some other types of backgrounds that we could use as we create our presentation uh, slide deck and so i've already gone through and i have created a few different options and i'm just going to walk you through the prompts that i use to create them and so this first uh, set of previews came from the Iron Man HUD effect style. And in order to create this, I just kept the first part, which says realistic blank title slide. And then again, I added the style of Iron Man HUD effect. And this is what came out. So this would be a nice title slide to use in the cases where we have bright or large objects in the middle we would probably want to add a a background for the font and then place that over the distracting elements number three gave a pretty nice title slide option and then as we scroll down here is the next set that was generated and i love all of them i love number one it's almost perfect for a title you can put text right in the middle of that have no problem number three looks pretty good um, again you'll have to add a background element for the text but it's pretty nice 
And I could also see number two used as a frame for content. So, and probably even number four as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and upscale these images. Then we'll scroll down and look at the next. And again, here we're talking about title slides. So I really love this option. And these are all using that same format and that same prompt. So I'm going to go ahead and upscale number one, two, and three. And then here we've got some more options. They're a little bit distracting in the center for me. So I'm not going to select them, but you might also select this option, option number one as well. So again, I'm just continuing to re-roll the same option. And a lot of what you will find is that by re-rolling, you're really given the opportunity to continue to come up with slides that you might use in addition to this title slide, or even if you just need options for the title slide. Um, I really like this one. Um, I'm almost thrown off by this bright center, but it kind of lends itself to using, uh, adding text elsewhere. So um, it could be an option, but I'm going to continue to go forward. And this is the last set of the HUD effect elements. I really like a lot of them, but we only need a few because it's the slide presentation. You can actually, this is going to be the background, so you could um, repeat some of the options that you use. All right, and then I went on to looking at the a different theme and I went into a Super Mario Brothers theme. And again, still the same type of format. I added realistic blank here, but actually because it's a game, then we could actually reword this completely and we could say instead of realistic we could say game actually i'm going to come back and say remove that word completely and then towards the end let's just add game style and I'm going to go ahead and copy this once more and I'll paste it. This is the first option. We can also increase the chaos to 50. We can give it a higher quality and style. So let's do style at 750 and then the quality at two and then just for demonstration purposes i'm going to go ahead and repeat five times to six times and then i'll click yes all right so that's going to go ahead and generate those but while they generate let's look at some of these options that came up for the super mario so we started here and they're looking pretty good. This would be a great title slide. Again, there's nothing in the center. And then the elements that are around it are uh, minimal, uh, small. So whatever title we added here would definitely work well for a title slide. Um, just continue to scroll down. The idea of using the actual Nintendo for a theme but I kind of decided to continue to stick with uh, Super Mario Brothers so I chose to stay with that theme and I continue to generate and re-roll just based upon the same prompt and eventually I removed the word realistic as I was generating these prompts and just going from this example to this one there's really not too much of a difference they're just more stylized that's really what i was looking for was a game style so i'm fine with it and continue to scroll down these would work great for content i'm going to go ahead and keep that one i can see adding content here this will work for really good for an agenda so if we had something that you were keeping track of throughout the presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and keep number three as well. And I also like 
number two. And again, even though, well, I did ask for a content slide here, so this works good. I and mean, this would work good if I had to add any pictures, media, graphs, anything that I needed to add here infographics this is perfect so i'm going to go ahead and actually keep all of these let me scroll down and again i'm just continuing to re-roll and this will be your experience as you continue to generate these prompts and then i chose to use a image for a reference because i really wanted that kind of iconic that first screen that comes up when you are uh, playing uh, Super Mario Brothers. And I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't add this image to a prompt so that you can see the reference image that I started to add to all of these scenes. All right, here's where we were. And here's where I, just, I chose to add this reference image and I'll just paste it here so it'll come up. All right, so this is the reference image that I chose and I just really thought that it would be awesome if I could get this image and then I could just use this area as a title. And so that was what I was looking for as I continue re-roll and re-roll and re-roll. And as I continue to re-roll, I started to come into areas where it was using the reference image. So it still has like the title area, but this is not at all going to work for me to add text to. So I continued to reroll and it's still just adding small boxes and that was not going to work. So I kept hope alive for the most part and continue to try to reroll, but this one would work really good for more of a title slide and they eventually started to get in the way. So it's almost it was almost as though if it didn't give me the exact size that I was looking for, it just wasn't going to work. And so it began to be more beneficial just not to use them. However, if you were using multiple slides and you needed to perhaps have a topic slide or a slide that needed, um, as you changed sections in your within your presentation, some of these slides would work pretty good. So just depending on how you had it set up, However, for me, I, I chose not to go with. This one would actually be pretty cool for thing. So not necessarily as a main title, but just as a section title or a section heading. This would work great because it's, it's large enough. And then if you needed to, you could have an image or video here and that could, I could see that working as well. And then we have this nice clear space down here if you needed to add more. I just went through and I continued to re-roll as much as I needed to. And I got a nice, a fair amount of images that I was able to work with. So that idea worked pretty good. And then I went through, I saved them, I upscaled them and saved them. And we are about to go over into Canva because I've already gone to the external source uh, for upscale media and I have enlarged them or upscaled all of the images that I use. And so here, these are the upscaled images of the Iron Man, which is great. They're coming out looking really good. So I can see these making some pretty good presentations as well. And then this is what came of the original Super Mario Brothers prompt. And then I added the game style at the end. And you can tell that by adding that game style, we have really changed a lot of these graphics look a lot clearer. And now by also increasing the chaos, we've got options as far as the artistic style and again this is with the increased chaos so however these would make good additions to our slide deck for the most part however we want to make sure that we keep that same artistic style throughout the presentation if it's a background image and 
here are the rest of the images for the prompt. So those worked out pretty good. I'll see you in the next class. Just gonna scroll back up because this is an additional theme that I went with. And here, this is the title slide. It's a retro futurism style. So I really liked how it lends itself to the overall presentation. So got very easily came up with title slides and then very easily came up with slides that had a frame for be it images or again, heading slides. These work great for those. So I went ahead and generated all of these and upscaled all of them and then this was just another idea that I was playing along with playing around with so next we're going to head over to Canva and we're going to start to actually build out our presentation and now that we're in Canva you can go ahead and here you can see the images that I've selected and I'm actually going to Add this I just added as an example of how you can use the Super Mario Brothers and then you can add the shape behind it so I realized that the shape wasn't going to be generated in the background pretty much fine with that because I could very easily add this shape into the presentation and then we can add the title right on top of it and that works great for that. So next we go ahead and hide this one and let's add the title for the futuristic slides. So here you simply drag out your image and you let it go when it gets on top of your actual presentation. So when it takes up the whole presentation space, you just let it go. And I really like this for a title. So I'm going to go with one. And then if you look over to the side, you can choose elements and we can choose a shape for a background. This actually works pretty good. And we'll just go ahead and drag it out. It's already got a nice color to it. And I'll just add the background here. We may even add a border and we can increase the border. We can increase the border weight and change the color. So here with Canva, it provides us with colors that are already in our presentation. So I can go ahead and choose something like this or this. I'm gonna go with this one and it's giving us a fairly nice outline for our title. Um, that'll work. And so next we can add the title text and for the title text, I went ahead and asked ChatGPT for the best font to use with this style and it gave me a couple of options so we can go ahead and see which ones are within canva and we'll need to go over to font and then we can search for this font so this first font i'll just drag and increase the size and we'll probably need to make it a lot larger here Right. Okay, that kind of works. You can make it white. I think it looks a lot better if it's white. And then again, Canva gives you the ability to choose the colors from within your image. So even if I needed to choose that, which doesn't look great, I'm gonna stick with white. And this could be the title. It also gave me a few other options and we'll just go ahead and see what they look like. Kind of like this second option. So I'm going to remove this one and let's increase the size of this second font. We'll go ahead and drag it onto the background and change it to white. 
All right, that looks pretty cool. We can also highlight it and group it so that when you move one, both of them move. That way, if you need to continue to move your text, then that's an option. All right, so there's the first slide. And then if we need to, we can also create a content slide. And we'll just basically go back to our uploads. And we had some pretty nice content slide options. So this one looks pretty good. So we'll just click on this plus and we will click and drag our next image. And actually, I think I like this one a little bit better. So here we've got the next image. And if we needed to, we could add a image here or we could add text here and we can also pretty much it's just a drag and drop and if you need to add text elements then you want to make sure that you continue to choose the same font and you'll probably need to have backgrounds to some of the text elements so again just drag out your element for example if this was an agenda or a table of contents slide some slide that needed a list of information off to the side and then also an image here you have that as an option and i would again you need to continue to use the same style for all of your as much as possible. It's almost like a uh, style guide. So I want to keep this same color, but use this as the outline. So there's another, now we have a content, actual content slide. And again, you could add a video or an image here, and then your, any text or any list that you are using to follow along with the video or and whatnot, this could all be added here. So we can then come back and go to our uploads. We may need a section title, so that would work well here. And we would simply grab this same font. We'll center it up. And again, we'll keep the same color scheme or theme. And again, this would be the section title. And so we can continue to add our uploads and our backgrounds to our presentation. So it looks like we've used most of them. Let's go ahead and add this one because there may be a situation where we need a full screen. So here, this one works well with, let me change the order of this. All right, so this one works well as an agenda and this one would work well when it comes to um, data that needs to be displayed, maybe a chart. This would look pretty good, infographics, whatever you needed to add here, this works great. Same thing for this one. And I'll just add the rest again. This would probably be even better for a chart. I'm just liking the grid that's in the background. And if you were displaying data here, I think that would show up pretty cool. And then another option that you have is to just add glowing. So if you needed to add a glowing title to your data, to your display, that is an option as well. Just taking a look at some of these options here over to the side. Okay, that's a pro version. So make sure that you choose the right options if you don't have the pro version. Canva offers a lot of really nice options when it comes to font. So that's another reason why I chose this to make the template in and we could add caption below and again it still sticks with this theme so we'll leave a placeholder text here and so jumping back over to our uploads i think we pretty much have used all of these options so we could go into present mode and see what it looks like Let's go back to the 
beginning and this is a nice custom slide deck that we have created with this retro futuristic theme all right so at this point we're going to go back over to our lecture and we're going to start talking about how to create tile and patterns using midjourney welcome back in this lesson, we're going to delve into a creative and exciting topic, creating backgrounds, wallpapers, and patterns with Midjourney. This skill will open up a world of possibilities for your design projects, so let's get started. Midjourney is an incredible tool that allows us to generate unique and seamless patterns, perfect for textiles, wallpapers, textures, and more. To achieve this, we use a special parameter in Midjourney known as the tile parameter. The tile parameter prompts Midjourney to generate images that can be used as repeating tiles. These tiles, when placed side by side, create a seamless pattern. This is particularly useful when designing fabrics, wallpapers, and textures that require continuity. The tile parameter is compatible with model versions 1, 2, 3, and 5 of Midjourney. Please note, however, that when you use the tile parameter, it generates a single tile. To see this tile repeat and form a pattern, you can use a pattern making tool like the Seamless Pattern Checker. Let me show you a few more examples. Using Midjourney model test, if you type in the prompt Enchanted Ocean Floor, test tile, Midjourney will create a tile with an enchanted ocean floor motif. Similarly, if you type a realistic 4K ocean floor rendered with Unreal Engine Ray Tracing, showcasing the sea life and unique features of the ocean bed, tile. Midjourney will generate a tile with an ocean floor pattern. With Midjourney Model 5, if you type scribble of moss on rocks, V5 tile, it will create a motif image and a tiled repeat of moss on rock scribble. Similarly, the prompt underwater koi, V5 tile, will generate a tile with an underwater koi pattern. To use the tile parameter, all you need to do is add it to the end of your prompt. Now let's head over to Midjourney for some practice. All right. We're back in mid-journey and ready to practice tiling. So just as stated in the lecture, creating prompts for tiles is just as easy as creating any other prompt. We're gonna start with the image prompt and then we will add the description for our tile. So in this case, we're looking for a abstract monochrome geometric shape tile. So here I've added abstract monochrome geometric shapes and then at the end of my prompt I'm adding dash dash tile. So I'm going to go ahead and add that prompt and just as in the other cases we can still add any additional descriptions that we may want to add in order to generate the artistic style that we are looking for. So we can still add a visual description of the actual image that we're looking for. And as you can see with the image that has already been created, it has created an amazing uh, tile for all of our images. So I'm going to go ahead and upscale all of them. And if you are a graphic designer and you're just looking for backgrounds or just general patterns that you would like to have, um, this is perfect. So this is the perfect tool to use to create quick patterns and just really with a very basic description, a very basic prompt. So next, we're going to go ahead and try minimalistic art faces. So let's go ahead and add minimalistic art faces to our prompt. And we'll go ahead and keep it basic here. And we'll say dash dash tile. And again, these are mostly going to be generated for people that are interested in graphic design or just creating backgrounds for their projects. 
And here we can do pop art inspired comic bubbles. So we'll just do dash dash tile. We can do a retro 80s neon grid. So we can come here and let's go ahead and add in the realistic 4K. And we'll do retro 80s neon grid for this one, just as a demonstration for the ability to still do whatever your to still add and engineer your prompt to your specific taste. We'll do this twice. Um, and again, this time we'll do it to illustrate the differences between the versions. So we'll do one from version five and then we'll do another from version four. And I'll just take that five to a four. And okay, and actually, um, with version four, um, we do need to add a test in front of the tile. So, here we've gotten an error on version four trying to add the tile, but we need to before we add tile, we need to do dash dash test and then, um, let's try that one more time. So we need to do dash dash test and then version five. And we'll change the five to a four. There we go. All right, so now we'll be able to test that. And as you can see, we've already been provided with the, oh wow. So here I did the retro 80s neon grid and I added the Unreal Engine uh, ray tracing but also there was this extra portion on the back of it prompt that described a little bit about what should be included. This is kind of interesting because it did provide us with some very cool images. So let's go ahead and upscale these. So now we have our patterns and we have our um, neon grid. Here is what's being generated from the test on the neon grid for uh, version five. And this is what's being generated for version four. Again, this is the test tile for version four. And this just allows us to compare the two so they're we're both given the same prompt and this one is version four at 65 percent and as you can see it is slowly creating this uh, neon grid and it's also showcasing the sea life and unique features of the ocean bed so let's go ahead looks like this other one is done so this is what came of version five tile with that exact same prompt and in the test version. And this is what is coming along. Of, this is what came of the test tile for four. So these two test images or tiles are pretty similar. And if we come to version five without the test, you can really see um, the difference. And these images came out looking pretty cool. Um, so I'm excited to see what those look like. All right, so these are all images that we might use if you are a graphic designer. And I'm gonna go ahead and start saving these images. And so what you'll need to do is save your image for the tile onto your computer. And then as soon as we get a few different 
tiles we'll go over into the next tool that will allow us to generate a full pattern out of this single um, tile and so here we have more images for um, graphic design and really just um, if you were interested in creating a pattern and I'll go ahead and save all of them and this one looks pretty neat and so does this one all right awesome all right so next we're going to go ahead and look at some other prompts that we could generate this is the one for the minimalist face and here is the way that it turned out and again keep in mind that these are just going to be examples of the single tile we still have to go into a separate program to turn it into a full pattern but nonetheless uh, we will check them out and they look pretty cool I was interested in seeing how this one was going to turn out and it turned out pretty nice so I love it definitely looks like I can definitely see the pop art um, inspiration in them all right and here's the last one and again these were supposed to be um, comic bubbles and they turned out pretty cool so next we will look at some ideas for um, if you were doing a fashion design um, or if you're a fashion designer and you wanted to create some patterns for whatever your specific um, project was. And again here, I'm going to go ahead and copy this prompt so that we don't have to keep typing it. And I'll paste it and we are done with going back to the four, uh, version four. So I've, I've removed the test. You only have to use the test if you are using other versions, any other versions that are not version five. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this retro grid with uh, vibrant tropical foliage. And I will also replace this extra portion that shows it talks about um, showing the unique features. Now we have just the part that we need. Go ahead and let's actually attach some quality to add a chaos level of 50 so we can get some variety. And then let's also add the style of 750. All right. And Go ahead and submit and we'll also be looking at some abstract expressionist splashes for the fashion category so I've kind of separated these prompts into categories just to really show what we can do with the prompting and so let's go ahead and replace the vibrant foliage with the abstract expressionist We'll go ahead and submit that and we'll go on to the next by simply copying and pasting it into this new image prompt and then we're going to look at eternal feathers and pastel colors so let's go ahead and replace the old description with the new one. And this is pretty much the process of just generating and coming up with ideas for designs, backgrounds, templates, whatever the case may be. And one thing again that I will remind you of is that this is an actual process. So anytime that you see 
or hear about people saying that um, generating images with uh, AI is just as simple as typing in a few words and um, having these images created, that is not at all correct. It's just not. Um, this is a process that you go through. It's not even, even given the demo is a process. So if I were to, for example, create a demonstration and immediately I got the exact thing that I was looking for, that in itself would be fictitious. It would be setting up all of the viewers for, um, it would be basically setting you up for failure um, and leading you to believe that this is one thing when it's actually, it's a process. And I do my best to make sure that I am accurately portraying the applications that I teach because I do often see people doing demonstrations and it will really look like it's going easy. But if you you just have to know that a lot of stuff has been edited. Um, and so let's go ahead and move over into the interior designers section. And so here we'll start with a whimsical space and stars pattern. And again, all I'm doing is replacing the visual description of one image with the next. And I will continue to do this until I'm out of the interior design section. And then we'll go through and we will upscale some images and we'll take them over into the pattern checker, which is actually also a pattern creator. All right, so I've added some wood grain and just with my experience on doing game design or even experience with doing web design, there's often times when you need to have textures and backgrounds that are seamless and that do not get stretched out or skewed when you try to view a specific project at a different size. So all of these are great use case scenarios for having this and using this pattern generator. And here, let's come in and copy this one and also we'll do the uh, mid-century modern shapes next and And there's a few more that we could do, and I'm gonna go over into, I'll do two from the web designer section, and then I'll do two or three from the game area, game design area. All right, so let's go ahead and copy. paste and then for web developers this is coming from the web actually developers um, category and here whoops. let's try that again so here we're looking at cybernetic pixel art and we're going to go with uh, minimalist 
binary code as well from the web developer category. And again, these um, topics or these uh, tile ideas have been generated just straight from ChatGPT. So I just have a list of different categories and also um, just areas that could be interesting. All right, so, or ideas, illustrations that could be interesting. All right, so I'll go ahead and replace this one. And next, we will head over into the game development category. And we'll start with the alien planet surface. And so if you are creating, again, um, objects and games or you're creating objects and games that need textures, a lot of textures. Um, a lot of the times you can change the entire look of a game just with a texture um, and actually a texture and a tile. So in both cases, again, um, this is the perfect tool and I hope to be able to demonstrate that with just the vast, um, with just the large amount of examples that I'm providing you with right now. Um, let's do magic mystical stones. That should be cool. And again, Pay attention to the way that I have already pre-engineered and pre-constructed this prompt. So basically all I have to do is copy and paste these different topics into the template, if you'll call it, if you would like to call it that, that I've already created. All right, so I, at this point, I have added all of the examples and we'll just go back to the top. So here, this comes from the fashion category um, and it's basically the uh, tropical foliage. And this looks pretty interesting. I could see that being a nice, beautiful, beautifully colored uh, pattern on something. Um, but we'll just grab all of them. And again, um, this is abstract expressionist splashes. Okay. So I'm not really seeing the splash portion. Um, but let's go ahead and grab these and go to the next. This one was the eternal feathers. And again, all of these came from the fashion category. I think we only need, um, we'll do uh, these last three. And then we had the Japanese wave. And this came from the fashion category as well. And I would say that this does a great job at representing the Japanese wave. So let's go with number three for that one. And here is the Victorian lace motif. Um, and I actually like all of them. I'm gonna go with one, two, and three though to upscale. And next we're brought into the interior design. And we're starting with the Whimsical Space and Stars tile. I really love number two. And I think that's the, that's really feeling like the only one that I like from this 
these options. So that's the only one I'll use. However, if you find yourself in a situation where you have generated some previews and you only like one, again, always re-roll. Um, you can also ask for different versions or variations of that same image. Then as we scroll down, we can look at the uh, rustic wood grain and these balls are actually included in images to kind of display and demonstrate how this material will look when the light bounces off of it. So it's very interesting that it was included and it may just be included this way because it, it, it has the Unreal Engine ray tracing. Um, but I definitely find it to be interesting that it was generated like this. Um, I'm just going to re-roll this one because I don't necessarily care for the balls being in the images. So the next comes from the Children Fairy Tale Castle. And this is now also in the interior designer section. I think they would all make some pretty cool patterns. I'd like to see how they would all kind of come together. So I chose all of those. And then here we're looking at the mid-century modern shape renders. And this also comes from the interior design section. Well, let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Um, just from what I see, it. I'm not necessarily sure if it was correctly interpreted, but we'll go ahead and choose that. And now we are into the web developers section. And this is looking pretty cool already. Um, I really want to see what this is going to look like as a pattern. So let's go ahead and upscale all of these. So this was the cybernetic pixel art. Um, probably because I, I told it to do the uh, realistic 4K and the Unreal Engine ray tracing. Um, I feel like it would have come out a lot different if I didn't add that. But let's see what else comes. So um, in addition to that, the cybernetic pixel art, the web developer category also has the minimalist binary code. And I think that probably number one is the most accurate expected representation. So I went ahead and chose that. Um, let's scroll down. And still in the web developers category, we have the stylized um, circuitry. And again, I love this portion, even though it would not have come to mind um, with stylized circuitry. So I'm going to go with uh, one, two, and three. With two and three being what I expected to see. And as we go through, the next set of examples is the alien planet which was for the game developers section. So we are now in the game dev section. And just because of the spheres again, I'm gonna go with uh, two and three. Let's go ahead and throw in four as well. And then next, still in the game dev, uh, actually game, designers um, section. We're looking at the dystopian cityscape. Again, very excited to see what these are going to look like. So just again, or as a reminder, we've only gone halfway with this. So we've generated one tile and now we have to go into the next application. This is an online application that will allow us to upload these images to see what they'll look like as a full pattern. So as we come down, now we're to the mystical stones, uh, mystical rune stones. And 
they're looking awesome especially this one so I'm going to choose all of these actually and we're supposed to have some stylized lava here it is all right so this is the stylized lava and let's go ahead and grab it all right and now we can come through and we can check all of the upscaled images which start here okay so this was for the foliage and i'll go ahead and make this larger so we can see it and this is also for the foliage it looks great and when you blow them up they look um, pretty cool this is going to be probably my uh, the one that I'm most excited to see all right and this one just is looking it was supposed to be splashes but this is how it came out so I'm just going to keep going I'm going to pass over the marbles um, this one might be cool um, looks pretty nice I like the uh, reflection that is provided there and again I'm going to pass over this one I will go with these flower uh, feathers be interesting to see how they turn out as a pattern and I would also like to see the Japanese wave so this is the Victorian lace motif I think it's going to turn out looking pretty cool also, again, a very nice uh, background behind the Victorian lace. And even here, the idea that um, it could be pretty much rendered in whatever material that you want it to be rendered in, um, again, is amazing. So just think about when you create your prompts there, if you if you are open to having any material, then go ahead and let Midjourney create or use its creativity, if you will, to um, provide you with some inspiration on the material. And here, I think uh, I'd like to see two, three, and four. Um, so this, again, is giving us what it would look like to have just a rustic or, yeah, rustic wood grain texture. And so I wanted to see what this looked like a little closer up. And again, I don't exactly know if it was correctly interpreted and what I'm looking at. I cannot exactly tell what I'm looking at. So um, we'll see how this turns out. Um, this was for the interior design. So um, maybe not all categories apply, but we'll see. So we will continue to go through. And this is for the game design. And it's already looking really cool. And I think this is the also the dystopian. Oh no, this is the cybernetic pixel art. All right, so here we are starting to get into the web developers area. I think that's going to turn out to be pretty cool. But again. Uh, we'll know when we get into our new uh, application or the next application. All right, so here we are looking at images for um, the alien planet surface. And they all look like they can be pretty cool. And... 
This one belongs to the dystopian cityscape. So it should be pretty interesting to see what this looks like tiled. So what we'll be expecting to see is basically these images repeating seamlessly. And what that should do is provide us with an image that can be scaled up as uh, large or scaled down as small as needed. All right, and we are reaching the end of our images here. We're already to the lava. Very good representation of the lava. And we have one more after the lava, which is the wood. All right, and we'll go with both of them. Great. Oh. All right, so we have gathered all of our images and now I'm going to take you into the next application to turn these images into patterns, seamless patterns created by these tiles that Midjourney has provided us with. All right, let's go. All right, at this point we are in an application called Image Online dot com and basically this is an application that will allow us to upload our images simply by selecting the image and then um, adding it to the form here and then we can select the format so how many tiles and basically I guess what shape you can have it in a square or a rectangle um, it just really depending on the dimensions that you add in so here let's go ahead and do you can go from between 1 by 1 to 10 by 10 and I'm just going to choose 10 by 10 on all of them it's going to ask if you need to shift anything and we're not getting that detailed with our patterns of course um, if you're doing again game design you may need to shift and if you are doing just in any image mapping or um, any type of mapping that you might do you might need to shift but here um, we're not going that deep but this tool will allow you to you can also attach the size of the original image or um, you can mark off the seams and we don't want to do either of those so I'll leave it at no and then down here it's going to ask what type of format you want it to be in. I'm leaving it, leaving it at standard. And it also allows you to choose the quality between 1 and 100. It's automatically set at 92. So I'm going to choose to leave it there. Next, I'll click OK. And once you click OK, then you need to give it a moment. And here you'll be brought to this screen. And it gives you the option to open the processed image or you can download the image. And I'm just going to go ahead and open it because I just want to see what it looks like. And here's our first, very first image. And it kind of looked like eggs, but um, it does look like a pretty seamless pattern. We can, it's, it goes from one to the next and here again with these circles this is kind of what to expect which is why I was kind of staying away from those uh, circles but it's brought us it's created a an expected pattern so let's now go back and here we'll be brought back to this page and we'll just go back again and this time we'll select a new image. I'm just going to uh, choose the next. We'll have to re-add our dimensions, just 10 by 10. Everything else stayed the same. 
And so let's go ahead and click OK. Again, remember that once you click OK, just give it a moment because it will be generating your image. And then we'll go ahead and click open. And this is the abstract expressionist uh, splashes that were created. Again, this is 10 by 10. And um, when we looked up close, they were really looking like uh, thick uh, paint that had been applied to a surface. And when you repeat that tile, over and over and over again, this is the pattern that it creates. And uh, because of the fact that it was so detailed, it's gonna have some, it's gonna take some time to generate this one. So I'm probably gonna need to bring that 10 by 10 down just for uh, demonstration purposes. But I think at this point, we can pretty much see what the pattern would look like and if this is something that you need for a project, then this is a great tool to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back. And again, we'll have to click back. And let's choose the next image. And I'm gonna slip over that, the next painting image and go right to, let's do five by five this time. And I'll go ahead and click okay. It should also process a lot quicker and which it did. So let's go ahead and go to open. And this is the alien surface and it looks pretty cool. So again, a nice pattern was created with our image and um, we have a nice alien surface. So all of this was done with just one tile that was uh, created to be repeated. So let's go ahead and go to our next example. We'll just click go back and I'm going to choose our next. And again, we'll go with the five by five just because it processes much faster. This is another pattern from the alien surface and again comes out looking pretty nice and this time I'm going to skip through the surfaces let's go and check out the castle let's see what they look like and go ahead and click OK and I believe the castle came from the interior design section. Okay, that's pretty cool. It almost looks like it could serve as wallpaper. Um, so this would be a pretty cool um, background to add. And we really can't, it's, again, it's seamless. Um, so we're not able to directly see where one portion starts and the next stops. And I think now we'll go into some of the interior design prompts because they were um, really different. So actually next is another castle. So let's see if this castle is going to look seamless. All right, and let's go ahead and open it up nice so again um, this comes out looking pretty neat awesome pattern all right and the next that we'll look at will be the I think this is the pixeled art And let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. Okay, looks pretty cool. Um, so one thing that I will say is that, um, again, if you are doing any type of image mapping and you have to, or if you 
do game design with, for example, Unreal Engine, and you create a pattern or an image that needs to be on a pattern to um, be mapped to an object within a 3D space, um, this will work pretty good. So these seamless tiles work awesome for that. And let's go ahead and do five by five again. And wow, I'm going to zoom in on this so we can try to see what this looks like. That is pretty cool. Like there is no, just the way that this was uh, formatted, it's formatted in a way that doesn't show any, it, it's, it's, a, it's an entire room, but it doesn't show any um, seams. There are no, you cannot see the seams between here and here. And it just looks like it goes into the next room. So that is pretty awesome. As a matter of fact, that is really cool. Wow. All right. So let's go ahead and look at the next example. And maybe this is what the interior design images are gonna come out looking like. Again, I'm kind of excited to see, I think I'm gonna skip over that one. Kind of excited to see what they're gonna come out, how they're gonna come out because um, just this single towel did not look like it was going to be recognizable. All right, here, uh, this is the dystopian cityscape, and if we zoom in, yes, we can tell it's a dystopian cityscape. And then zooming out, again, there does not appear to be any, any seams in this tile. That is awesome. This would make an awesome background for whatever it is that your project might be. All right, that was a dystopian cityscape. I think this is called the dystopian cityscape. Oh, they both were um, the two different versions of the dystopian cityscape. All right, so let's check this one out. And again, these are the things that you'll be wanting to look at if you create your own pattern. So we are actually zooming in and checking to see if we're able to see any seams, either zoomed in or out. And here, this appears to be a seam. Um, well, you can tell where this row um, stops and the next one starts, but let's, zoom in closer and see now that we have seen um, the image of the rooms this one uh, definitely looks like you can tell that there appears to be a seam here but um, So right in here, it looks like it's might have been a seam, but and if we need to, we can always ask it to add. Um, so we can always change to where it says mark seams or edges, and this will allow us to basically check to see if a texture is um, seamless. 
So just keep that in mind and we'll go on to the next. Again, I'll do five by five. And let's check out this next. And we'll need to scroll out. And again, there doesn't directly appear to be a see. It could just be the way that it was um, designed to look like a floor, but we can definitely tell where this row stops and this next row starts. That doesn't at all take away from how awesome it looks though. So um, it all depends on the use case and what you're, what you're using it for. And I may take some time to make a couple of videos on using mid journey to create textures and then mapping them onto 3d objects. Um, but again, it really just depends on your object, your goal and what it is that you're creating. So let's go ahead and go over to the next example, which here is the feathers. So let's add in the feathers. and open them up. And they're looking pretty nice. They, they blend in well together when it comes to where one row starts and the other stops. Um, just this feathered at the bottom of this row blends in really good. Um, so let's zoom in and yes, this looks really good. So we cannot tell where exactly where one row stops and the next starts, which is what it's basically supposed to look like. So that came out pretty good. So let's go on and check out our next. And this is this is pretty much the pattern that you would uh, use if you were creating um, a project or working on a project. And you probably wouldn't need to do it as many times, but um, this really gives us the ability to look at what Mid Journey does well. And some of these areas we've seen um, kind of demonstrate what it doesn't do so well. This, however, I think looks really cool and this is the Victorian lace motif so I, I think this one came out really good let's go ahead and keep moving so we'll go over to I think we'll choose just one other lace motif, but for the sake of time, um, we won't do all of them. All right, and let's open it up. Nice. This actually came out looking really cool. And just when we zoom in, um, it looks a lot different than I had expected it to look. So this is pretty cool. Um, and again, thinking about use cases, if you've ever uh, designed a website or um, worked on anything that required a texture, a background, or any image that was going to be resized, then you know that a lot of the times when you resize images, they take on a, a new appearance. So it can look, if you don't use an upscaler, then it can look really blurry and it may not at all look like the original texture that you had intended. And so by using this process, you're able to create a 
background that you can make as large as you want or as large as you need or even as small as you need. So here again, this was one of the ones that I was really concerned about during the uh, creation just because it, it really seemed as though the images were, I could not tell what was happening and I still really can't tell like there's a plant up here and maybe this is like, I have no idea what's going on in this scene, but, um, I cannot tell where one starts and the next stops. So I would be tempted to think that it was here, but with the addition of whatever this is, um, it now um, gives the illusion that that may not be where one starts and one stops. So again, it looks great to me. And it really all depends on your use case, what it's being used for. All right. And so that was that one. And we'll do one other one from the, try to find one that looks like it didn't work. And just because all of the interior ones were questionable, um, uh, I'm only going to choose two, but this is another one that was questionable. So I really want to see how it came out. And again, well, I think we'll have to zoom in to see what is happening. Again, I, I cannot tell what's going on here. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is uh, a bad thing because there's a lot of um, cases where you would have, where we would look at it from this angle and it could look like, um, there was an issue, but then when put in proper perspective, um, it could look pretty good. So just because as this flat image, um, does not, may not look great, that does not mean that it is um, not right. However, um, I don't know if this is, again, depends on the, um, the use case and the intentions. All right, and so those were the interior. And now let's take a look at some of the rustic or actually some of the uh, mystic mystical rune stones and i'll just go with this one so we'll do five by five we'll just choose one uh, from this category wow these mystical rune stones came out looking really good so both large and up close, they look awesome. I would say that um, they have pro possibly the uh, come out looking the best. So great. And now let's take a look at um, some of the images that were created with the um, neon tiles or the neon grid. I'll do five by five again. This is the neon grid on the ocean floor. One of the first images that were created. And this is it at the zoomed out version and then if we zoom in still cannot see um, where one stops 
and the next one starts. There's no there's no clear scene. It just looks uh, pretty cool. So this is a great. Um, this is looking like a great background. Awesome. And I'll go ahead and zoom back out. Let's take a look at the next one. And I'll keep it at five by five again. Five by five for all of them. Wow. This one looks pretty cool. This is the zoomed out. And then when you zoom in, again, we cannot see any scenes. Looks great. And look at one more, and then we'll look at the uh, wood. So let's go ahead and open this one. This is another neon grid on the ocean floor. I'm gonna go ahead and start zooming in. Again, I don't see anywhere where it would be um, showing any seams. So this looks pretty cool. This one came out looking pretty good. And let's go ahead and move on to the wood. And this one, I think, should probably I have the uh, highest expectation for because um, it's just a simple wood grain. And the lighting in this case is making it look like it's rounded. However, for the most part, when you use patterns like this or tiles, um, you could even, um, as I'm thinking about this, you could even uh, create patterns or tiles of characters, and then you could use them as uh, sprites. But here, uh, just the lighting, I think, is kind of throwing off this wood. For the most part, when you use these textures, you won't be seeing the texture from this perspective. You'll probably be seeing it a lot uh, closer, and there could even be situations where you're seeing it in motion. Um, but we just want to make sure that... Um, so if it was like a, a 2D side scrolling game um, a lot of the times you'll have tiles that are used in um, that space and you're not just going to see it in from this perspective but you do want to make sure that um, what you're looking at is going to work again for your scenario and your project all of these things kind of come into play so here I was excited to see how this one would turn out it turned out to be pretty cool and um, just this process is um, so much uh, faster than um, trying to create it and trying to do this on your own. Again, since it's just one tile, it, it's very easy to create a tile and then um, shift it and turn it into a repeated tile that works as a pattern. But um, just the detail, the level of detail that we were able to get 
um, just from using these prompts is amazing. So let's take a look at this fashion print. So this comes from the fashion section and I, I was pretty excited to see what this pattern would look like just because of the bright colors and again it looks amazing. So this is the full pattern and then when you zoom in this is the uh, pattern that is created up close. And then as we go by This is what is seen. Nice. Very nice. All right, awesome. And go back I'll check to see if there's any more I think that we've seen um, pretty much the majority of what we created there were some that we created earlier on let's take a look at this one this is the planetary the whims whimsical stars which I thought would be pretty cool um, just to see both up close and as we zoomed out. So this one looks pretty awesome. and not able to see it, any seams, and it looks pretty good. Nice. And here it is, um, zoomed completely out. All right. We'll go over to the next. And I think the last one that will will be a we'll go ahead and do one from the um, pop art. So this is one of the comic bubbles. And I think this gives us the ability to see kind of um, just some different, some ways that the different illustrations are displayed. And so again, not seeing any seams in this pattern And as we scroll through, again, this just really just looks like um, one large image that is that has been um, that has a pattern on it. And that's the the goal most of the time is the large image that just has repeated images on it. Let me go ahead and scroll back out. All right, and I believe that we've seen examples, of most of the examples, and oh, um, I did want to do one of these black and whites just for a variety as well. So I'm going to choose this one. Still do five by five. Nice. All 
And then as we're scrolling through, there's not, we should not see any images or any of these shapes that are cut off abruptly um, because that would be just that would indicate that we were looking at a seam. But here again, this looks really good. When you zoom out and when you zoom in. All right, so that is the demonstration for the patterns and tiles. And now we will head back over to the lecture to see what's next. Welcome back. We are going to create this image from what we got from Mid Journey. And so while we were in mid journey, we were able to grab a background for these birthday uh, backgrounds. And all we did was we put an elegant birthday card background and here's what came up. So we're just going to upscale these images and we'll upscale a few just so that we're able to kind of get a feel for how this is going to work. And another thing is that while you are in actual Canva, it's going to have a different aspect ratio. And I actually didn't have any problems with the aspect ratio when I created the any of the demos, but if you need to and if you feel the need then go ahead and add an aspect ratio to your prompt that is taller than it is wide and you'll be in good shape when you go over to um, canva all right so now that we have upscaled our images we're just gonna enlarge them right click on them and then save them to the computer once you have saved your images to the computer then we're the next step is to go over to Canva and we will create our birthday card. So here we are in Canva. And if you are on the home screen, you'll click on create design. And if you type in birthday card, it will bring you up a list. And I'm just going to choose this birthday card. And again, it seems to generate a different aspect ratio each and every time. So I'm actually going to go ahead and open up the last one that I did. So we'll be able to start with kind of this same uh, shape. All right. So I'll just remove this background. I'll just remove everything here. And you'll start with a fresh um blank slate and the first thing that you're going to want to do is think about the images that you selected and kind of how what kind of text would look good on top of those images so i chose an elegant background and so i'm going to be looking for elegant text as well so some of the so this text looks good a lot of this text looks nice i really like this a lot of it looks good so let's jump over to the uploads and again you'll just click on upload files and you will upload the images that you've saved from mid journey i'm going to start with this image and so you'll just drag it over and drop it when it takes up the whole image. And just while I was creating the demo for this project, um, I did find that you can actually overlay images as well. And you can do that by just dragging and dropping one image on top of the next. Kind of like this. And you want to make sure that it does not take the place of your original image. And then you can click on transparency and just drop this transparency down. 
and it kind of creates this overlaid effect. I really actually enjoy the way that that comes out. So I just want to make sure also that it's taken up the whole screen, which it is. All right. So once you have your background created, the next thing that you can do is we can now go back to our templates. Let's search for the template or the style that you're going to want to create. So here's actually the last one that I created. And then just if I click on the last one that I created, it will automatically bring up the uh, text and you can simply change it to say whatever you needed to say. So I can say happy and then birthday. And this text actually needs to be a lot larger. That looks like a good spot. I'll bring that here and this here and possibly move that over a little bit. I like the way that that is turning out right now. But if I did not like it, I could also go ahead and start with the actual design of, or the actual template. I could choose uh, this template. I'll say replace current page. Um, actually, I prefer, I think I would prefer this template. And so here I like everything except for the background so i'll go ahead and click on the background actually we'll come over to our upload and replace the background with something that is not too much probably going to bring this down a little bit i like that you can move all of this around so even the confetti can be adjusted. So let's go ahead and just drop in something and see what happens. Let's go ahead and drop this end for the background. Wow. It actually would allow you to be as, it will allow you to drop this pattern on any of these shapes, which is pretty cool. Um, but it's looking like it's a lot going on here. So we want to get to a place that just has the background selected and then we can delete it. That's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. So I'm going to get rid of, even though I like, I just like the balloons, I think. Um, I'm going to, you can delete this confetti. And I think I'll also remove this shape here. I don't think I need the, I don't think I need the bow. I'm going to get rid of that. Try to find some place to stick happy birthday that will make sure that it stands out. So with this specific text, um, it looks like you are not able to change the color of it. So I can add filters and effects to it, but not so much as uh, change the color. So just something to keep in mind. And again, it's also something that you'll have to play with to find what works best for your design. And in fact, in this case, it looks like the background is gonna be probably too much. 
So I could easily just remove that background. And now I want to also remove these balloons. We'll stick, see if we can bring happy birthday over here. Okay, the design is getting a little better. Um, so I kind of like it. And I think I'll leave these uh, boxes here because they're working. And um, yeah, so I think we've made a pretty nice design using the background from Mid Journey and then bringing it into Canva and rearranging and choosing text from the template. So now let's go back over to the lecture and let's see what's next. Welcome back. We are actually back over in mid journey. And at this point, we're going to start to look at how we can use mid journey to enhance or even to create a portfolio. So when you're thinking about a portfolio and this could be a creative portfolio, this could be a portfolio for a photographer, um, for a graphic designer, for a web design. There are so many different things that we can do in mid journey to enhance your portfolio and your creativity. So for this last portion of the course, I really want to focus on how you can use mid journey to build up your portfolio and to use its features to kind of supercharge your portfolio. So let's start with probably a graphic design portfolio. And probably the first thing that graphic designers do is they start creating logos. One of the things that you could do is you could use Mid Journey to help you generate ideas for branding. So this next prompt that I'm going to use is basically a prompt that will help you to come up with ideas that can expand and um, diversify your portfolio. So this prompt is going to have mid journey to design a logo for a sustainable clothing brand that incorporates natural elements and earthy tones. So just looking at the prompts, the very first thing that should stand out is the descriptive nature of the prompt. So again, we're being a lot less technical with the prompt. We don't even, we really don't have any flags that we're at. Um, we really just stuck to what we're looking for when it comes to the content of the prompt. So here it has created a very, um, some very good ideas when it comes to just the logo design. And it's even given us the logo design on these products. So this gives us an immediate way to see how Mid Journey can incorporate these designs and you can immediately see them on products. So this is an amazing way to use this to build your portfolio. And so I'll just re-roll this a few times and we'll come back after they finish generating. And the next prompt that we're going to look at is the idea of a of creating album covers we will do a album cover for a, a fictional band. Let's go ahead and drop in this next prompt. And this prompt will kind of give you some ideas when it comes to just the different directions that you can go when it comes to the area of design. So we've already looked at this logo and they look great. Um, Mid Journey then provided us with some additional logos and they're still looking pretty good. And this last uh, set, however, I really like the presentation of number two 
and also number three. So I'm going to upscale both of them. And keep in mind that we're using these images to specifically enhance our portfolio. And now it has created the album covers for our fictional band. And these are the covers. They do have a retro aesthetic which is great. So I actually love each and every one of them again. Um, and you can very easily take these into a Photoshop or GIMP and adjust the names if you find that that is necessary. And again, I'm going to immediately re-roll these images so that they will, um, we can have some variety to choose from when we create our portfolio and these images have been upscaled they are looking great here comes our next series of album covers and you can use these in any ways that you need to when it comes to your portfolio again um, this can be used as a background and then you can add content on top of it um, there's all sorts of things that you can do with it. You can um, use it for just inspirational purposes. You can look at the image and then reconstruct the entire thing if that's what you're into. But in all cases, this is going to be useful when it comes to building up your portfolio. And so another thing that you might do is just say album cover of a frictional band with a retro aesthetic. And that will keep us from producing multiples. And so while, while that is generating, the next prompt that we're going to look at is a prompt that will allow you to create poster designs. So let's go ahead and add this prompt in. So these are going to be poster designs for a music festival. And we've specifically asked for eye-catching designs that are featuring a dynamic layout and bright colors. So we will see what it produces. And again, we can always add the chaos parameter. And this is going to really just allow us to generate more of a variety when it comes to the output. So I'm going to set the chaos level to 50. And let's go ahead and also set the style to 750 and the quality to two. So these posters are looking amazing. And I love number three. Um, it looks pretty cool. Uh, I love the bright colors in all of these uh, posters. So I think, again, regardless to how you use these in your portfolio, they will make a beautiful addition. And these are looking really nice for backgrounds to, to album covers. So I think they'll work great. Here is a, the prompt for the music festival. But this time, again, we've used the chaos level at 50. And so here, we're provided with the opportunity to, again, bring this into an external software or an external application that will allow us to overlay text on top of the backgrounds. So great. All of it looks awesome. I love this one. So I'm actually going to upscale number two. And so the next prompt is going to be a book cover for a mystery novel. And these prompts were generated by chat GPT and again working with mid journey five we're going to want to be very specific with our description 
as opposed to technical. And you can be technical also with your description, but as far as technical descriptions, the technical aspects go, just remember that it can be pushed too far um, with Mid Journey 5. The developers have actually said that getting too technical can actually hinder the output. So let's make sure that you keep that in mind as well. And so this came out looking pretty good, but I'm also going to redo this prompt and I'm going to add the chaos level at 50. I'm just going to go ahead and copy the prompt for the parameters. All right, there we go. And so while we wait on that one, we'll do a brand identity for a fictional barbecue stand instead of a cafe. All right, so we'll go ahead and update. All right, so we have the barbecue identity, brand identity being created. And a couple of things that I want you to take note of while we are creating these product design is the terminology that Midjourney is interpreting. So by saying a brand identity, we are getting images of everything that would come with this brand. So that is very important because if you are creating a portfolio, you need to know what types of imagery needs to be included. And so by simply including the terms of uh, brand identity, now we're able to produce images that include logos on all types of packaging. So if you were to present ideas to customers, you have a better idea of what kind of presentation you should bring to the table. And so, again, you could use these images for your own logo. So you could, uh, again, it would take you some time, but you could also uh, just remove if you needed to adjust these these logos then you could and you could replace them on the packaging just to demonstrate your package design but for the most part i love the way that midjourney has provided you with an upfront uh, brand identity and illustrated the use of the logos on a variety of packaging. All right, so let's go on to our next prompt. And so the next prompt is to design a website. And let's go ahead and ask Midjourney for a luxury So 
the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to to have mid journey to design a luxury website for uh, gold watches and I'm also going to copy this and repost it with the chaos set to 50 and when it comes to the websites I love the ability to showcase the a variety of layouts and a couple of different things that we can do when it comes to the next steps after we create these um, mock-ups we can then take them into other uh, applications again if you think about uh, Figma um, or uh, we're actually going to look at a website that is called uh, Wizard and it's going to allow us to upload these images and it will then turn these images into websites or it will turn them into prototypes. Let's go ahead and generate some luxury images and then let's also, I think I would like to bring it, have it to design a website for luxury cars. All right. So here, uh, you need to make sure that you um, take note of, again, the, the description. In this case, we're being less descriptive, but we have used the word luxury so that we already know um, the theme or the style of this output. All right, so while it generates the websites, web pages, we're gonna go ahead and go to our next prompt. But before we do, I'm going to send this over to uh, version four. All right, and let's go ahead and look at our next prompt, which is a website layout um, actually is a set of packaging designs for an eco-friendly product. So again, just looking at the differences with the outputs, you'll notice that the outputs from version four, again, are much more, um, I would say artistic than the ones that are from version five. Version five is more so concerned with the um, photographic aesthetic and it does it well. Um, but when you think about version four, even the uh, watches that they have, they seem to have more style and a, more of an artistic flair. So I choose to use version four for a lot of the projects that I do. So I love uh, number one. I'm going to go with number one and four here. And here is our packaging design for the line of eco-friendly cleaning products. Um, and again, they are looking awesome. And the next one is a vintage style travel poster advertising a city or a country of your choice. So let's do a very generic 
prompt here. And let's also set the chaos level to 50. And again, I just, I really love the designs from version four. All right, so we are nice, nice, nice. So as they come, I am also saving them. And you'll need to save yours to your computer as well. So go ahead and download it. That way you'll be ready to upload it when we come into the next uh, application. All right, so we can see that our web pages came out pretty good and here is the um <laughs> the travel poster and what you'll notice is that also this lady has three legs and remember that that is one of the struggles is um adding extra limbs at times so these look pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and save this image. And I'll scroll down and I'll also save this one. And when it comes to the poster designs, I would like to see maybe something more realistic so let's go ahead and add that we'll we'll remove the uh we'll probably just need to take travel poster and we can keep chaos and the level at 50. And again, here, I'm just going through and saving these because they will need to go into our next application. All right. And we've already done the uh, greeting cards. So once these last few images are generated, We'll be able to take these into the next application and I'll show you how you can use these to very quickly turn these into prototypes. All right, and here, again, it will allow your portfolio to have a variety of aesthetics. So for the most part, we have created a lot of photorealistic images. And I feel like uh, these images will add a more of an artistic aesthetic to the portfolio. So these look really good. They almost look like postcards. All right, so next we're gonna go over to Wizard and we are going to turn these images into prototypes. Welcome back. Before we turn our images into prototypes, um, there is a very important step that we need to do, which would be to basically upscale our image so that whatever images we use will come out and they will have very nice high quality um, and for the most part because we don't want to be in a situation where we cannot um, use a part of our website or a part of what Midjourney has created. So we'll go ahead and upscale this image. We'll take it up to four times. And let me try that one more time. But 
A couple of things to keep in mind here is that you want to make sure that you are able to have as much contrast in your elements as possible so that when it is brought into this uh, next application, it's able to turn everything that needs to be turned into buttons. It, buttons are turned into buttons, text is turned into text, and it can really tell the difference between um, all of the elements on your website or web page. And so as I'm going through, that's kind of what I'm looking for. And you just want to make sure that you get everything as high as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and go with this one. I've already downloaded it. So we're ready to go over into the next application. And again, this is an application that is online. So you'll just click on create a new project. And we're going to choose start from scratch. And we'll choose web and here it's going to give us the option to either upload a, a wireframe sketch add a template or scan a screenshot and here we want to scan a screenshot it's going to give you the ability to uh, select images that you have created and when you select them, it will upload the image and you'll click import. And now it is basically scanning this image and it is turning the buttons into actual buttons. And um, these images are images. So this is now a button. Here we had text. This is also a button. If I scroll in, one thing that you can see is that now all of these are, um, we can move these images around. And this is, let me scroll in. Okay, here we lost some of the, actually the text is still there. Um, we would just need to adjust the color and let me scroll out again so this text did not get translated over um, and for the most part i believe that it was uh, it had a lot to do with the upscale and so you want to make sure that you probably go up to four times um, again however this will save you a lot of time when it comes to just moving into the prototyping stage. So we were able to take an image and then this software, this application was able to then break it down into um, different parts that can now be turned into a prototype. All right, so here I've gone ahead and um, selected a different image that kind of had a better resolution and what you can see is that if I zoom in here it will even allow me to change the words here I typed in change the words um, and oops zoom in too much um, so it will allow you to change the words. It has selected the same type of text that was already on the mock-up. So just by allowing Midjourney to create the mock-up, it's pretty much done the majority of the work. And there are some things that you can do that you'll need to do to come in and kind of clean things up. But for the most part, uh, Midjourney does most of the heavy lifting. And then um, this application will do a lot of it as well. And so between the two applications, uh, you should be able to 
very quickly generate some very nice products that can be created and added to a web design portfolio. Again, you will need to adjust uh, some aspects of the uh, web page, but uh, the content is original. You don't have to worry about um, purchasing it or it having watermarks or anything like that. That's great. The layout is pretty much already done for you. And if I come, go ahead and come back to a project that I have already done, um, for example, this one, as you can see, um, it has really broken down this uh, layout so that if I needed to replace this image, I could, but I wouldn't need to because it's already, um, it already came, it was already generated with the rest of the mock-up. But also, so again, I can come in and I can change the text here. I can come in and change the text here. All of these areas are now editable. We can edit these areas. And so just a very quick way to kind of take your product from one stage to the next. And again, this works a lot like Figma. So if you needed to turn this into a working prototype, then you still have the ability to do that just by dragging and connecting to uh, the next page that this button would take you to. So keep this application in mind as well when you think about how the next steps after mid journey and the last thing that I want us to do is to jump back over into Canva and just really look at what you can do and how you can add put all of these things together to create a nice uh, presentation when it comes to your portfolio so Let's jump back over into Canva and here again I've used the same concept that I used with the birthday cards and in this case I added the background image for this uh, portfolio and the background image came from mid journey but the text and um, kind of the layout as well came from Canva. So I chose the template then I replaced these images with the images from Mid Journey. So as you scroll through, we have a nice mock-up about me page. And then as you continue to scroll through, we have these mock-up websites and again, you can just continue to go through and add your work simply by switching out the images that were already added in this layout. And so we can continue to look at and explore ways to approach product design, and we can continue to look at ways to demonstrate your ability to reimagine things that are already out there. So you can do exercises like creating rebranding popular products. And one of the things that I looked at was Coca-Cola. And we will talk about how that can enhance your portfolio as well. And here, this was just a small challenge for creating a luxury dog food brand. And then again, just these luxury products and thinking about the, the typography, thinking about the color palette, and really just thinking about the uh, layout of the products. And here we're creating a um, luxury chocolate and it just 
think about the products that you are able to create with Mid Journey and as you are exploring these areas of design, you're going, want, you're going to want to keep your best images. And so here, I just went into concept art with these futuristic cars. And again, this really demonstrates the ability to generate these images that are that start with an idea and then this is the outcome so this is the concept art and then uh, again the ability to pre create these mock-ups and all of this really hinges upon your ability to engineer your prompts in a way that will allow you to get your desired outcome. So he, even here with the, I did a whole series on NFTs and just created an entire game that has NFT cards. And again, so software like Midjourney allowed me to have the layout and then I could take a layout like this and into the last software that we, the last um, application that we looked at and adjust it in ways that would allow it to be more functional. Um, and the same thing goes here. I could very easily drop this into the wizard application and adjust the font. All of it can be brought together in a very unique way and you can present that in Canva. And so the last thing that I'm going to look at is how you can use Mid Journey to rebrand a current product. All right, so let's head back over to Mid Journey and look at some ideas for rebranding. So here I chose Coca Cola. And I'm just going to scroll up to the top. And these, again, are things that you would include in your portfolio. So here we're creating a new brand identity for Coca-Cola. We're reimagining the, uh, the bottle design as well as um, the presentation. So again, we have some unique shaped bottles. And just really thinking about how we could redo a uh, well-known brand. And again, the same concept here. So we're um, reimagining the iconic Coca-Cola bottle. And we've given it a completely different shape. Here again, we are uh, reimagining the Coca-Cola can. We've altered it a little bit. Same thing goes here. And one thing that I found interesting was that in many of the cases, Mid Journey was unable to produce the actual um, words that were requested. But when it came to uh, more of the, the more popular products, it was able to. Um, like for Coca-Cola, for example, no problem. So I found that to be very interesting. Um, but again, this, if nothing else, is a demonstration of your ability to conceptualize these um, ideas and bring someone else's idea into a visual reality. So as we can continue to scroll through, just really think about how you can use Mid Journey to enhance your portfolio and kind of some of the things that you can play around with when it comes to your prompts generation. Um, thinking about different colors of the cans, thinking about different shapes of the bottle, different patterns that could be used with the bottle. And we're thinking about different colors of the contents in the bottle. 
all of these things again here, um, continuing to think about just the uh, shape and the texture or even the feel of the bottle. All of this is um, an illustration of your ability to use Mid Journey as a tool to enhance, again, your portfolio. And so here we're using basically Chat GPT for these visual descriptions. So the wording can come from Chat GPT. And then if you need to add additional technical aspects, um, again, those can be added to the description that is provided by chat GPT. So again, thinking of ways that we can advertise specific um, aspects of a well-known product. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and stop here. And once again, I wanted to thank you for joining me on this 10 hour mid journey journey. It has been amazing and I hope that you're able to grow and continue to play around with Mid Journey and watch Mid Journey grow. I'll see you next time. Welcome back. In this lesson we'll cover how to use Mid Journey's video feature to create videos of the initial image grid being generated. This can be a useful tool for visualizing how the model is generating images based on your prompts. To create a video of the image grid being generated, you'll need to use the video parameter when running mid-journey. This will output a video file of the image grid being generated, which you can then access and share with others. Now let's talk about how to get a link to the video generated from your image prompt in mid-journey. This can be helpful if you want to share your video with others or download it for later use. Here's how to do it. After your job has finished processing, click the Add Reaction button. It looks like a smiley face with a plus sign on it. From the Reaction menu, select the envelope emoji. This will send a message to the Mid-Journey bot requesting a link to your video. The Mid-Journey bot will then send a link to your video in your direct messages. Simply click the link to view your video in your browser. If you want to download the video, right click or long press on the video and select Save Video As. And that's it. Now you know how to get a link to your video in Mid Journey. In addition to getting video links, there are many other features you can explore in Mid Journey, such as adding animation to your images or creating custom greeting cards. Now let's talk about another way you can add animation to Mid Journey images. By using animation applications like Studio DID, you can bring your mid-journey characters to life. Check out a character from my latest escape game. Now let's head over to mid-journey for a character creation demo and Studio D walkthrough. As the butler of this mansion, I welcome you to this thrilling adventure that will test your wit and courage. Within these virtual walls, you will encounter the challenges and mysteries of a once grand estate, now abandoned and forgotten. I will be your guide offering insights and clues to help you navigate the treacherous terrain of this decaying mansion. But beware, the spirits that dwell within these walls are not easily appeased, and the challenges that await you within these dusty halls may prove to be more than you bargained for. So prepare yourself for an unforgettable experience as you enter the world of the abandoned mansion escape game, and let me be your guide through the mysteries of this forgotten manor. Remember, only the bravest and most cunning can escape the mansion and uncover its secrets. All right, we are back in Mid Journey and we're ready to practice making videos from our images. So whenever you want to create a video, um, the first thing to keep in mind is that Mid Journey will only generate these videos with versions one, two, and three. So when you get ready to think about your ideas and the concept that you'll be creating, keep that in mind and remember the limitations of the first few versions of Mid Journey. So let's go ahead and look at the prompt for creating a video of your 
image in development. And we're still going to start with the imagine prompt and then we're going to add our prompt and this time I'm going with the futuristic cityscape and I'm going to do for a 2D side scroller game and once you have added your prompt the next thing that you need to add is the dash dash and video very easy and um, actually before we can uh, send it off before we can send our prompt we have to specify the version and again it needs to be version 1 through 3 so we'll just do v3 and now ready to go so we'll go ahead and let this process and while we wait on the process we'll go ahead and let's compare this to a video from version one and two so i'm just going to copy this and paste and we'll change the three to a two and then we'll do it one more time and we'll change it to a one All right, and we'll go ahead and send it off. All right, so while these are processing, um, really just keep in mind that this is just one way to create an animation for your images. We'll look at a couple of different ways as um, the rest of this course progresses. So. This is a way to get a video created as your image is being created. They'll both be the two different ways that we look at, which were referred to in the lecture, will both be different approaches, but this is basically going to be a video that's created of your image being created. And you'll get a better understanding of it when we uh, finish, when it when it's finished and we look at it. So this one has finally started and also keep in mind that because it is uh, one of the older versions, we're going to have a little bit different of an aesthetic and when we think about the limitations, keep in mind that those were kind of the limitations of the first few versions, just there. Uh, visual as aesthetic and with versions 4 and 5 however mid journey has made some significant improvements just when it comes to how these images are processed in the final product so this has been completed and first of all you can still upscale just like you would in, on any other images so i'll go ahead and upscale all of them if you need different if you need more versions of these images you can still choose the v1 or the other options and you can also still uh, remix these images as well and this is actually for version 2 so let's go ahead and look at how to get the video of the image that has been processed. So as you can see, these images have not, they're not videos yet. There, are, there is a video for them, but they're just not, they haven't been provided to us yet. So in order to see the video, then we're actually going to need to click on the add reaction emoji that comes up when you kind of hover over this section of the screen. And so I'll go ahead and I want to upscale these as well. All right, so let's go ahead and hover over. This is for version three. And when you click, since I've used this before, it automatically has this emoji, but if you don't see it, you can go ahead and type in envelope and then it'll come up. 
when it comes up, you'll go ahead and click the envelope. And as soon as you click the envelope, you'll notice that over here, the Midjourney bot has sent a message. So now we will click on the Midjourney bot. As you can see, immediately we have our video. So the video actually comes in with the information of the image. And if you would like to watch it, you just click play and you can see your images being developed, which is pretty awesome. And if you would like to save the image, you can either use the image address, or again, you can open it up. And save the message there. So, these are your options for videos and it's pretty straightforward just for the most part the most important thing to remember is basically the um, versions so if you try to add the video perimeter to a version after three you'll get this invalid perimeter error and all that means is you need to enter your prompt again, but instead of having the V5 for version five, you'll need to change that five to a one, two, or a three. All right, so that is how to add processed video of your image. And the next way that we wanna look at to add images or to add animation to your images is going to come from Studio D. And this is an external online application that will allow you to basically create a animation or a talking animation from any characters that you create within Mid Journey. So we are going to look at this application but before we do we're going to need to create a character or we have to have a character before we can go into this process so let's go ahead and let's generate an idea for a character and I'm just gonna go over to chat GPT and I'm gonna ask chat GPT to provide an a visual description of a character provide a visual description of the butler in a haunted mansion all right so I went ahead and got yet another description of a character and so now we have a few different descriptions and we are ready to kind of settle on a character. So I think I'll go ahead and go with this character, the butler, since it's the one that I already demoed. And while we wait, uh, actually it's already coming up, so this will work. A couple of things that you need to keep in mind, however, is that your image and the character needs to be facing the camera. So some of these won't work. And I also would like to have a uh, realistic image. So I'm gonna come back and I'm going to go with this new, more direct and also or previously engineered prompt. So here, I'm gonna ask for a headshot um, of a butler in an abandoned mansion. And this is gonna be used for an escape game. So a couple of things that I've added to this prompt, and just so that we continue to grow in our ability to do the prompt engineering, is I've added professional color grading 
I have said no shadows, no contrast, and I want clean, sharp focus. I'm actually also adding magazine photography just because that is going to give me kind of the, the theme, if you will, for this shot. And I also want to make sure that, again, this headshot needs to be face on and we need to make sure that for this character, we need to make sure that we can see the mouth. So this first generation would actually not work as well. This one might work just because of the angle, but this one with the head down isn't the best. And we're also, by asking for a head shot, then we're also getting a closer view of the butler. So we'll go ahead and we will look at just a few different options for generating this prompt and for engineering this prompt. And we will use a couple of these options in our actual character creation. So here I'm still asking for the headshot. Um, and we still have no, uh, the sharp focus with the magazine photography. And if you take a look at the images that have been generated, you'll notice that they all have this haze kind of over them. And this is the professional color grading. And if I scroll down, you'll notice that even these images also have that professional color grade. You can also get a lot more specific, even when it comes to the type of camera that it is shot with. So again, if you have any background in photography, just by adding the type of camera to your prompt, it will give you an entirely different look. So these are things to think about when you're thinking about how to create this and engineer your prompt for a specific look. So here I'm just going to look for an image of a butler that is looking close, looking directly at the screen. And I also want a close up of the butler. I'm not really a fan of the backgrounds in these images, but they do offer kind of the best and the close up shots. Let's also go ahead and add this exact same prompt, but let's add it in Mid Journey 4 because again, I do also want to continue to bring you back to the differences between the two. And when it comes to version four, you'll notice that sometimes the images are just a lot more artistic. It's the best way that I can put it. And when Mid Journey moved over to version five, it's now imitating photography as much as possible. Um, and that may have been the case, but if we think about the ability and its, its growth from version one to five, then you'll notice that the aesthetic is more realistic than even the uh, photorealistic or hyper-realistic than any of the other versions. So it's kind of something about just the images from version four, which are these four, that for me provide a much more artistic feel. They just feel like they're um, more in character than the ones for version five, and I'm not sure why, but I'm gonna go with this image and also image number one. So now that we have our images, 
The next thing that we need to do is we're going to need to save them and download them to our computer so that we can go over to studio.id and we will then upload those images and the script that we generated for our butler. So let's head over to Studio ID and set up our image. All right, and we are now in Studio ID, our studio.d ID, and here, as you can see, it already offers these characters that come with, even with the free trial. But we want to create our own. You actually need to click on choose a presenter and then go to add. And once you go to add, it'll pop up, your downloads will pop up and you can go ahead and open up the one that you have created. And give it a second. All right, so now here's my butler. And I also have the script. All right, so I have gone to ChatGPT to generate a script. And once you get the script, you can simply type it or paste it in to this section. And I'm gonna go ahead and also hold on to it because if you have to redo it, then you will need to uh, repaste it. So now that we have the script, the next thing to do is to find a voice to test. And we can do that by clicking on the name under voices. And we do want to at least have a male voice. So then we'll go to listen and we'll just try all of them until we find one that kind of matches our character. Here's your tea, sir. Please be careful, it's quite hot. Now, let me tell you a bit about the manor. Ra Here's your tea, sir. Please be careful, it's quite hot. Now, let me tell you a bit of- Here's your tea, sir. Please be careful, it's- Here's your tea, sir. Please be careful. 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 It's quite hot. Here's your tea, sir. Please be careful. It's quite hot. Now let me tell- Here's your tea, sir. Please be careful. Here's your tea, sir. Please be careful, it's quite hot. Here's your tea, sir. Please be careful, it's quite hot. All right, of all of the voices, I liked Christopher's. So I'm gonna go with Christopher's. And the next thing we need to do is simply click on generate video. And when you click on generate video, it will now turn this into your video. And as you can see, um, there are credits that are involved. And as a with the free version, you only get so many credits. And if you go beyond that, well, if you in order to go beyond the credits that you are provided, you'll have to get the paid version. So that's something to keep in mind. And just know that it does actually offer a free version and you can get a couple of videos created with just the free version. As you can see, I've created a few videos, a few different videos, and just based on trial and, er and error, they have worked out best if you have a close-up shot of the image. All right, so let's go ahead and try out our video. Here's your tea, sir. Please be careful, it's quite hot. Now, let me tell you a bit about the manor. Ravenwood Manor has been in the family for generations. 
It's a grand old house with many secrets and hidden passages. The master takes great pride in maintaining the house and all its contents. He's been expecting you for some time now, sir. I do hope you can help solve the mystery that's been plaguing this house. Oh, I'm sorry sir, I didn't mean to alarm you. It's just that strange things have been happening around here lately. The master believes that the house is haunted. Personally, I don't believe in such things, but some of the other staff have reported some very strange occurrences. Footsteps where there should be none, doors opening and closing by themselves. I'm sure it's just their imaginations, sir. I assure you, the manor is perfectly safe. Awesome. So, as you can see, it has taken this image of our character and added an amazing animation to it. And the lips are in sync. The head moves naturally. Um, this is really awesome. And there are no limits to what you can do with these two tools. Personally, I like to use it to make characters for uh, games. And this is just one example. All right, so let's head back over to the lecture and let's talk about some other creative things that we can do with Midjourney. Welcome back. In this portion of the course, we're going to talk about how we can leverage the power of ChatGPT4 and its most recent enhancement plugins to create image prompts for Midjourney. We'll be using a plugin by the name of Photorealistic. This plugin will allow us to input generalized statements into ChatGPT4 and the output will be a descriptive and well-structured prompt that we can use for Midjourney to create an amazing and a stunning image. So let's get started. All right. We are now back into Midjourney and ChatGPT. So ChatGPT has recently had an upgrade and this upgrade is basically only for the ChatGPT4 users and those would be the paid members. So to start with, you must be a paid member to use this upgrade. Now, in order to access the plugins for ChatGPT4, first you're going to want to log into ChatGPT just like we have in the past. And now you'll notice that they have upgraded the interface. And here, if you click on GPT 3.5, you'll be using the same version that is used by the free users. And if you click on GPT 4, now we have the ability to use web browsing and plugins. So before we get started, I'm going to show you how to enable the plugins. So to enable the plugins, the first thing that you're going to need to do is take a look along the far left side of the screen and next to your name, you're going to click on the three dots and then you'll go to settings and here is what will pop up and you'll need to actually click on beta features. And when you click on beta features, you'll have the ability to enable web browsing and plugins. So we're going to want to turn on both options. And once they're on, we'll jump back over to our chat GPT screen. And now that they're on, we can use the plugins. So if you click on chat GPT or GPT-4, now you should have these two options available. We're going to select plugins. The next thing that you're going to need to do is click on the drop down and scroll all the way down until you see plugin store. We'll select plugin store and from here you'll have access to all of the plugins for ChatGPT4 and you'll be able to select based upon the most popular, new, all, or installed if you have any installed. And so I've pretty much gone through and 
taken a look at the majority of these plugins. Of course, new plugins are added every day, but at this point, the most relevant plugin for Midjourney is going to be the photorealistic plugin. And so you'll need to actually go through the list depending on when you uh, watch this course to locate the photorealistic plugin on your own. However, when you do locate the photorealistic plugin, you'll simply click on install and it will be installed to your GPT. Now, we're gonna go ahead and exit out. And I'm going to explain to you pretty much how to use this plugin. And it's very straightforward. And at this point, there really hasn't been a release or um, a walkthrough on how to use the plugin. So now that I have installed the plugin, I'm going to go ahead and um, just go back to our split screen with both Midjourney and GP, chat GPT open. And the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to start to play around with some of the requests that we can make with this plugin. So first we need to know how to phrase our prompts in order to use the plugin. So once you have the plugin installed, you're going to want to make sure that you actually have it enabled and basically turned on. So we need to make sure that there is a check mark next to your photorealistic plugin. And it, if you look here, you'll notice that you can only have three plugins enabled at a time. And so if you have any other plugins enabled, you're going to have to make sure that you um, turn at least one of one of them off so that you can use the photorealistic plugin. So you want to make sure that you have checked the box ne next to photorealistic. And now we're just going to start with a very generic request. In order to use the plugin, you're actually going to have to start with the words, use the photorealistic plugin to create. And then you'll just finish the prompt with whatever it is that you want to create. So it's very important that you basically start your prompt with use the photorealistic plugin, and then you'll complete it with whatever it is that you want to create in Midjourney. So to start, we're going to start by saying use the photorealistic plugin to create a prompt for a futuristic car. And I'll go ahead and add that prompt, and we'll notice that ChatGPT actually goes into the plugin. So when it's green, you can see that it's accessing the plugin. And now you're able to see it actually creating the prompt. And from my experience with this plugin, for the most part, it usually creates at least two prompts. So now we can go ahead and copy this prompt and we'll paste it into Midjourney. Um, we do still, however, have to start with the forward slash and imagine. And now we can go ahead and send off the prompt. Now, while Midjourney is creating our images, let's actually take a look at what the photorealistic plugin has added to our prompt. So just like I said in the introduction to the course, one way to know if you are using a or looking at a intermediate to or, or professional prompt is by looking at the parameters. So anytime you see parameters, you'll know that you are looking at a prompt that has been well crafted and well engineered. Other aspects of this prompt that let us know that it's a good prompt are the camera settings. So the fact that it's telling us um, the high resolution, the high resolution 16K camera, and then it even tells us the angle that it wants the lens to use. It tells us the, the backdrop of a city. So all of this lets us know that this is a very 
good and well-engineered prompt. It has all of the bells and whistles, all of the features that we would be looking for when we talk about a well-engineered prompt. And when you take a look at the output, you can see that Midjourney has created um, the preview, which are four images of a futuristic car, and it's looking pretty good. And now that they have been upgraded or upscaled, we can see what the plugin has created. So these are some pretty nice uh, futuristic cars. And so that was what was created with the first prompt generated by the plug by the plugin. And here would be the second prompt generated by the plugin. So we'll go ahead and um add the second prompt so let's just take a look at the difference between the two the first one says to imagine a sleek futuristic car and then the second one says visualize a futuristic car a marvel of next generation design and engineering as opposed to the embodiment of advanced technology and innovation. So these are both going to be the descriptive um, narratives that are placed on the content, which is the futuristic car. It looks like we have our second set of images that have been generated. And again, these are pretty nice. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and upscale all of them. And after the first sentence, we have a more descriptive sentence for the car. It says the car should be streamlined and elegant with high gloss finish that mirrors the futuristic city around it. The style should echo the high tech aesthetics seen in films like Minority Report or iRobot. So we're giving Mid Journey a context um, and kind of giving Mid Journey something to work with. And the same thing goes here with the second sentence. It's giving a more in depth description of what the car should look like. And it's saying the car should be designed with smooth aerodynamic lines and a glossy metallic finish that reflects the surrounding cityscape. So again, a more in-depth description. Next, we see the style should be reminiscent of the futuristic aesthetic from films like Blade Runner and Tron. So again, we're giving Mid Journey examples of a style that we want our car to mimic. All right, so let's go ahead and check out the upscaled versions, really nice. Again, all eight of these images would be some pretty nice futuristic cars. All right. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to now take this prompt kind of to the next level and we're going to ask ChatGPT to use the futuristic or to use the photorealistic plugin to create a character for a children's story. So we're going to go ahead and you'll see again it has used the plugin and it is now generating a prompt. And again, just like before and in the prior uh, generations, it generally will give you at least two. And so I've already entered the first and I'll come through and grab the second prompt and we'll just plug them both in into mid journey and we'll take another look and hopefully by not only using this exercise, 
This exercise will not only give you experience with how to use this plugin, but also how to see the template or kind of the skeleton, if you will, of a well-crafted prompt. So again, we have the two intro paragraphs, and this one still starts with visualize a character for a children's story. And then the second one says, imagine a whimsical character for a children's story. So here, the second one gives us a little uh, more of a peek into what kind of character we're looking for. So we're talking about the whimsical aspect. We're giving more descriptive words. And then on the second one, it's giving Mid Journey kind of a some freedom, if you will, when it comes to what type of character. And then again, the prompt will provide a more descriptive sentence for what we're looking for. So the next sentence is, is talking about the character should be a mischievous pixie with sparkling wings, twinkling eyes, and a cheeky grin. So here is what has been generated from just that portion of the prompt. And that, as opposed to the character should be a friendly forest creature with soft fur, big eyes, and a playful smile. So again, this is the descriptive sentence that's been generated after our introduction. And then it goes on to say, to talk about the style. And here we're pulling from books. Two, it says, yes, from two children's books here. And then on this one, we're pulling from, again, two children's books again. So if you'll think about it in the context of a template, we start off with an introduction, introductory sentence. Then we're describing what we want that character look to look like. And then we're providing Mid Journey with a context of how we want of basically the examples that it should build these characters off of. So it's given books in this case, in the cars, it gave um, two different movies that it could think about or pull from. And after it gives the examples, it then goes in to talk about the lighting. So here it's telling us what type of lighting should be included in this image. The same thing here, it goes directly into talking about the lighting. So here it's saying it should be soft and warm, casting a gentle glow on the creature's fur. And in this one, it says the lighting should be magical and the pixie's wings should be casting shimmering light patterns. And so again, this is how this plugin is basically setting up mid journey for exactly what it wants. And again, after the examples, even in the car, it goes directly into the expectations for the lighting. So on the car, it's asking for, it's saying that the lighting should be dynamic with the city's luminescent skyscrapers illuminating the car's polished surface. And then it starts talking about the color palette and it tells us the, expect, the expectation for the color palette. And then if you look in the creatures prompt, it immediately goes into the expectation for the color palette as well. So if you're able to follow the pattern, you'll see that it starts off with an introductory sentence. Then it gives a very dis descriptive sentence. And after that description sentence, it gives us two examples that the that Mid Journey could pull from. And then it starts talking about the lighting. Then it goes into the color. And the last, the next sentence starts to talk about the composition. So here it's saying that the composition should be shot with high resolution 16K camera. 
this is where we start talking about the type of camera that is used for the shot and that is using a close-up lens to capture the creature's expression expressive face and we'll compare that to the car so the next sentence again talks about the composition and for the futuristic car it says the composition should be captured with a high resolution 16k camera using this time a telephoto lens to focus on the car's refined details so after it talks about the lighting then the color then it starts to give a description of the tool that should be used to capture the image in this case it's in all cases it's asking for a 16k camera but after the camera type it then goes into the lens that it wants it to capture with so here if you wanted to you could also in this first sentence where it talks about the type of camera the 16k camera you could also name a camera if you wanted to be even more specific and again using tools like chat gpt would be a great way to have chat gpt create a table with different cameras that names different cameras and the features or anything that is special about those cameras and then that would give you insight into how to utilize that specific camera and when to use each lens you wanted to even take it a step further so after it talks about the lens then it goes on to say that the image should be hyper realistic with a high level of detail showing the car's advanced features. So that's what it said for the last sentence of the car, the futuristic car. The last sentence of the character says that it should be a image that is highly detailed with focus on the creature's unique features and textures. And here the image should be hyper realistic with a high level of detail cast showcasing the pixie's magical attributes and then of course after the entire prompt we have our parameters and this is where we're really telling mid-journey the, the aspect ratio the version the style the quality and again um, this is going to be the style as well this style here, the style that is set to raw, um, that is new in Midjourney 5.1. 5.1 is when they started talking about this uh, raw style. So now let's take this a step further with ChatGPT4. And this time let's ask for a rebranding so we're going to ask chat gpt4 to use the photorealistic plugin to rebrand nike and let's see what it comes up with again you can see it accessing the photorealistic plugin you can tell when it's done and now it is telling us Again, you can still see this template that it, the basic template that it's using. So it's immediately talking about um, the reimagined Nike brand. And then it is telling Midjourney what to focus on, the style with the examples. And it goes into describing the lighting, the colors. And then it tells us about the composition and at the end, it starts to tell us, uh, again, more about the style of the image. So let's go ahead and copy these two prompts and we'll paste them into Midjourney. I'm just going to go ahead and get both of them pasted into Midjourney so that we are already generating the images while we're talking about the prompts. So on this first one, we're saying that the focus should be on a pair of innovative, futuristic sneakers embodying a new era of sports technology. And then on the second one, it's saying that the counterpiece should be a stylish, 
high performing athletic outfit representing the fashion, the fusion of fashion and function. It then goes in to tell us that the style should echo the dynamic and bold designs seen in contemporary sportswear with references to popular culture and street style. And it tells us about the lighting, which should be vibrant with the athletic outfits standing out against the minimalistic background backdrop and that the color palette should be um, dominated by the earth tones with the iconic Nike swish and a striking neon color. So it goes on to tell us about the composition and let's go ahead and see. I'm going to upscale these images as well. And let's go ahead and upscale these. It tells us about the composition, which is still with the 16K camera, the wide angle lens this time to showcase the full outfit. And the image should be hyper realistic with a high level of detailed lighting, quality and craftsmanship ship of the outfit. It looks like it's done a fairly good job at generating the request. This one looks pretty cool. I think this one might be my favorite. Nice. And then on the second one, um, it's pulling from film, sci-fi films like Minority Report again, and it has the dynamic or the dramatic lighting which highlights the unique design of elements in sneakers and it tells us about the monochromatic color palette with the focus on blacks and whites and grays and it tells us that we're looking for a vibrant swoosh and I think that is pretty much what we get here so did a really good job at being detailed enough that our image could pull exactly what we're looking for. So we've taken our prompts here from things that come from our imagination, like um, futuristic cars, which have never been seen before. And then we came into creatures from our imagination again for a children's book. And now we're talking about things that are actually in the real world and how we could reimagine them. So here in this case, this was allowing us to reimagine Nike. And we could also pretty much do the same thing. And we could rebrand something like Coca-Cola. And here we will go ahead and copy these two prompts. And we'll still have this same outline that has been provided for all of the other um, prompts that were generated with this plugin. The first prompt will start with imagine um, and the second will start with uh, visualize a reimagined Coca-Cola brand. And then it still follows the pretty much the same outline, but it's going to alter its requests based upon um, the content. And here we've moved from Nike into Coca-Cola. So it has altered its full request to fit the Coca-Cola style. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade these images. And here it has pretty much um, gone in and added some really descriptive content for our prompt. So it says the image should feature a redesigned Coca-Cola bottle with a sleek minimalist design that still contains the brand's classic curves. And so it did reimagine the bottle in each of these examples. And as we come down, you'll notice that each example has a different style in this bottle. So again, this plugin has the ability to pretty much, we gave it one line 
and the plugin has output enough detail to fill in enough blanks when it comes to how to reimagine these brands. The next thing that we're going to look at is again, taking it a step further. So now let's talk about how we can reimagine or actually how we can use this plugin to create a new brand identity. This time, instead of reimagining one that's already existing, this time we will create a brand identity for a fictional barbecue stand, including a logo, menu design, and packaging. So look very closely at what we have asked the plugin to create. So again, start with the words, use the photorealistic plugin. And then we will follow that with what we want it to create. And so we have created a list of expectations. We want a logo, we want a menu, and we want to see packaging. So let's go ahead and click enter. Again, it's accessing the plugin and now it is generating the requests for our new barbecue stand. And here, this time, it has provided us again with two prompts. And I'm gonna go ahead and enter this first prompt. And it looks like it has added all of the requests into these first two prompts. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna copy these two and go ahead and send them to Mid Journey. But I'm also going to ask it to regenerate the prompts. And the reason that I'm asking it to regenerate the prompts is because we want a list of items. We don't wanna see everything in one prompt and it looks like that is what is happening. So here, the output for Mid Journey has been just the logo, and we want to see something different for each, we want a different output for each item. So we want the logo, we want, then we want four examples of the menu, then we want four examples of the packaging. So. Let's go ahead and alter this a little bit. Let's say including, and then maybe we'll do one. We'll make it into more of a list. And we'll see if this will help it to generate these separately. All right, let's go ahead and All right, so if we put it in a list, then we'll be able to get the logo. And now it's on two for the menu design. And this is more of what we were looking for. All right, because again, when we put them all together, we really just got logos. This might be a storefront quite possibly, but it's definitely not everything that we were looking for. So if you need to have more than just um, one output, you need to put it in a list form. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the menu and the packaging and put them into Mid Journey. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and type continue and see if it is able to come up with any additional aspects that we can use for this fictional barbecue stand. And sure enough, it came up with the uniform design and it's now generating the stand design. So we can use all of this in our, it has promotional material and while ChatGPT 
finishes. Let's see if there's anything else he could come up with. We'll go ahead and plug in the uniform design. So that everything can be can be processing while ChatGPT is generating our requests. It even came up with a web design. Let me try that last one again. When you copy them, make sure that you are extra careful with the quotation marks because if you copy the quotation mark, then it will generate an error. This last quotation mark because it messes up the perimeter syntax. And I'm going to re-roll the uniform request. And perhaps I will just go back and re-post it. And I'll take these last two, and then we'll take a look at the structure of the prompts. So simply by telling it to continue, we were able to get, um, even though we started off just asking for the logo, the menu, and let me see what else we asked for. So we just asked for the logo, the menu, and the packaging. But by telling it to continue, it was able to continue to, to process and create information for our branding. And it went ahead and generated a, information for a uniform, a stand, and promotional material. And then it did the website design and social media posts and business card. So probably if I were to keep going and asking it to um, continue, it would continue to provide us with more material for this future or for this fictional barbecue stand. So I'm going to go ahead and we can actually keep these or these original logos. And we'll take a look at what it's done with the menus as well. The packaging looks amazing. And I'm going to skip over these illustrations because I did request a second generation of the uniforms. This is for the uh, promotional material. And here is the website design, which is really awesome. And here we're able to really come up with something a little different because of the aspect ratio. And we'll go ahead and scale these uniforms. And the last one, or the next one, was for a social media post. So it's let's read this one. It's telling it to visualize a social media post for a fictional barbecue stand. And then it says the post should, should feature a tantalizing image of the stand's signature barbecue dish with a catchy caption and the stand's hashtag. Well, it did not necessarily generate that, and that's probably because of the wording on this first portion. And so let's go ahead and copy this and we'll see if we can get rid of the first portion of it. So we can get rid of this first portion introductory sentence where it says visualize a social media post for a fictional barbecue stand. So immediately because Midjourney processes things in order, it is immediately thinking about the barbecue stand. So we're going to get rid of that sentence. 
And then it says the post should feature a tantalizing image of the stand's signature barbecue dish. So let's go ahead and we can just get rid of this, these first few words. And now we have it imagining a tantalizing image of the stand's signature barbecue dish with a catchy caption and the stand's hashtag. So let's go ahead and submit this. And I think we'll get a much better result. And here we've got more uniforms. And I want to read through the uniform prompt as well, because I think it, I wanted it to be more uh, realistic. So let's see if we can see what part of the prompt is causing it to be so illustrate, coming out like an illustration. So we have imagine a uniform design for staff of a fictional barbecue stand. Again, I believe that it's the fictional barbecue stand portion that is causing it to come out the way in the style that it's coming out. So I'm gonna get rid of the first sentence and then we'll have the uniform should be a classic apron made of denim or another durable material with the stands logo prominently displayed and then it has the style should be practical yet stylish reflecting the stands casual and friendly atmosphere the color should be deep blue or black for the apron and the logo in white or contrasting color. The composition should be shot with a high resolution 16K camera focusing on the texture. All right, so I think that at this point, everything else is gonna be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit that. And we can immediately see the difference after we have taken, we've gotten rid of those first few sentences that was generated by the, um, plugin for chat GPT. So here, this is for the social media prompt and we'll compare these four images. Let me go ahead and start upscaling them, but we are comparing these four images with what we originally had. And we were originally getting, let's see, these are on the website. Okay. So here's what we were, we were originally um, presented with. And at this point, I'll go ahead and open this up full screen. All right. So what we were originally provided with were um, kind of just fictional barbecue stands. And again, that's because that was the very first sentence in our prompt. So as we continue to explore this plugin, keep in mind that we're also still kind of learning and perfecting our own prompt engineering. And whenever we use something from the plugin, if, it's, if it doesn't present us with what we were requesting, it's not a situation where we should just stop, um, but we should go in and kind of look at what we were provided with and the prompt that created that image. And in this case, we found that this first portion for a media, a social media post is really going to, especially these words right here, the fictional barbecue stand, that is exactly what it gave us. Now, we pair that to these images that are coming up. So we compare that to here and we can see um, something that is a lot different. So we know that our plugin in intended to generate an image of a tantalizing signature barbecue dish. However, because of the way that the first sentence came off to Mid Journey, it presented us with the actual outside of the barbecue stand. 
So we just went ahead and removed those first few lines and a few of the words in this first sentence. And now we're actually able to get the image that ChatGPT provided us with. And this image is much more inviting when it comes to wanting to bring people into this barbecue stand or wanted to attract business through the social media platform. Now, again, this is what we want to keep in mind when we are crafting our prompts and everything else really plays a strong role in the image and the beauty of the image. Um, again, thinking about adding the high resolution camera, telling it what to focus on and talking about getting the details and showcasing the quality and the appeal of the stand's food. So all of that is what made our image so beautiful and using words like tantalizing um, and appeal, quality, all of those words came together to make this beautiful, beautiful image. Now let's jump back up to look at our stand and our website, pretty much everything else um, that was created after the uh, social media. So if we scroll up, if we scroll up, we're able to see the logos that it provided us with. And again, keeping in mind that anything that we use when it comes when it comes to text will have to be adjusted. So even in the menu, the menu looks really great when it comes to the illustration and what is offered, but when it comes to the words, that's what would have to be adjusted. Everything else, I love the style of everything that I'm seeing here. I think that would make beautiful images for a barbecue stand. And let's check out this packaging. This is absolutely amazing. Just providing us with an alternative to the everyday packaging that we see. Really love how Mid Journey is able to give us such a variety of different ways to package products. And then we come down to the stand and keep in mind that this stand comes from the prompt that came from ChatGPT4. So one of the things and one of the, I would say, features of ChatGPT4 is its ability to add such a detailed description to our prompts. So even though we put in a one sentence request, we were presented with an output that looks like this. And that really plays a strong role in what we get when we think about our end result. And one of the things that I also noticed is that we're always really provided with the same aspect ratio, the same parameters. And so if we ever wanted to, we could also then go ahead and use this as a starting point, but we can always do something like increase the chaos level, which would then give us a stronger variety of our output. So here we could say, set our chaos level to 50. We could also set this style. This should be 750. We might even change this to version four. And in version four, we no longer have the, the raw style. All right, let's go ahead and just submit that. And so here, what we were looking at was the stands. And just from kind of really working with Mid Journey um, in the past, I just, I really feel like we can get a much better output when it comes to the stands. And again, and at that point, we have to realize that just really take in what we've learned during this course and keep in mind the different parameters that we talked about and everything that can be added to our prompt 
in order to get these hyper realistic images. And this photorealistic plugin has given us the ability to really get a great starting point. And in many of these cases, it has given us exactly what we need. However, where it falls short, we should be able to use the knowledge of the course to pick up. And so now we are looking at promotional material. And in this case, it has given us a poster and it tells us to, again, feature another tantalizing image of the Stan's signature barbecue dish. And so this looks pretty good. It has given us a nice background and a way to display. Here, another set of, uh, another item from our promotional material. This is another poster. And again, this looks really good. And it does still, again, tell us to provide a catchy slogan to give us a style that is vibrant, a design to make mouths water. It gives us the colors that should be used and it's telling us that we want smoky browns and blacks. So this really gives Midjourney still a lot of room to be creative. And that is what explains the variety of posters that we're provided with. And then if we take a look at the website, again, this is a very good starting point for a website. And if you were a, if you were not the website designer and you wanted to be able to provide a website designer with something that you are looking for, this is a great starting point. So you could give this to a website designer and they could very easily recreate these images or recreate, use this image to recreate a website that could be used for your company. So Midjourney and Chat GPT-4 together have provided us with a very descriptive prompt. And then Midjourney has then gone in and used its ability to recreate this website, a web page. And if you look here at the top and you notice that it's kind of cut off, that is due to the aspect ratio. And so kind of sticking with the one-to-one, -one, or in that case, we wouldn't even mention the aspect ratio. In that case, we would have had the full image um, for the website. But again, this is a great starting point to give to someone and for them to have something to start off working with here again another uh, website design this would be a great and amazing landing page and now we're looking at the stands this is actually um, supposed to be the uniform design so this mid journey at this point has um, just provided us with a random image of a stand that's kind of why I went ahead and redid that uniform prompt because while these are awesome, um, I really expect to see something a little different. And I think that just kind of based upon, again, this first portion is throwing it off. So um, we will scroll down and let's see what we were provided with. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I think we can still do a little bit better when it comes to the uniform design and and so this time I'm going to take this out of version 5 and place it in version 4 and again we will raise the chaos level to 50 and we'll see if we can get something a little closer to what we're looking for and that was the same thing that we did well let's go ahead and grab these aprons I like um, one and three I really feel like um, these well number two looks pretty good and that's the same thing that we did with the stand 
So we took the stand and we took it from um, version five and we put it in version uh, four. And when we did that, um, this is what we got. And again, this is pretty nice. But one thing that we could also do is we can get a little more, we can add a little more description to it. And we can tell it to add a fiery grill as a barbecue stand. So we'll say, imagine, uh, visualize the design of a fictional, and then we'll say, a fiery grill as a barbecue stand and just remove that let's go ahead and submit this so again if the plugin does not generate the image that you're looking for then keep in mind that not to stop but to continue to work with the prompt and here I actually after upscaling these these would be pretty cool so um, I really like the mixture of the denim, the denim and the leather. So that might be pretty awesome. And I also like the way that they're displayed. And then it's given us um, some on humans, some on mannequins, and some that are just the design. So in all cases, this is pretty nice. Um, this is what started to come of the design as we eliminated the first few lines of the prompt. And we also gave it a raise the chaos level and we put it in version four. So just comparing version four to version five, this is really the difference again. And here is our barbecue stand. And in all cases, we're able to provide a, if this is something that you were doing for yourself to design or to start with a design for a barbecue stand, or if this is something that you are giving to a client, you're able to provide them with a variety. And it all came from ChatGPT4 and its descriptions. And... Again, if you ever find that the description is that you've worked with your prompts and it's still you're still not happy with the output, um, my best advice would be to simply remove everything and just have a general prompt. And this would really give um, excuse me, this will really give Midjourney the ability to um, be use more of its imagination, if you will, or have more of an more artistic freedom. And so here, these designs again are great and just different ways that you can get different outcomes from the same prompt. And by removing everything and giving Mid Journey its freedom, its artistic freedom to display this uh, barbecue stand, here's what we were provided with. So um, it just got a little more playful and fictional. But again, we did start off with the word fictional. So um, this fiery grill as a barbecue stand. And I'm just going to do this one more time without the word fictional. And you could still add words like photorealistic or hyperrealistic. And each time you'll get something that is generated just a little bit um, differently from Mid Journey. And for me, that's a part of the fun of what you're able to create with mid journey and in this case this is what we've been creating not only with just mid journey but also with mid journey and chat gpt4 and the biggest difference between three and four is for chat gpt4 to be used as a starting point it 
adds a, an amazing amount of description, but it also has plugins that we are able to use to pull in ideas and to create these whole prompts. This is um, not something that we would be able to do with just chat GPT. We have to have the actual plugin in order for us to be able to actually create a mid journey prompt. So the next thing that we're going to do is let's take some time to look at another feature of uh, chat GPT four, which is its ability to use web browsing. So right now we have just the plugins enabled. And if we go ahead and turn on the web browsing, now we can ask chat GPT for two, and we'll just continue to talk about our barbecue stand. And we can ask chat GPT for search the internet for trending promotional products that could be used for our barbecue stand. Search the internet for trending promotional ideas and products that can be used for our fictional barbecue stand. And here you'll see that it is searching um, the internet. You can see when it clicks on a link and here it is using Bing and it is searching the internet as a chat GPT user, and it does have some limited capabilities. So um, you'll see that sometimes it clicks on links and it fails. And that is for the most part because of the fact that because it is searching the internet as a bot, it doesn't have all of the freedom that an actual person would have. So you will see that it tries to click on links, but it fails. And then it will continue to search until it finds a link that it can click on. You'll see that it reads the comment and then you will see that it goes on to a new search. And this is just it. This is just its way of basically searching for trending promotional products, which is what we've asked it to do. And again, um, here it tried to read content but failed and you'll see that it then goes back to the last page and it just clicks on a new link and it will continue to try to read the content. So let's go ahead and while it is working on that, let's pull up the page that it was trying to access. And so here it is on brand it is on case histories and I think it is um, trying to look up trending product. Um, so if you wanted to kind of pick up where it was leaving off, then you could. It has responded and it's saying that here are some trending promotional ideas that could work for a barbecue stand based on the information that it found. So it gives us gift cards, smart bottles, custom made hoodies, personalized tote bags, colorful pocket picnic blanket, spot Bluetooth finder, clutch slide, combination of a card holder, phone str strap, and phone stand, okay? Um, so all of these are promotional products that you could use and so from this point, we could then take these and we could ask Chat G we could ask Midjourney or ChatGPT to create um, images that we could use on gift cards, on smart bottles, and we could just go down the line and ask for custom made hoodies for our barbecue stand. All of these things are promotional products that ChatGPT4 is now able to provide us with based on its ability to browse the internet 
and then come back and give us information. So, all right. And the next thing that we'll do is we're going to go back to our barbecue stand idea and we will ask ChatGPT4 again because it is able to access the internet this time let's go ahead and tell it to search the web for information about competitors um, and we'll say we'll be even more specific and we'll say we'll say instead of we'll say competitors in the barbecue industry and we'll tell it to analyze their marketing strategies pricing product offering and reviews to help our barbecue business understand its competition and make strategic decisions. So now because of the fact that ChatGPT4 again can access the internet, now it is able to take things a step further and we will have it to access the internet to analyze the marketing strategies and pricing and the product offering and then we can come back and we can ask Midjourney to create images again to take our marketing strategy to the next level and this is because of the fact that now with ChatGPT4 we're able to again get on the internet. We're able to get information from two of the competitors that would be in the barbecue industry. So uh, Weber Grills, and it looks like they have a ro robust digital marketing strategy involving social media, blog posts, and emails. They often share recipes, grilling tips, and promotional offers to engage their audience. So from just this information alone, we're able to see um, some ideas for a marketing strategy for this fictional barbecue stand that we're creating. So it said that some of the things that it did was it, they share recipes. So the idea of sharing recipes would be great. We could use Midjourney to now create some images for perhaps a recipe book and grilling tips and again, promotional offers. And this is how they engage their audience. And so what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna make sure that we take notes on um, our competitors and we'll just really use this to our advantage. Then it tells us that Weber Grills also offers a wide range of products, um, various price points at various price points. For example, they have gas grills that range from $200 to $3,000. They also have portable grills and they start from uh, $35 and they go all the way up to $250 it says that they not only they sell grills, they ship, they sell gas grills, charcoal grills, electric grills, portable grills, and smokers. They also offer a wide range of accessories for their grills. So this looks like it's more of um, a company that is selling grills. And again, we are looking for the barbecue industry. And I think our stand is more talking about actual competitors as in the restaurant industry. So we could look at the other competitors as well, although it does say that it ran out of time. And so I'm still looking at on the products. It looks like they're still looking at companies that are selling grills. So this time I'm going to ask ChatGPT4 to search the web for information about competitors in the restaurant industry. So we'll just get a little more specific and we'll see what it comes out. Again, you'll see that it's browsing the web. It's looking at the top barbecue restaurant change in the US, clicking on links, and it will continue the same process. It's now scrolling down. 
and it has then gone back to another page. So it will continue to go through the internet and choose websites. Right now it's on the same website and it will go through the website until it finds information that is relevant to our request. And this is basically it doing its research portion. All right, so um, it did say that it was not able to, um, I've not yet been able to gather com com comprehensive information about specific competitors in the barbecue restaurant industry. I attempted to find a list of top barbecue restaurant chains in the U.S. as a starting point, but the information wasn't readily available in the sources that it checked. And then it says, however, we can proceed by searching the information about well-known restaurant, well-known barbecue chains one by one, analyzing their mar their marketing strategies, pricing, product offerings, and reviews. Some of the known chains in the U.S. include Famous Dave's, uh, Dickie's Barbecue Pit, and Sonny's Barbecue. All right, and it says, let me know if you have specific competitors in mind or if you would like to proceed with these chains. In the meantime, I found some trending promotional ideas and products that could potentially be used for your barbecue stand. So we will take a look at that. And then I will also tell it to go ahead and proceed while we look at what it has provided us with. So it's still, it's still talking about the same products when it comes to the gift cards, the smart bottle, the custom made hoodies and personalized tote bags. These are the same promotional products that that it mentioned before so we will keep these in mind and again if we would like to we could go back to mid journey and ask for mid journey to provide us with um, products that have our logo on them so a smart bottle with our uh, the logo of our choice or a colorful pocket picnic blanket again with our logo on it but at this point i think we will let it research the competitors and then we'll come back and see what it was able to find all right so here we're able to really get a idea of what we can use kind of for promotional offerings and it's saying that um, it's taken its cues from famous dave's and it says that the brand extends its product offering to include barbecue gift set, which includes a tote bag, a fork, a spatula, tongs, and a bottle of their famous Dave's sauce. So what we could do is we could go ahead and copy this idea. And here we will ask Midjourney to basically add this packaging um, idea. So we'll say visual, visualize this, this visualization of the original product that it gave us. We can redo that. And this time we will ask for packaging to be eco-friendly. All right, so let's go ahead and grab this information and we'll say the package packaging should and instead of the eco-friendly part we can say include a barbecue gift set and we don't want to okay that's great we don't want to have um, famous staves on here but we do want the packaging to include a barbecue gift set um, which includes a tote bag, a fork, a spatula, tongs, and their famous barbecue sauce with the Stan's logo stamped on it. So now we can pretty much recreate this uh, famous Dave's idea, but in this case, we're going to be creating something for our fictional barbecue stand. And again, this is a great way to use ChatGPT to kind of search the internet for good promotional ideas.
and then we'll take those ideas and we will reuse them. But in this time, we're going to be putting our own logo on them. So we're finding out what works and then we are transforming those ideas into ideas that can be used for our own brand. And as you can see, again, we have been provided with an amazing product line and some amazing packaging. And it looks like it includes all of the things that we asked for. And it has a fictional logo here listed on these products. Congratulations on finishing the course. What's an incredible accomplishment? I hope you have taken in everything we went over together and are ready and eager to apply your newfound knowledge in mid-journey. Remember, you can always send a post in the discussion of this course if you have any questions, and I will do my best to answer all of them. If you don't have any questions, but want to give us your opinion on the course, you can also leave a review. It helps us improve this course and make it even better for other students. Thank you for joining us in this mid-journey course. Keep exploring and applying your skills to improve your life and career.